The following program is a collection of students talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for. <laughs> the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pay! Your friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sport, 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 sport! Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Walk Wednesday, January 17, 2024. This sports program starts now! Football! It's a beautiful thing. We're heading into the divisional round this weekend with high hopes and high aspirations for the final eight teams that maybe they can change mm -hmm. the trajectory of their entire program and their franchise. Now, the Chiefs, if they go on to win this entire thing, holy hell, we're in the middle of another dynasty. Yes, well, mm -hmm. Not that we aren't already, but oh my God, they're adding to the dynasty. And if the Houston Texans can somehow topple the number one seed Baltimore Ravens this weekend, are we talking about the greatest rookie season wow. in the history of the NFL, both from the quarterback position and the head coach position, potentially? And how about the brand... New line. At home, favored by six and a half, and I believe there will be a very handsome, mannequin-looking son of a bitch in attendance. What? As the Buccaneers and Baker Mayfield will travel up to very cold Detroit, Michigan. Hell yeah, I can't wait. I haven't been to a game since 2016. This will be my first ever Lions playoff game. Fired up oh, for this man. one, boys. Let's go. I'm uh, very happy for you. I'm I'm about over people tweeting me, though. What are we going to do to get Evan to a game? He's an adult. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm not his dad. No. Yeah. What are we? Oh, so I was about job. sick of that as well. I, I never told him he what. what Hey, not allowed. Not allowed. Yeah. Yeah. Not allowed. Also, Sunday night football, what do you want me to do? Go to Detroit, drive back, get home at 5 a.m., and then what? We got a show to do, and I'm a dead body here? Now, listen, I appreciate the fact that you are that committed to your job, and obviously you have to be up, and you have to be able, and you have to be on top of everything back there. There's been a couple hangover Foxy days where I think Foxy has experienced a different life back there yeah. than whenever he feels good. Yeah. We would have been very pumped if you would have went to that game up there in Detroit. Definitely. And also would have helped you however you need to get up there and do that whole thing. Sure. But I was about sick of people tweet me don't you think that pat mcvy should let evan fox go <laughs> i don't have a lead. Well, what, what are we talking about yeah and for all those haters out there pat was the one that was like hey you should go to this game and you should go to seek it get your tickets company will pay for it let's go boom there we thank go thank you pat wow. hey no problem and also let's make sure we get good seats too so you don't make the company look bad yeah oh yeah that can also that, that's a whole nother thing the I seats i originally picked pat said no 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 you go to the fourth <laughs> row right now you're gonna make me look bad yeah if you make yeah. me look bad you yeah. go sit that high as if you're not getting paid anymore I see some other companies send people. Oh, yeah. And they're like up in the top row. I'm like, company looks bad here. I, mm -hmm. I understand the game probably doesn't look good. <laughs> company doesn't look good. I'm happy you're going to get a chance to experience it. But what if the brand new Lions win another playoff game? They might. It's all house money for the Detroit. All they've been looking for is getting the playoffs. Mm hmm. And win a playoff game. Yep. Boom. They win a division. Yep. Then they win a playoff game. If they were to win another one, going against a very hot Buccaneers team that we're going to learn a lot about, I think, here in a matter of moments, because we do have a massive, formerly massive man that played offensive line who has been around the Todd Bowles system a bit, is going to point some things out that I don't think anybody has chatted about against the Philadelphia Eagles on why they made Jalen Hurts and that offense look as bad as they did in the primetime super wild card game. And then when you think about the Niners, mm, what really? are they? Have we forgotten about what the Niners are already? Yeah. Have we forgotten that the Niners are an absolute buzzsaw because we saw the Green Bay Packers do what the Green Bay Packers did to the Dallas Cowboys? Eight-point dogs going into Santa Clara. Nick Bosa is still talking. He's doing. He, he needs a microphone more often. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just like Green Bay needs to put Jair Alexander at the stand every single day up to until this game. They should do it with Bosa as well. We're in for a good one, and we are pumped about it. Hell yeah. Lucky to be here, obviously. The Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. Con man, uh, sweet shirt. Uh, Ty, that. Packers, Niners, mm -hmm. playoffs. Oh, yeah. This is a story as old as time, seemingly, in recent history. Yeah. I mean, those are the old Packers, though. You know, a lot of demons, obviously, with going either going to San Francisco and getting their asses kicked big time game, being over basically with like seven minutes left in the first quarter. 
and a couple years ago coming to Green Bay when it was so cold. Packers were the number one seed. You know, hey, frozen tundra is supposed to be, you know, one of the preeminent home field advantages in the NFL. They get beat. Packers win that game. Who knows? They may may win a Super Bowl that year, but the closer we get to this game, I mean, same deal. It's the same deal as the Dallas game. No one's given the Packers any chance to win this game. Haven't forgotten how good the Niners are, but I'll tell you what, this, you know, we, we talked about it last week. We're going to talk about it again this week. I mean, the this young Packers team, they don't know what they don't know. You know? Bingo. Hey, it's just another football game. You kidding me? Obviously, the stakes are a little bit raised, but going in, and I mean, confidence could not be any higher after going into Jerry World. Do you feel like house money as well, just like Foxy does? Because you guys beat the Cowboys. For Weren't sure. supposed to that first seven seed to beat the two seed or whatever. Yeah, yep. Absolutely. I mean, they... Packers had to beat the the Bears, you know, they had to win their their last 3 games of the year just to get into the playoffs. So, you know, I mean, yeah, it, at this point again, it's Jordan loves the guy of the future. They found their quarterback and now let's just let's see how how far we can take this thing and play spoiler to a couple teams. If you beat the Niners, like then then everything changes and it's like, hey, let's go win a Super Bowl. So, I mean, I'm, I'm and If you beat the Niners, the Niners on the other side are having oh, a lot of conversations oh, oh about what the hell went wrong. And yeah. they are probably calling for a lot of change, even mm-hmm. though that team has been a complete buzzsaw. Not a great spot for the number one team, but I know that they've earned it, worked for it, and we know that there's probably going to be a great show from that defense. Yeah, yep. a good football team. But Jordan Love has showcased that he can play against great defenses. Mm-hmm. Jordan Love has the calmness of a 45 year old vet, but he's also in his first year. Yep. What does he know? We don't know. Mm-hmm. What are the Packers? I don't think any of us know. No. no, but we know what the Niners are. Yeah, buzzsaw. They are buzzsaw. Uh-huh. One half of the hammer. Dang. Cowboys. Tone Diggs is here. Tone. Great news yesterday uh-huh. after we went off the air. Yeah, Mike Tomlin's back is yeah. what I heard. Yeah. There we go. Tone Diggs. This happened literally as soon as we got off the air yesterday. Yeah, Coach T back. Coach T is a leader of men, and I would be an idiot if I said I wasn't happy that Coach T was back. Because who would I be to, to question him and his great coaching career and every single player? Well, you already have done that. <laughs> No, <laughs> this I don't year. think so. I don't remember that. You did uh, that a lot this year. Mm-hmm. Not him directly, but like the whole alluding. We'll get, we'll get there. Um, who would I be to question all the players in the league that say he's a great coach? T.J. Watt said it when he was going through his contract talks. He said, "Hey, Mike T needs to be my coach." Uh, Cam Hayward said it. Who's a great player? Listen, Mike T gets the boys up to play. Okay. Love Mike T's back. If there are not. I almost swore. If there are not changes, other places, and we just roll out the same thing that we did the last five years, I'm going to lose my mind, okay? <laughs> Tone. Diggs. What do you mean? We've been above 517 years. Great. Yeah, he has such a good fit on him, too. You should see him. Thank you. Looks amazing. You do look real cowboy. Today. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine. Being above 500, that's cool. You know what's cool is winning playoff games. That's not even cool. Winning Super Bowls is cool. Amen. Yeah, everything else doesn't matter. So in the current situation, we haven't done that since 2017 when we lost to the Patriots in the AFC Championship. Oh! You guys are a long way away from that. Yeah, yeah we are. So we are still we. Won that. So are we. Even still though it feels like we're closer, it doesn't matter. Like, if it doesn't matter if you're the second or third pick or the 18th pick, does it? And at the end of the year, 31 teams are going to be disappointed, and it doesn't feel like we're close to being that one team that's not disappointed. Uh, but I don't think Coach T is that issue. But there are, you know, a lot of people blame the Roonies uh, that they will not pay, you know, elite coordinators, and that's that's not Coach T's fault. Um, I don't know if that's the truth or not, uh, but that is definitely what a lot of Pittsburgh thinks. Hmm. Um, so if they go out and, you know, not not saying the coordinators need to get fired or anything like that, but there needs to be some reinvigoration of uh, some things there. A couple of the guys we went to high school with after the interview with Lombardi yesterday, where Lombardi said, if you think you're going to find a better coach than Mike Tomlin, good luck. Like, And that's kind of how everybody talks about Mike Tomlin. A couple guys from our high school said, okay, maybe we don't find somebody better, but maybe we'll go better than 9 and 8. 10 and 7 <laughs> mm-hmm. for the next 100 years. Yeah. We are about fed up with it. But a lot of people say the same thing. They say Tomlin's able to get above 500 with that roster. Sure. With that roster. How come the conversation's always about how crappy the roster is and how shitty the team is? Do you think Tomlin ever thinks about that? And isn't Tomlin a massive piece of picking the roster or is he hands off with he, that? No, he, how do they make a change, you think? How, he, how does this whole thing evolve? He, he is not hands off. He's very much hands on with the drafts and everything like that. And I think Omar Khan, who's come, on, come in and, and done very well with the draft so far, um, the the draft wasn't great the few years before Omar stepped in. Um, I don't know. Maybe make a free agent move every once in a while. And they've done free agent, but like an actual free agent move, like something that 
and don't be like, oh, well, we drafted this guy, so we got to stick with this guy forever. And, and it's just the status quo. No, that's loyalty, remember? That's right. yes. taking grandstand on loyalty. It's the Steelers' way. And consistency. Mm -hmm. You can which, always do which that. Which worked for them for a long, long time. But, like, it's not working right now. If this, if this is different. This is a new NFL. Nine-year NFL vet joining us for the third straight day for the... 19th straight week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unbelievable. Ladies and gentlemen, host of the Man to Man podcast and everything DB presents. Good D, bad D, Darius J. Butler. Good hey, D, you look awesome today. Wow. Thank you. Yeah, you do. Came in bright red. It's real cold outside. Mm -hmm. Everybody's spirits were lifted when he came in wearing this yeah. onesie. Oh, yeah. Good. You look True. awesome. True. Do you know the name of the designer or are we just going to? Uh, Palm Angels. Okay. The brand. I don't know who the designer is, but that's the brand. Do you remember uh, the last designer we mm -hmm. talked about? Uh, oh, who is that? Sai. Uh, oh, Ty. Oh, what yeah. Was her that name? art Susai. Yeah. Yeah. Susai. 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 Yeah. 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 Dog. You, Sil hey. Silent T. Yeah, like, you were uh, grandstanding on how cultured you were. <laughs> this is the fashion designer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sue Ty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's on your shirt. T S A I. Yep. That was bad. That's you sure that's Sue Ty? Yeah, that's the Sai. Yeah. That looks like Sai. <laughs> that looks like, no, Sue Ty. No. Sue Ty. And immediately after the show, uh, by the way, Name is Sai. Yeah. She was. She was. Hey, you. Your fits this year. You should feel very proud of. Oh yeah. The what you put on display here, but also the football acumen in which you've displayed every single day that you've joined us. We're very grateful for. I see the hockey hat on. That's because oh, we yeah. have Mark Andre Fleury joining us yeah. in about thirty minutes or so. Legend. Minnesota Wild, formerly of the Vegas Golden Knights, formerly of the Pittsburgh Penguins, where he was a three-time. Well, I guess was, yeah, three-time Stanley Cup champion, mm. and uh, now he's the number two most winning goalie in the history of hockey. He's wow. a friend of the program, actually. He's been on before. He's also been on Hockey Talk in the past, which was Nick and uh, mm. you quit on it halfway yeah, through. Oh, well, thank season, you. So you don't even count. You don't uh, even count. Uh, yeah. Anyways, That's he's a big part of that. He's fantastic, dude. Funny uh, gentleman. He'll be joining us and chit-chatting about the season. He's potentially getting traded. Ooh. Ooh. But in hockey, that's one of those things that's just kind of like, I think, openly discussed and you kind of know because mm -hmm. their team is sitting eight points out of the playoffs, I believe. He's going to be in a hunt because he's playing great hockey, obviously. How many more years does he left? He didn't say he wanted to win a Stanley Cup. That's the only place he wants to go. He actually wants to play meaningful minutes somewhere. But whenever you're at that stage of your career, you're always going to be talked about potentially being on the move. Anyways, love the hat. Let's go back to Mike Tomlin. Mike Tomlin's sticking around in mm -hmm. Pittsburgh. Uh, I think Diggs kind of alluded to this. He said, I have no idea what the future looks like, but I know pretty much exactly what's going to happen. Mike Tomlin staying in Pittsburgh is the most Pittsburgh Steelers move of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Only three coaches in the last 60 years there. Yep. So yeah. like, they are a very consistent bunch. Mike Tomlin will be able to find, you think, a championship team again in Pittsburgh? Mm -hmm. How do you think that whole thing works? And what do you think the team uh, kind of views this decision going forward? I assume every player in the locker room is pumped about this, that Mike Tomlin's back. But how do you... How do you end the season better, which has been the issue with Pittsburgh? Front? I mean, every player you talk to, you've been around, most most of them, overwhelmingly, most of them will say they love Mike T, love playing for him. Uh, obviously, the standard is standard. You got to find a quarterback. Uh, the, you know, you got to find a quarterback. And Kenny Pickett, obviously, he drafted him a couple years ago. People still, hey, is he is he the guy? Is he not the guy? Maybe he needs a new coordinator. I think they have done a pretty good job, especially driving, uh, drafting wide receivers. The offensive mm -hmm. line was an issue. They played better at, um, towards the end of the year. Defensively, you know, a lot of people, because of the turnovers and what T.J. Watt does and High Smith on the other side, I think it's a lot of holes on that defense as well. But you need a quarterback in this league. You look at the quarterbacks that are left now in these final eight. Mm -hmm. First round, oh, first round, yep. first round, first round, first round, first round, first round, first round, seventh round. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I might have did eight first rounders there. There's eight teams. Just know that seven of them. Yep. First round. And that seventh rounder is a very, very good player in a really, really good offensive system and obviously, you know, surrounded by a great player. Go on, D butt. I'm saying you need a system. It all it all works together. You need players, you need a system, mm -hmm. you need guys gonna spend the money and put the team together like uh Lynch has done. So Agree completely. Works. And I'm a big fan of Brock Purdy and how he plays. Mm -hmm. And would he be this in another system that maybe did stink? And may, probably not. Nobody probably could have success in some places the way it looks around the NFL. But that one over there is beautiful. And the fact that they go 10 and 7, 9 and 8 every single year puts them in a spot in the draft where, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's... you're never going to potentially get it, which is like a purgatory, I guess, which is what the Steelers fans feel. Yep. A man who played for Mike Tomlin, 12 year NFL vet, Super Bowl champion, very slim fellow who just ran a half marathon this Whoa. week. Wow. Thank you, Shipley's here. Yeah, thank you. 
Hey, hey. Quickly, as we wrap up the Mike Tomlin chatter for the Pittsburgh Steelers, you're from Pittsburgh area, Moon Township, same hometown as uh, Joe Nardo, uh, yeah. the greatest Love weatherman you, of all time. Mm-hmm. You hate somehow. Miss you, Joe. Uh, but because he ruined a golf outing you had with your dad as a kid whenever he forecasted some rain and rain never came. It's Pittsburgh. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Do- Joe Nardo got it wrong two times. You happen to have golf tea time on both of those. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Joe Nardo created like a golf for two. Sounds like he's over two. Those two. Jeez. He was on TV every day. Yeah. 365 <laughs> days a, warrior, a year. Jeez. All right. All right. Yeah. Did you hear that? AQ. A- a- it's tough. He's tough. He, he hates is. Joe. Hates well, Ben. The only guy yep. I know hates Ben. Yep. The dog. Yeah. 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 I can believe for not Ben Roethlisberger. Mm-hmm. We were talking yeah, about yeah, Steelers. Love right. Hell yeah. Love seven. Actually played there with yeah. Ben Roethlisberger. Love Satan. Mike Tomlin. Whoa. Uh, what's that? I said love Satan. I don't think he's defeated the, those accusations. The guy's got a cross on his body and also celebrates uh, Hanukkah. Huh, exactly. So I, I think he's checking all the boxes that aren't Satan. Trying to yeah. do it. You know, upside down cross. But, but anyway, uh, uh, it, when he's doing headstands, which is what he's doing these days now that he's so fit. Doing mm-hmm. the red light. That's why you're seeing the cross upside down. Because oh. he's actually... And his body is kind of shaped in a way where if yeah. you stand on his feet or on his head, mm-hmm. you really it not looks sure. the same. Yeah, you yeah, don't, don't know. know. <laughs> Anyways, let's <laughs> get. Uh, oh, this show sucks, dude. <laughs> so bad. Anyways, uh, AQ, you didn't deserve any of that. Thanks. Mike Tomlin's coming back. You played in the building during Mike Tomlin. That was closer to the very, very, very successful years yes. of the Tomlin run, which was at the beginning as opposed to more so as of late. Whenever you hear he's coming back, your thoughts are, of course, that's kind of how the Steelers operate. Do you think they'll ever do massive changes, though, from within? That's not the Steelers' way at all. Do you think there's a chance? No, I don't, because they they won't do that. But they, they need to, for once, hire outside of the organization. It's been a constant I think it started with, you know, it was Bruce, and then it went to, I think, Randy Fickner, right? And mm-hmm. Maybe Todd Haley was the only one out. Todd was out, and, they, and, but, and that was Killer Bees. And, they and then they ran him out, right? Yep. And then they've continued yeah. to go yeah. from what? within, right? Yeah, yeah so. Right. Todd, out. Todd, Todd was, was down there at Tequila Cowboy having yeah, a good time. Everybody's that, holding yeah. that over his head. <laughs> Need more of that. Everybody's holding that over Todd Haley's head. That was after head. the AFC Championship game, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's having fun. He's yeah. having a blast out there doing yeah. his thing, but they kind of oh, ran him out. They need something. They need something outside the organization. They got to go get something that's creative, something different, something that brings a new energy. And I think if they can do that, with some of the pieces they already have, you might you might infuse life back into that building. Okay, let's talk about another building that you played football in, uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You won a Super Bowl with them. Hey, AQ. AQ's been on a lot of teams. He's been on the Buccaneers, been on the Cardinals, been on the Colts, been what? on the Ravens, been on the Eagles, been on the Steelers. What? The guy's been everywhere, man. But down in Tampa Bay, he won a Super Bowl. Congratulations as a player and as a coach. Tampa Bay is a place that obviously has great history, great tradition. It was lost for a while, then it was found when free agent Tom Brady went down there and changed the entire city. There was uh, cranes, basically, yeah. in every single corner of Tampa Bay whenever we were down there. The Tampa Bay Lightning, go Bolts, they were winning Stanley Cups. What? Everything came alive in Tampa during that time. And now Baker's come back. And I'm not saying it's the same exact experience, but he's putting up the same numbers that Tom Brady was putting up whenever they went on a run. Vibes are high in Tampa. Press conferences are electrifying. Let's visit Todd Bowles' press conference from yesterday. <laughs> Coach, uh, looking forward towards um, Detroit. Um, the weather has been a factor in some of the playoff games, even for the most prepared teams. Uh, today, it's uh, 13 in uh, Detroit, which doesn't compare to some of the temperatures we tend to drop to. Any special plans to acclimate the team to not only uh, endure, but perform in those kind of frigid temperatures should you face them in Detroit? You do know we play indoors, right? And they got a dome. I don't um, no, nothing planned. We're, we're indoors, and we only have to be outside for 20 seconds getting off the bus going under the thing, so we'll be okay. I am preparing them for that walk, though. Mm-hmm. You know, because in Detroit, it's like a back alley. Remember, you walk into like a, a back little side door almost. Mm-hmm. So there is like a, a good, seconds. there is a good 20, 30 seconds chance where you can get hit by that 13 degree weather that you can never replicate in Tampa Bay, especially this time of year. Now, to that lady's credit, We've been told by a lot of people that have been in the media a lot longer than us that some of the local media down there might have been a little thin. So they might have sent a news reporter in to maybe get a quote or ask a question into the press conference. With that being said, news reporters, I think, I've been accused of not doing enough of this. There has to be some sort of research you do beforehand so you don't get dunked on in a press conference and then laughed at across the entire area. (laughs) Todd Bowles handled it professionally. He did. 
I've said a lot of dumb things, asked a lot of dumb questions. That lady's life will continue to roll on, move on, have success. But whenever you talk about Todd Bowles in press conferences, he's given legendary answers of the past. Whenever you talk about Todd Bowles coaching football, the guy got a big, big brain. Yeah. AQ, whenever you see Todd Bowles having the success that he's having, more specifically the success that he had against the Philadelphia Eagles, where the hell's my iPad? <laughs> Shoot. Is it over there? Yeah, it's still over there. Go grab it. Hey, that baby, Bruce, if you could grab it. Anyways, whenever you saw Todd Bowles have the success he had against Philadelphia Eagles, you noticed something and I don't think anybody else did. And I think it's because you were in the building with that man. And I think it's because you looked at the film and said, wait a minute. This was the weapon that made Jalen Hurts mm -hmm. look as bad as he looked. Hey, thank you, Bruce. Great work, Bruce. Uh, that nobody's really chatted about. Good football coach. Great football coach. Does this team have what it takes to go on a run right now, kind of out of nowhere, in a crappy NFC South? Yeah, I think he's an absolute stud. He put on an absolute master class against the Philadelphia Eagles. When you watch what we're about to watch, I got five clips. Here's the deal. Everybody's played the Philadelphia Eagles in nickel defense for the last two years mm -hmm. for the most part. They're scared to death of what they can do in the RPO game and all that stuff, right? Todd Bowles went 27 out of 60 snaps with seven man front or even eight man front. He went goal line defense, 14 snaps in this game. And his whole reason was we're going to send more than you can block. So here's what's going to happen, right? This first clip here, we got one, two, three, four, five, six on defense, right? Then we got one, two, three, four, five on offense. Hmm. Do we see that? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody sees that, correct? Yeah. Yep. Coach. So, Coach. Yeah. Okay, so what's going to happen here is as we let this thing run, they have one more than we can block, which you get a free rusher, Shaq Barrett, who just a few short years ago had 19 sacks, free off the edge, fade away, incomplete pass. That's what happens in play one. Okay, I picked five, four separate looks moving forward. Now check it out. Same thing, right? We go back. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys on defense. We have a six-man protection. They call this cover zero. Bring one more than you can block, right? Here it is. Let's let it run. And Jason Kelsey's pointing out, right? Because check it out. That's a defensive end at linebacker. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. We send all these people. Free man off the edge. Uh-oh. Man in his face. Fade, Fade away. away. First third down of the game. Incomplete. Huge play. Tampa goes up 10-0. Let's go to the next one. Okay? Check it out. Again, let's take notice first. That Anthony Nelson, I don't know if you can circle him, Pat, 98, standing up. He's normally a defensive end. They switch places. That is also going to cause confusion. We have seven-man seven, seven man front again. Again, you haven't seen this against the Philadelphia Eagles. As we go, we have a seven-man front, as you just did, right? And we're going to send somebody in motion, and we get another five-man protection. The only person that doesn't come here is Levante David. And so we're still bringing six versus five. We are sending more than they can do, which causes Jalen to get the ball out fast. DBs are able to sit on the routes, yep. don't have to cover people down the field, and ball has to come out fast, and he has pressure in his face because there's unblocked people. They're also confused on who they're going to because you have a defensive end standing up and not on the line of scrimmage. Shit, who do we got? And then the back's like, shit, who do we got? Let's go to the next clip. Next clip we got, now Now we get interesting, right? We only got a three-man front, right? Now we got four linebackers, or so we think. But check it out. That's Anthony Nelson, number 98, playing linebacker. That's number 94, first-round pick out of Pitt. Kalijah Cansey, a defensive tackle, playing the Jack linebacker. And they're going to run a Will Jack cross dog again in 94. So 98 sets the pick, 94 around. The running back has no idea where to go. He's confused. And then... 94, oh. comes scot free, Damn. pressure in his face, gain of two. Fade away throw. Again. Fade away throw again. Now we go again, another three man front, but guess what? This is nickel defense now, but still 98 94, two defensive linemen, pass rushers as linebackers. We're going to run another cross dog, and then 45 Devin White, we're going to send also, runs over to back, pressure in his face, master class by Todd Bowles, just sending pressure all night long. So that was, uh, why didn't everybody do that? Yeah. <laughs> why doesn't, doesn't that feel like just like the, <laughs> the natural right play? And Todd Bowles, I don't think, gets chatted about a lot as like mastermind defensive guy. I think it's because everybody laughed at the uh, NFC South all year. Mm -hmm. Why Why doesn't everybody do that? Is that what you're supposed to do against the, everybody, seemingly? Well, listen, first things first, A.J. Brown was out. That's a huge, huge. piece of this puzzle. Huge, huge, huge piece of this puzzle. Secondly, that is his M.O. His M.O. is he's going to live and die by the blitz, and he's done it from 
the time he's been a coordinator, the time he was in New York, the time he's been in Arizona with me beforehand, the time he's been in Tampa, he lives and dies by the blitz. He lives and dies by pressure. That's actually what kind of got us beat against L.A. in the playoffs. Sent cover zero blitz. Mm -hmm. They hit Cooper Cup. They win the game after we make a nice little comeback when I, when I was down in Tampa. Mm. But this was a master class, just watching him How go How against more. Detroit? So that's the beauty. That, and I, I didn't give away anything because that's the beautiful thing about what we just showed. Won't see any of it. You won't see a single thing of that. Not one single look that we just saw right there will show up this next week. He mm. will have a completely different plan, a completely different plan of attack. It's a completely different offense, and that is what makes him so good. Todd Bowles, dog, NFC South champion. Yeah. Obviously, he'd been a head coach before at the Jets, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. and Success. Then he, then he went down to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers under Bruce Arians, kind of passed the baton over to Todd Bowles, getting an opportunity. Everybody that talks about him says how big his football brain is. Oh, yeah. So smart. And yesterday in that press conference, good personality. Yeah. 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 Okay, you know, because you saw his brain going a couple different times. This is tough. This is tough. Where is she headed? This is tough. No, don't do this. Yes, please don't, <laughs> don't put me in this. No. Man. Well, then he answered they it. They got a dumb lady. Don't. <laughs> he, answered it. he answered it like, what are you talking about? And then he went, all right, I need to be nice. Yep. Uh, we'll be outside for 20 seconds. We should be okay. Yeah. He tried to give her the right answer. Yeah. What a moment. The internet really had their way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We put that up on the Instagram. That had a million views in about uh, 40 minutes or so. Yeah, those comments. A lot of action. Yeah. Yeah, and then a lot of people coming in saying, hey, this is how this works. This is why this lady was in there. I like the fact that she rehearsed the question. Okay, she even added in a couple ha has, you know. Yeah, good to live, like right. Comfortable, mm -hmm. confident in there. Oh, yeah. And then uh, just completely backfired, you know, and that's not her fault. Well, no. kind of. Well, yeah, it is. Should know that, I think, especially mm -hmm. if you're getting the opportunity to go in a press conference. But she's not in the sports world. No, no. That's not her normal thing. She's saving the world normally. Absolutely. I like to imagine that immediately after she asked that question and got that answer, she looked at her producer and said, where were you on that one, dipshit? You're supposed to be doing the legwork on that. <laughs> Nine I, I, iron, huh? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, you're fired. Yeah, I do believe. Yeah. That, that's, uh, people are saying a lot of stuff about her. They are. Yeah, they are. And this comes after the Mike Tallman situation mm -hmm. yeah. with, uh, you know, where he was asked about having a year left on his contract right. running. Boom. Anyone? Mike, you have a year left on your contract. Do you think you'll be able to Never gets old. What was funny was last night on uh, Steelers Twitter, um, Noel did the same thing to a reporter in 88, I believe. So same it was like, situation? Pretty much. Last question, same look, just pieced out. I don't know. Tomlin's look and delivery of turn was, you talk about master class for Todd Bowles against that Eagles defense, that was master class of I ain't about the shit. Then yeah. it comes out that he's coming back. Speaking of coming back, we don't know, I guess, officially what's going to happen with the greatest center of all time. One of the most sexy men to ever exist. Yeah. Jason Kelsey, he addressed the message that he sent to the locker room after losing this past weekend, getting leaked pretty much, and uh, the big fella gets a little emotional, yeah. I mm -hmm. will say. Here's Jason Kelsey talking about his future in football on the New Heights podcast. You know, Nick kind of gave me an opportunity to talk. I didn't announce what I was doing on purpose, despite, I guess, what's been leaked to the media. I just don't think you're in a position after a game like that to really make that decision. I just don't. There's too much emotion in the moment to really fully grasp that decision. I'm not trying to be dramatic and continue to draw this thing out. I'm really not. It's just something that I think, uh, you know, when it's time to officially announce you know what's happening in the future it'll be done in a, in, in a way that's you know definitive and pays respect to a lot of people and uh, individuals that have meant a lot to me and has led to the career i've had you know i don't think that it would be uh respectful or even accurate uh to be able to do that right after a game like that yeah but i did address the team and Pretty much said the same thing that I just said to you, which is, you know, I got belief in every single one of you guys. You oh. know, cherish the mm -hmm. moment you have in this league. A lot of guys, like, you know, if that is your last game, I feel sorry for you. And I'm like, you know, don't feel sorry for me, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah, man. Oh, Jason Kelsey, I mean, don't feel sorry for me. I've had a, and he was about to say, a phenomenal career. Yeah. Of, phenomenal right, career of course. and they start thinking back on all the moments and then whenever he was saying uh, you know to do it the right way is like to thank his like 
little league coach, yep. mm-hmm. obviously mm-hmm. his parents, mm-hmm. his brother, I assume, Ohio. high school coaches, state of Ohio, uh-huh. University of Cincinnati, like the whole thing, everybody that's kind of affected his life. So I assume he feels a certain type of way about not being able to do it his own way. We talked to Mitch Morse yesterday, and he basically sang his praises. Mm-hmm. And I even mentioned to Mitch Morse that you're a D1 hater. Yep. And you mm-hmm. even sang Jason Kelsey's uh, praises. He's a guy. He's been the guy. Ooh. And uh, what did the Eagles team – what do they lose whenever he's gone? And what has Kelsey's career kind of been like from your point of view as a guy who's basically been there the same, right? I yeah. mean, he's our age, I think. Yeah, he is. He's a uh, year younger. So 2010, I was in Philly when literally they drafted him. So I got to watch him his rookie year and have, have the utmost respect for what this guy does, what he means, what he stands for as a player, as a person. He's unbelievable. Got a signed jersey from him. I think it means the world to me, right? Oh, like you guys are great. That's, That's sweet. sweet. You got pretty awesome. You got Jason Kelsey's autograph. You guys do a swap? Mm-hmm. Well, we did. We did. But here's the he deal. He asked for yours. I mean, it's kind of like a like a little center thing, right? Like a little center. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Wow. Yeah, little, nice. I didn't know he asked. Yeah. He's asking for your own. I don't know if it's up on a wall. I know his. I know. I think it's up on my wall. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's a better cleaning rag. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Better, yeah. Yeah, Might the, be using it as a rag on his car. In the that's toilet. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. But I mean, he's unbelievable. When I was, and some people were posting some highlights. You know, I saw on 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 Twitter yesterday. He's so good, mm-hmm. uh, and he's been so good for so long. And he he's been durable. He's he's reliable and. He just – he goes to work. You see the knee brace on him. I mean, he's obviously a little banged up at the end of this year. He just plays and plays and plays and plays his ass off. He's an old-ass man now at this point, d But And whenever we got to watch that documentary on Amazon Prime, which I think was their most watched documentary yep. of all time, yep. they're also getting more into the sports. I think they bought all the Bally sports. Bingo, like 37. Yeah. I think there's a lot of negotiations happening right now, okay? And uh, I got to catch the beginning of most of those conversations whenever I was doing my conversations mm-hmm. on where – you know, we we're going to take the show potentially home. And all the future ideas were certainly a part of all those conversations that I got to be a part of. Now we're kind of seeing it unfold. That is uh, the NFL media one that has been negotiated by oh, yeah. everywhere. Yeah, kind of, that's a huge, huge deal. Huge. That's the one. Huge, that's a huge, yeah. huge deal. But I think there's a chance that the people that were potentially in on that and others are going to try to do so the Bally Sports deal good deal for Amazon feels like if you want to get into sports and you're able to have all the local cast everywhere that feels like a smart play and for Bally's they were you know because I think I even had conversations with the people that own that potential network they were trying to figure out how they were going to survive as well right that feels like a very very good relationship go ahead Tom Uh, that'd be really cool if they could put on Amazon like because we can't watch I don't even know if Bally's is in Pittsburgh but like we can't watch the Pens games, like so unless ESPN they're Plus. on, yeah, unless they're on ESPN or the or Pirates games or whatever. I'm just saying, if you could be out of state and go on Amazon and watch your where you're from, local teams games, that'd be awesome. Yeah, it feels like that's probably where they're headed. I think MLB and um, NBA big for the Bally's. Yeah, I, 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 oh, correct. Yeah, yeah, I think sure. that is where it's at. Not the, the NHL. I think the ESPN Plus deal was a massive one, and you get have the opportunity to do that. But on that documentary that we watched on Prime with Kelsey, it's like you saw him hang out with his family. And you saw him, like, with his daughters and, like, appreciating that time. And he talked to us about how, you know, if he feels like he can still be a player and still have that time and enjoy it all, that was going to go into the conversation. When you have to retire and you saw him get choked up, it's mm-hmm. not easy at all. No. Especially for guys that are goats, guys that are going to be first ballot Hall of Famers, guys that played nine years mm-hmm. are appreciated by everybody that they played alongside. That's not an easy decision to make at all. Yesterday, while we were talking about it, like obviously we had to talk about it because it was headlines everywhere. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like we were the only people talking about it. But as I was doing it, I'm like, I wonder how Jason Kelsey feels about this being how it is being talked about, his retirement. Not easy decision. Not at all, especially with him. You know, obviously a great career. The hype won the Super Bowl, then lost the Super Bowl, came back this year. Obviously, it didn't end how he wanted to. We're just wired, you know, to compete. And you know, one, at some point, like you said, don't feel sorry for him, you know, because he's he had a great career. He reached those highs, got paid, all these different things. Um, so don't, definitely don't feel sorry for him. But regardless of where you are, five-year career, 15-year, when you go and take that leap, it's a, it's a huge leap. And it's a tough transition for a lot of people for different um, different reasons. So I'm sure it's some fear there as well. Then just not being in that locker room with your guys, especially the position he plays. Like, it's almost like another quarterback, you know, in the trenches on both sides. So um, just the utmost respect for him. Obviously, you know, insiders and – Guys, you know, they got a job to do. They want to be the first to leak certain things. 
Um, but a guy like this, um, you know, I think who in that locker room leaked that? You think could have been anybody? I guess could have been trainer. Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you know the game. It's a lot. You know, every everybody's got moles and rats, and everybody's everybody calls, does. We're learning you know. more and more and yeah. more. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. aren't we? A lot Players, of keys out there. Trainers, coaches, front office people. Like mm-hmm. who, who? Who knows where? Well, what do you get out of it? Well, you get oh, you get a future narrative builder for mm-hmm. you. Yeah, you yeah. Get some help down the road, and you're you, that's all. Scratch my back. Scratch your back, but my back's located. Oh my! Yeah, mm-hmm. that whole situation yeah, that they've sure. got going on there. He's a maybe he'll just focus full time on being a model too and being the sexiest man on earth. Comment could do that. Could also focus on being you know the greatest sports podcast out there right now. But you mentioned the doc. Like as someone who didn't really know Jason Kelsey as you know a casual fan growing up, watching the documentary, he's just one of those guys that everyone loves and it's easy to root for. But for you guys, like how hard is it to retire? When the message for a lot of the year, even when they're struggling, is like, hey, we're so close. Like, we, we are right there. We just have a couple plays where, you know, we don't get the exact look or whatever situation it is. And especially when, you know, your best player gets hurt for the playoffs. Like, how hard is it knowing in your mind, hey, this team could go on and win a Super Bowl next year again, just like last year? So, for me, vastly different story, I assume, than you guys. Yeah. I retired after a Pro Bowl, and uh, yeah. I said, all right, I'm done. Uh and I was okay with it. I was completely cool with the whole thought of it. I did think the team was going to continue to be great. Yeah. But I was just like, all right, I'll just cover the team. But I had no impact on whether or not we were going to win games. Uh, like, I could help. But if we're down 21 mm-hmm. in the second half, I'm, I might as well have a seat in the front row. You know what I mean? Because I'm watching. Like, hey, let's do this. So my happiness started being dependent upon how everybody else was. I was doing – this sounds so selfish, but it was like I was having my greatest – I was unconscious for a while, yeah. just like doing my job better than ever. And then I wasn't able to be happy though because we were losing. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. Yep. so it was like uh, for me, it was like, uh, is it worth it anymore at my position sure. to continue to do this? And it was a difficult decision, obviously, because you're taking a leap. And I've I've played competitive sports my whole entire life, so it's like that has been my entire regimen. So I think that was the biggest thing for me. A lot of guys though get told when it's over. Yeah. Most. You know, a lot of guys get told when it's over, like. Hey, it's over because you're no longer good enough, mm-hmm. which then guys get jaded towards the sport, towards the league, towards the team, because for the first time in their entire life, literally, if guys are playing 13, 14 years, they started playing when they're, what, five, six years mm-hmm. old? Yep. Now at this point, they're 37, 38, almost 40 years old, even older, I guess, than that, and they're being told, hey, you're not good enough anymore. That's the first time in their life in any competition where they've been told you're not good. So some people get a little bit jaded. Some people get very pissed off about that. Turns them off to the game. Some guys don't even watch the NFL or football for yeah. years afterwards because oh, yeah. of how angry they are. Without Then inevitably they start coming back. You know, then inevitably they start coming back yep. and then they remember why they fell in love with football and they understand nowadays that their knowledge of football can bring them a lot of money and it can be a profession and you don't have to just disappear and wither away and your resume does matter and everything like that. But the medical one, the injury one, is the one that's tough. And I think that is something that AQ can kind of talk about. And I'm not saying Jason Kelsey's going away because of that, although he is banged up seemingly. Yeah, always. Always, all the time. And the age he's at, especially with the tush push where he has to get on the ground and scream, my life, yep. <laughs> before every single one of them. It's like the injury one for you, that was tough as a very good friend of yours, I assume for your family and for you. Did you get jaded at all towards the sport? What was kind of – because for those that don't know, AQ walked into a doctor's office – Okay, after playing with Tom Brady in the middle of a probable Super Bowl run, first time getting a chance to really start because Ryan got hurt, right? Uh, Ali Marpet got hurt. They moved Jensen to guard. Got it. Ali Marpet got hurt, moved Jensen to guard. AQ gets to play now on a Super Bowl team with Tom Brady, year 12. Played well, too. Here we go, playing good. Here we go. And then gets an injury. Obviously knew it was something involving spine, neck. Goes into a doctor's office like two days later, Mm -hmm. expecting like, hey – probably two, three weeks, yep. going to have to do this thing. Instead, doctor just says, hey, you're not playing football ever again. You're done. Right? That's how, how it all kind of took place. That's exactly how it went. I mean, and I called you literally minutes after I get this news, right? I mean, I was very, very upset. I think the biggest thing, like, when you're – for me, like, I knew I could have stole another couple of years. Like, I knew that. Like, I knew I was still playing at a high level. I knew my body was in good enough shape to – Had enough connections. Had enough connections mm-hmm. to kind of – whether or not and, – and listen, when I went down to Tampa, I wasn't going down there to be the star. I was going down there to be, like – the veteran mentor in the locker room, and I could have done that for like two or three more years, right? And so then, you know, when that's pulled, when that when that plug is pulled, like within seconds, it's like whoa, 
like what just happened, right? Life. And so, and, and and now my my case was obviously middle of the season, but there's so many other cases where it's, you know, they've had six surgeries in the last five years, right? And those ones now it's like, man, like I, I, it's struggling for me to get out of bed. It's struggling for me. It's a struggle for me to walk to the bathroom in the morning, right? Like those things. And then that's when it's like, oh, it's time. But like, you're never prepared for it, ever. Uh, ever. Ever. Yeah. How, how, what happened? I don't think I remember. Uh, I, I had a position change going into my ninth year. Uh, so I had a one year deal, was moving, moved to safety, H- had a good year. And like, same, same situation. Felt like I could have stayed um, playing, still had the connections. Body wasn't very banged up, um, but kind of towards the end of the season kind of and that was a, a tough year for injuries and winning and shit like that. that's when you know teams started doing doing different things for the future um so towards the end of the year i kind of already had my mind made like okay i end this year healthy after this season if it's not like a because i wanted to play 10 i played nine i got the nine i wanted to play 10 but if i told my agent if it's not like the perfect situation coming in getting the role that i want getting the money that i want just don't even call me, like, cause I, I would rather just flip that switch and start going forward. Because full, yeah, full. Because that's that's the biggest thing, honestly. Transition. You spoke about it. Starting at five, retiring. I was thirty two and I retired. But whenever you retire, twenty five, twenty years, like you're as a football player, basketball player, hockey, player, like that's your identity. For a lot of guys, like that's who you are. And that was what I did. It was a big part of who I am. But it never was everything. You know what I mean? So I felt I wasn't like terrified of going out into the real world. Um, I feel like football prepares you for a lot of different things. You take a lot of yeah. shit you learn in the locker room and coaches and all those different things and take them to life. Um, you can go a long way. But uh, I was so I was mentally kind of ready. But then, like you said, once that season starts or training camp comes around, it's like, damn, you start to get that itch. Yeah. You know, you're not working out the same anymore. You know, so it, it was it was tough. But uh, at the same time, I was kind of you know, kind of ready for it. Yeah, I think everybody stays on the routine for the first, like, five years probably after they retire. That's why, like, J.J. Watt yeah, is still, still. squatting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, he's still getting on the rack. You know why? Because that's literally what he's done mm-hmm. his entire life. And then you'll see guys start to, tra- you know, okay, now we're getting a little fatter. <laughs> okay, fall's coming around. Yeah. We're not getting ready to do anything. Uh, we're like, three years removed from the league. Now we're out there. But everybody's so, you know, I don't want to say systematic and routine, but it's very real. So Jason Kelsey getting choked up there, when he does give his official. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh. Got to be in that fit. Yeah, but. Yeah. Nice video. I, he's nice. going to. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Hey, he's a big emotional bear, too. For yes, sure. He, he wears his heart literally right there on his sleeve. Mm-hmm. He's done great things for the NFL. We're very lucky that he was in there. I think part of it, too, is like, we remember how the, the whole Brady situation where it's like, we we knew Brady was going to retire, but then that report comes out and kind of usurps like what he wanted to do. And for these guys who are first ballot Hall of Famers, like, I can see, like, it's just not fair. Like, you want to go out on your own terms. You want to be the one who kind of lays it out. And Because like he said, you know, like, there's, there's so many people, and now it's kind of just like an unceremonious like yeah he's gonna retire he's gonna have his opportunity to to do it his way but it's also we should sell tickets to this thing he should do it at a theater <laughs> yeah you know what i mean yeah New Heights show he should do a full one mm-hmm. yeah he should do that now that it's already been ruined right like, exactly. exactly it's already been ruined okay he said i didn't mean to say what i said in there right but once again jason kelsey transparent authentic always gonna wear his heart on his sleeve and speak to the guys it's like they should do it now as like a celebration it should be like a celebration yeah almost. at the link yeah why not and then get his high school coach in <laughs> Yeah, yeah. sell booze. Do the, do the whole sweet. thing. And then donate all the money, obviously, to something in Philadelphia that he's kind of always done. I assume they'll do something for it. Hopefully, he will feel the love from everybody at some point. I hope so, too. But it feels like an off, he's an offensive lineman, and he probably, he'll probably just do the most classy thing he could potentially do. But I did see yesterday uh, people were not happy with Schefter for uh, re- for reporting that he was retired. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, but if it wasn't Shefty, somebody. Exactly. Yeah, oh, no, no, no. I know. I'm just saying whoever was going to report it was going to get shit for not letting him do it on his own. Yeah. Well, I'm just happy like Brady that, did. I'm happy like that we as a society are like that now. Yeah. Kind of taking the place. Come on. Yeah. Come on. We're going to read that. Yeah. And we're going to tell our friends. Thank you. But, but, but not come on. Let's That's not the right it. thing yeah. to do. Sack of subs. Joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, is a future Hall of Famer in the hockey world. He is found himself as the number two most winning goaltender in the history of the NHL. Damn. He's won three Stanley Cups with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Hell yeah. He was a Las Vegas Golden Knights pillar. Hell yeah. Now he is on the Minnesota Wild. Ladies and gentlemen, friend of the program, Mark andre Fleur. Yeah, yeah. More. How are you, Bob? <laughs> Very good. Yourself? Hey. Congratulations, dude. Number yeah. two all time. Number two Thank all you. time. Yeah. Now, obviously, 
I would assume growing up in hockey, you always had an incredible ability. I think you're a number one overall pick for us. So everybody had high hopes for Marc-Andre Fleury. Did you ever expect to be able to play long enough to become this number two overall winning goalie? It feels like such a pipe dream, seemingly, for a lot of people. Did you ever expect this? Was this dreams and goals or what? Uh, no, not really. It wasn't in, in my plan. And I was, uh, you know, I was young. I just wanted to make the team. I wanted to play one game, right? Just uh, live my dream of playing in the NHL, you know, for, for a game there. And uh, obviously, I got lucky and ending in, in, in Pittsburgh and, and being part of such a good team, you know, for so many years. And, um, you know, I feel very fortunate to be to be here now. Oui, oui. Ça va, by the way? <laughs> ça va, ça va, merci. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Merci, merci, yeah. Um, in Pittsburgh is where I learned of the, the flower, the math, the absolute superstar. Now we're deep into this game. And you're nowhere near finished. It seems like you're... Have we, have we done the full reflection thing? Have we seen light at the end of the tunnel? Or are you still doing one game at a time? Because we were just talking about Jason Kelsey, mm -hmm. who had a phenomenal football career, one of our legends, and it kind of got leaked that he said to his teammates he was going to retire, and it's kind of unceremoniously. Now you're reaching these records that a lot of people obviously would start thinking about the end. Have you done that? Have you started thinking about the end? And how do you handle all of that? Yeah, uh, I have had for, for a few years, you know. Uh, being my age, right, in the sports, you never know when the end's gonna come, right? So, uh, but it's hard. It's hard to say I'm done. You know, I don't know what else in life I can do that will bring me such, uh, I don't know, joy, fulfillment. You know, and um, obviously, I don't know. Love the game, love playing, right? But also, getting a little older, getting a little uh, more tired, more sore, right? A little more banged up and stuff. But. <laughs> um, I don't know. I told myself I would wait at the end of the season and, and make a decision then. Your quads just got to be, right? Because we're like this. We're like this. All, what is it? Knees? Quads? Hips? What is it for goalie? A um, little everything. I think hips gets, is the one that gets banged up the most, I would think. You know, from the butterfly, right? You always go into splits and stuff like that. So I think that's when... <laughs> Things go south a bit. Well, I was going to, I can't do those. So no. I'm going to stay away from reenacting the things that you do every single night on the ice. Uh, Minnesota Wild. Now we're eight points out of playoff. You're playing. GM there is actually a former teammate of yours. What's it like yeah. in that building? What has it been like to experience these different places? I think you were in Chicago too, Las Vegas, yeah. Pittsburgh. What has it been like to kind of experience all these different buildings and be the legend in every single one that you step into? <laughs> I don't have all that part, but you uh, are, um, dude. You're number two. All, hey, number on. two all time, yeah. Math. This isn't uh, little guy that's putting icy hot on uh, people's yeah. hockey things, <laughs> hoping that it'll get. You're now <laughs> Hall of Fame guy. That's who you are. Oh, thank you. It's a good, it's a good. Appreciate it. Um, you know, like it was hard. It was hard leaving uh, Pittsburgh, right? I was there for 14 years, and um, you know, I always thought that was going to be my only team. But um, I'm kind of happy that all things turned out. You know, like to get the opportunity to uh, meet more people, other organizations, see how things are done, you know, elsewhere and uh, meet more fans, more teammates, you know, and, um, you know, like you said, now being with the Wild and uh, being, you know, my boss, the guy that I played with and won with, right? So it's, uh, it's, it's very special too. Now your name is up, right, for trade talks. That's kind of how hockey goes. Is that how it goes? Is that just how your life has been? And how do you feel about that? How do you feel about <laughs> that? that? Last few years, it has been like that way, right? Um, I, I don't know. When the team's out of the playoff and, you know, your contract's ending that season, I feel your name's always in, mentioned for trades, right? But um, I don't know. I, I, I still believe in my team. I still believe in the Wild. And, uh, you know, I, I want to be here and try to, to go for a run here and make our way back to the playoffs. Feels like that happens in the – now it happens in every sport. Obviously, it happens in the NBA, a lot of names. Uh, Derrick Henry story is actually coming out through Bussing with the Boys about mm -hmm. the NFL having trade, you know, speculation, every single trade deadline. In the NHL, it feels like it does happen. Like for you, the last couple of years, it's been taking place. How's the locker room? You just got to tell the boys, like, like at the end there, you said, I still believe in my team and that they just understand it's part of the business? Yeah, yeah, I think we've – We've seen it or lived it long you know, enough that we know, you know, what it's like. But uh, it's never, never easy, though, right? Like some guys you play with for for years and you become good friends. You see them every day, you know, all day, every day, right? So uh, you, you get close to guys, and you know, when there's moves, there's trades, and you know, sometimes it's it sucks to lose your your friends like that, but. Uh, I think we all know it's it's part of the job. Yeah, professional sports, man. Have a lunch with a guy. Yeah, I just hung out with this guy. I just met. His, I just hung out his, at his house. Had a good time. No Great story. Guy. We've been around each mm -hmm. other for six months straight. Bestest of friends somehow. Mm -hmm. Just popped up out of nowhere. Only known him six months. Had lunch with him. 
go to a meeting, never see a guy again. He was cut, yeah, <laughs> because we needed somebody at a different position, not even because of him. No. Never see him again. He's gone. Talk to you in 10 years when your career's over, dude. All right, see you later. Speaking of you know, building up relationships with people, Tone has a question for you. Yeah, Mark, I know uh, a bunch of Pens fans were bummed out a few weeks ago when the Wild was yeah. in town, uh, and you didn't get the nod to, to go that night. Um, is that is that your decision? Is that the coach's decision? It was you just didn't want to shut the boys out. You'd feel really bad. You didn't want to cross check Sid. Maybe maybe slash Gino one more time. What was going on there? Uh, no, that's usually the coach. Um, they make the decision, right? And uh, we were playing the next night in in Boston, and um, I think I had a few uh, few good games in Boston. So yeah, um, he just thought you know we'll play that game and and. Uh, Gus, my partner, played played in Pittsburgh, so it wasn't too. I don't think maybe people make too much of a big story about it. I was, but yeah, obviously yeah. for me it's nice to go back to Pittsburgh. I love seeing the, the you know the guys on the team, uh, the staff, and obviously the fans and all. They always give me such a nice uh, welcome, right? Um, it's always a special place to to be. Yeah, yeah, you have played a couple of good games in Boston. You played a lot of good games in Pittsburgh. <laughs> yep, a lot, a lot of good games in Pittsburgh. Because the way it was being reported was that you didn't want to play. I think, right? I, I don't think I yeah. followed it close enough. But from what I remember, it was like doesn't want to play there. And they, then all the other sub storylines started too emotional. Yeah, because mm-hmm. all this and he's like, well, I mean, we got a game in Boston the next night. <laughs> yeah. We're trying to win some games here. That's that's hilarious to think about because it happens in our sport a lot too. Whenever just a narrative gets put out there and then boom, gone, math, gone. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe social media and all that's too too quick, right? Everybody has their opinions, but I think it's sometimes it's just simpler than what it looks like. Yeah, well, I mean, isn't that the truth? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what with what we've been? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You just preach right Talking to my narrative. brain and my life there. Darius has a question for you, Math. Uh, yeah, Math. I like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mark Andre. Okay. Math. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I see you are quite the prankster. Uh, where where was the prankster? I guess in you born when it comes to uh, you know pulling. Pulling off your pranks in the locker room. And are you still? Uh, I don't mind him once in a while. Uh, <laughs> I feel it with, I don't know if it's age, but I feel like I've gotten lazy sometimes. <laughs> I don't pull him as much, but um, one guy this year, though, he said on the TV that I, was, I, was, I wasn't bad for a 50-year-old. It was Brendan, Brendan Dwayne, so I make sure I got... I got him a few times, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. there's a full article about it. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's all. That, that, I think that's where D-Bot actually learned about your prank. Uh, mm-hmm. st- but this goes back. You, oh, yeah. yeah. Like, you're legendary, legendary pranker, allegedly. Just did it in ago. Pittsburgh yeah. with, yeah, Latang, was it Latang's helmet, I think? He, like, stole it and replaced with a different one? <laughs> different one, yeah. <laughs> Keep him on the stalls a bit. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Look how happy but you started. When I started, I think like uh, guys would do it more. Like I learned from the old guys, right? When I, like, I had my socks cut off, my underwear cut off, my ties, my shirts, you know, no, but like guys would always mess with me, right? So, I think I just learned from from the old, the older guys. On that note, Connor has a question for you. Yeah, Matt, as you know, someone like you mentioned on the back half of your career here, how do you pass on knowledge to the younger goaltenders or even defensemen? Like, do you just tell them like, "Hey, just stop the puck"? There's not much more <laughs> more to it than that. Or like, what tips and like tidbits do you give to guys? And are there certain you know specific players like McDavid, for instance, that you'll kind of harp on more because he does things that other guys can't do? Or how does that work? Uh, the question, uh, you know, I it's tough. I feel like you know the other goal I play with Gustafsson is is younger. Um, pro- I think the younger generation has a little bit of a different techniques too. You know, like being older, I, I don't know, I scramble a little bit more, right? So <laughs> I don't have any, <laughs> any good tips for him there. But uh, I think a lot, a lot of the game is playing in the head, right? I think it's it's so mental, and um, you know, if I can just help him stay calm and. Uh, Believing in himself and being consistent, playing the same way every night, every period, you know. And uh, but he's such a good kid. He's such a, a good goalie, also, right? So it's. Uh, I don't feel like I do too much, you know. But I try to uh, try to help him the way I can. Yeah, I assume he's listening to every word you're saying and watching everything you're doing off the ice, even cutting the ties and <laughs> changing the helmets. Um, whenever you think about like. Old school goalie versus new school goalie. Because you just said there, I'm a little bit more of a scrambler. Mm-hmm. I assume the yeah. techniques have just been developed over the years. And have you tried to adapt any of those? Or are you just, nah, I can't, I can't be too technically sound here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I try. I always try. I try everything, everything new I learn every time I see a new uh, 
a kid coming up, you know, with some new style. Goalie coaches bring it up too, right? But um, I tried everything. Some some things I changed, like the way you play on the poles. I think I've played four different ways since I started playing in the league, you know. So, uh, but at the end of the day, I'm comfortable with you know my way, and I think that's a little bit more um, exciting. What I've done career and a little bit older style a bit yeah and a little bit more exciting uh yeah. there's a video that we actually just saw i don't know when it was but you you crossbar hits and while you're still you give like a thank you to the crossbar yeah here it is <laughs> puck is still in the zone by the way oh shit thought that was a goal for sure in your head right thought that was in nope it wasn't in the zone thank you thank you <laughs> <laughs> just the moxie just the moxie in the middle of like oh. Let's do that and more. I need you. Need you. Uh, that's hilarious. Just a little thank you. I saw uh, Patrick Roy when I was a kid. I was, he was playing for Montreal, right? And I always watch uh, the Canadian a lot. And he would say thank you and talk to his folks. And since then, I always say a little thank you and merci, you know, to, to the folks when they make a save. Do, so in America, do you speak English to them? And then in Canada, you speak French to your post? <laughs> oh. I, I do both all the time because I don't know what... Uh, Iron is from, right? <laughs> <laughs> from Pittsburgh. From Pittsburgh. Yeah, it's Mark. all from Pittsburgh. You know that. Uh, speak a little Yinzer. Hey, thanks down there. Last question here because we're coming up on a hard out. We appreciate you, Math. Yeah, Math. Uh, a lot of the people we have on associated with the NHL and in the hockey world right now say that, like, the skill guys, like, the NHL is in the best spot that it's been right now. Is that something you're cognizant of as a goalie? Like, is it much harder to keep a clean sheet now mm. than it was when you first came into the league? Uh, I think it is, yeah. Um, you know, the, the four lines, right, the 12 forwards, everybody can score. Everybody has a good shot. Everybody's fast. Uh, the, the speed of the game is fast. Um, when I started, like, guys would use, you know, wood sticks and a couple of guys per team's that big slap shot, right? And then bottom of the, the bottom six of the lineup were guys that would hit and um, fight a lot, right? So I think nowadays there's more, more skill and more speed, you know, uh, throwing at us a bit well Maff, we appreciate you for everything you did in pittsburgh obviously as big time penguins fans and what you've done for hockey and i'd like to say hey we have a goalie goal on the year already you put another one you put one in okay for the rest of the year wherever the hell you're playing whatever the hell you're doing yeah two hundred fifty thousand dollar donation to a choice of yours <laughs> all right it's good. I like it. I like it. Come on, let's you went up last time. I think I talked to you. I don't know a few years back, and it was a hundred. So now on, <laughs> you're on ESPN. You do well. Eh? <laughs> All, right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the second winningest goalie in the history of the NHL, a man who, if he scores a goal this year, will earn two hundred fifty thousand dollars to a charity of his choosing. Mark Andre Fleury. Merci beaucoup. Yeah. 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 Au revoir. That's all. That's yeah, four that years of good. French for that. Coach. Enchanté. Bingo. Yeah, je m'appelle Pat et toi. Boom. He, he would say je m'appelle Maf. You know. There you go. A, B, C, D, U, F, J. That's really all you need. That's all I got. Mm -hmm. That's it. <laughs> you know. To a tray, that means you are very, and then just mm -hmm. add whatever English word at the end if you yeah. want to make fun of somebody. I already have Savar. To what? a tray, fat, bro. Mm -hmm. Get out of here. What age was it when you realized I should have took Spanish? Uh, that was... Probably the end of my first semester of that French class. Sure, <laughs> the worst. Yep. Yeah, everybody should be taking Spanish. I don't yep. know what he, I don't even know why that's an option. Yeah, you know, nice elevator music here. It takes in the first break. Oh, that's Fantastic. Good. Thanks to Math. AJ Hawk will be on the other side. Same with JJ Watt. Be your friend. Tell a friend something nice. It might change your life. We're in this together. Goodbye. Tonight, we have a straight-to-hell match in which the devil will battle against our office wrestler, Dylan Boston. You might be wondering how we got here. Let's find out right now. And now, we have to make a deal with the devil. Yeah, no big deal. Classic trial by combat situation. We got our champion, Dylan Bostic. All he's got to do, win the match, one, two, three, and we're home safe. The only man that would take the job to protect us from the devil himself, Dylan Bostic. Like you mentioned, Pat, there's probably about five or six other guys we'd rather have in this position, but we'll take Bostic, I guess. Not only are all of our souls on the line, the Office Championship Wrestling Championship, presented by Natural Light, is also on the line. No, Jesus, the devil's no, trying to put I God things right to hell. hell! I do not want to Good go God, to hell. no! Don't do Good it! Good God, no! Come I on, Boston!
dick, man! Oh, no! Oh, my... I'll see you in hell, Pat. The goddamn Easter Bunny's out here! What the hell's he doing here? The Easter Bunny is obviously here to help Dylan Bostic! Wait a minute! No! No, no! The Easter Bunny's been on the devil's side this whole time! Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ! Jesus what the hell's Christ! Jesus Christ doing here? The power of Christ is compelling Dylan Bostic! Look at this, Pat! Jesus Christ is bringing Bostic back to life! Jesus is going insane! And now Bostic's kicking wholesale ass in the ring! Jesus Christ has come to help Dylan Bostic defeat the devil and defeat the Easter Bunny! What's gonna happen here? Good God Almighty, it looks like he's going up in the scissor lift! Jesus is lifting the scissor lift! Jesus is now telling Bostic to come down from Don't do the it, heaven. Bostic! Don't no. do it! Oh, oh my, my God! God. Oh. Bostic's dead! He's dead! You can't tell from home, but that scissor lift is about eight stories up, Pat! Eighty feet in the air! Oh, wait! He's tuning up the bed! The devil! Super kick! Into the casket! The devil goes down! The devil goes down! He shuts the casket! Shut the hell! The devil goes straight back to hell where he belongs! With the assist from Jesus Christ of Nazareth! Dylan Bostic saves the PMI office's souls and wins the OCW Championship! The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are a young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pig! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sports! 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 Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Watt Wednesday, January 17th, 2024. Hour two of the program starts now! It's happening this weekend on Saturday and Sunday. Two games on Saturday. Two games on Sunday to decide who will be competing in the championships of the AFC and the NFC. A lot of great teams, a lot of great players still available uh, to play for the Lombardi. And I can't wait to chit-chat about that and all the storylines happening around the NFL. Which coach is going to end up where? Who's still available? Is Atlanta and Bill Belichick a real possibility oh. soon what is it heating up what, what about Harbaugh he interview with Atlanta is that real or is it Chargers it's the landing one. where's Frabes at in where this is entire yeah. thing? Antonio Pierce is he the Raiders coach yet I mean there's so many questions and we will try to answer and chit chat about them all the toxic table is here both wearing green love it at Boston Connor yeah. and at Ty Schmidt you boys look great well, hey, I appreciate you. that thank you look great too uh, Navy's good color as well well thank you it's it's negative. It's it so negative cold. ten wind chill out. It's cold. Cold. Yeah. Supposed to break today though. Supposed to get up to twenty. And we're, it did we're feel a little warm drum. today. Did it? Not it, this morning. Yeah, this morning it did not. But I, I, I do believe it's uh, heating up to a nice balmy twenty six degrees today. Yeah, I'm back down on Friday. Yeah. Well, I got this. Welcome to winter, baby. All Welcome right. to winter. We watch Hard Knocks. Uh, Miami had to deal with winter for real in Kansas City. I thought that was a really good episode. At Bubba Gumpino, currently sitting in place for Zito. Zito, we miss you. I hope you're doing well, buddy. Uh, and congrats to you and the wife and beautiful baby. That's right. Uh, Gumpy, watching that Hard Knocks episode last night, kind of taking the tractor another round, not only on that particular loss to the Kansas City Chiefs, but the entire season. How to make you feel, pal? Are you in a better spot now after that episode or a worse spot now? It was a nice wrap-up of the season. I feel a lot better after... Uh what they said on hard knocks i mean i just i love that team i know it didn't go as planned but like 
for the Dolphins to go back to back years to the playoffs, yes, it's not where we want to be, but I think we're moving in the right direction. It was a nice wrap up of the season rather than just being bummed out after <laughs> losing on Saturday night. Speaking of bummed out, one half of the hammer, Don Cowboys tone things. You made a sound there whenever he said uh, oh. he's in a better spot. Is it because you immediately thought of Mike McDaniel afterwards in the Kansas City Chiefs visiting locker room saying, you guys made me so proud and almost choking up in yeah, there? Yeah, I, almost. I, I did. Uh, that's full. Definitely choking up. I'm sorry. Yeah. Almost crying. Mm -hmm. I think he did probably cry for yeah. the boys. I did. I love I love Mike McDaniel. His fits are unbelievable. And, and that's – I was just – because it's football. And, you know, they care. And, and you don't get that a lot of places when you uh, are over, I don't know, 18 years old, like in a workplace or something like that. So that's just awesome to see. Oh, invested in stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Emotionally. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and that's what football is. And that's why earlier when you – I think the Packers are playing with house money because they're, you know, they're huge dogs against the, the, the San Francisco 49ers. Lions aren't they could tell they could sell you they're playing with house money. <laughs> tell you what, they lose a home playoff game to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as almost touchdown favorites. They're gonna be disappointed, okay? Well, and, certainly disappointed, but they yeah, should what? be. They, they should be disappointed. They've gotten to a point in their lives <laughs> where you are not at where what was that all about? They're just happy to be dancing at this point. Amen. Yeah. They're appreciative right. of the moment. Tony, yeah. you've known me for six years. I've been asking for a playoff uh, win for no, six I know years. You we have. finally I, got I, I, I know our playoff you, win. And I know you have, Foxy, but if you go up there, how long has it been since you've been to a game? Since 2016. And they, you, they lose. There's going to be a lot of f curse of folks. Foxy's uh, no. There was a lot of losing in between that whole thing, Tony. Tony. Fox, Tony. Why are you trying to start this narrative? This. Why are you trying to start this narrative? Tony, let the kid live. Yeah, and, wow. AJ, and AJ will tell you because I know he's there. He, let's not lower the standard now, okay? Like, I know Foxy's standard was 10 and 7 a playoff win, but you got that. There's a new standard. We it's, did it. It's beat the Bucs on, on Sunday. When's the, standard, when's the new standard start? The middle of the season? Yeah, right, no, right now. <laughs> Divisional weekends? New yeah. standard. Yes. Move Can't even in. enjoy the old standard no. once you reach it. We need a new standard immediately, which I respect. Speaking of standard, this dude is the standard whenever it comes to football IQ and fits. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Nine-year NFL vet, Darius J. Butler's here. Buddy Butch. Hey, Butch, the uh, Detroit Lions lose this weekend. They want a playoff game. Huge disappointment for them. The standard, oh, the standard my. Changed <laughs> yep. okay. when they hired MCDC. And a lot of people made a lot of fun about the hire from the outside. But look, the guy we always talk about between those four walls, and they built the culture. And every, everybody in the locker room believe. And I, I mean, I don't necessarily believe Packers are playing with house money. I, I think it's some expectation there, too. I know the line has moved a little bit. I'm little sure bit. the money's a lot of money on the Packers. I've yep, seen how they are. performed uh, in the wild card. So when you have that team, obviously Jordan Love is his first year, you know, first full year as a quarterback. But he's a 25-year-old quarterback. Yeah, youngest team in the NFL, though. Hey. Just Lions are a top got, five youngest yeah. team yeah. in the NFL, by the way. Yeah. Keep that in mind. Okay. All right, so everybody kind of kicking accountability down the road. <laughs> yeah, are you kidding me? Enjoying the moment, which I appreciate, because if I was a Packers fan, I wouldn't have expected to win a playoff game, let alone going in a divisional round. And if you knock off the San Francisco 49ers, hell yeah, you lose to the Niners. I'm under mindset. Now, Darius is – Thinking, I think, from how the locker room feels, and if the locker room, for sure, they should feel as if they don't know win. you're going right. to be back. Absolutely, they you don't know. My rookie year, we go to the Super Bowl, completely undefeated. Two years later, almost completely defeated. Mm -hmm. Never make, you know, potentially never making it back. It's a quick fall to the bottom. Oh, yeah. You have a window that is so short. Patriots obviously had the longest. The Chiefs are currently in the middle of a window. There's other teams that are in a window. So in the locker room, yes, I think they should believe Absolutely. that they could beat anybody. But as a fan with realistic views on it, I think Foxy and Ty are in the best <laughs> in the best position out of absolutely anybody at this point. I will absolutely be disappointed if they lose on Saturday night. No questions. But I mean, they're in the dance. They, they're still alive. If they beat the Niners and then don't <laughs> win the Super Bowl, I will be looking for bridges to jump off. What? Jeez. <laughs> <For sure. laughs> it, it, it goes from here That's a respectable to, thing. hey, let's go win a Super Bowl. I now. understand you'll be disappointed that you didn't win, but it's not like a heart game it's not like a heartbreaker like, no, no, no. you're not like the Chiefs fans for instance their team's supposed to win it whenever they're in these games sure. yes. these mm -hmm. Buffalo Bills fans like Same hey we gotta go we gotta do this I assume the Ravens fans with a lot of free agents mm -hmm. that they come, they're like hey we gotta go win this but if you're the Lions who haven't won a playoff game in how long since 1991 <laughs> and you won one it's yes. like 
After the game, you're bummed. Next day, you wake up, you go, that was a cool year. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that was a cool year. Sometimes it's not about the, the destination. <laughs> Sometimes the it is favorites. about the journey, and I'm enjoying Home the favorite. journey, and they did it. They got their playoffs. 12 year NFL vet, AQ Shipley's <laughs> here. You really just pull out the, it's about the friends we made along the way, Ryan. Like, <laughs> yes. What are we doing? Well, man, we're going to be miserable. Gonna be miserable. Lying, what friends bro. did you make along the way? What are we going to do? We're going to be miserable every single season. We don't win the Super Bowl. Then why am I watching this team every single year for three hours a Sunday? To be clear, as a person who's from, from Pittsburgh, alongside you guys, mm -hmm. you expecting Detroit fans to have the same view? Right, Tony. On you're right. This, that's sports? why Tony hates Bills fans right now. Bingo. This is why I get in arguments with fan bases because I expect them to have the same expectations. That, but you are right now, currently. You're right. kind of taking a shot at Pittsburgh right now by saying that Detroit should have the same view as on their NFL team as Pittsburgh does. They should not. Listen, they have sucked so bad. There's been what three teams that have gone out in sixteen. Two. Two. Oh, just yeah. them and the, the bronze and, and the lions. That's not yeah. who they are anymore, though. Yeah, and Tony. 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 Agreed, but they lived through this. These humans lived through Joining us now is a man <laughs> who's a part of the O in 16 years. Great point. Uh, absolute stallion. A man who is a college football national champion and Super Bowl champion. All-time leading tackler for the Packers, AJ Hawk. <laughs> AJ, I know you're going to say, stare, stare, <laughs> we got to go win. But, like, <laughs> Lions fans waking up the next morning, if they lose to the tip, ah, you saying the Bucks you now. You can't yeah, the lose Bucks. to the Bucks. Oh, now, home. Niners, one seat. Okay. Yeah. You get Bingo. that. Bucks, <laughs> Baker's had a great year. What but. do you think, AJ? You think uh, the fan bases, they wake up on Monday after a loss to the Niners and to the Buccaneers, are as devastated as maybe the Niners fans would be? No! No, no way! Agreed. No way! Agreed, agreed. But they're going to hang for it. It's Sorry. a different form of devastation, I believe, in the fan bases, whether you're Niners or the Lions, like teams like that, if you would lose. But how do you handle success? We talk about it all the time. Like, handling success is the toughest thing you can do. And now the standard, there's a new standard in Detroit, and Foxy is not living up to that standard by saying, <laughs> we, got our, we got our playoff win. I've been asking for a playoff win. So what? Is everything else now icing on the cake, as they say, Foxy? Yes, House money. yes 100%, AJ. AJ, AJ is the Packers way, season a no, failure? this year. The, it's this year. It's so, not about, like, net, like I think as soon as the offseason starts, and I don't want to talk for Lions fans, right. but I've tried <laughs> to put myself into Foxy's sure. kind of viewpoint here, especially as Tone Diggs starts calling this the Foxy curse, trying to make Foxy feel <laughs> nice terrible. Nice try. Well, this, is, nice try. this, is, pay, this is payback for what he did to the Steelers in 2020. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're 100% right. We became a Steelers. That's where they were, though. He was picking up other teams. Bingo. For the playoffs because he was 30 years old and his team, his team's never been there. Like, they just suck. So, for me, I think what Lions fans will say if they were to lose this game to the Bucs. Now, it is saying the Bucs every time. Yeah. Starting to Good sway me a little team. bit. Good football team. Good football team. Mm -hmm. Start sway me a little bit. Yeah. Baker Mayfield's dealing. Yes. Yeah. Nine and eight. Yes. Defense is humming. I think they'll say good year, something to build on, excited for next year. Like, I, I, I think then next year becomes the year where they're like, but right. You, but you, start, AJ, you started the conversation off by saying you went your rookie year and you never made it back. You guys hung a banner in 14. We get it. But <laughs> Whoa, good banner. Hey, but, good guys, banner. But, but, <laughs> I didn't hang shit. But, I but, didn't hang shit. So now that they're here and they got a real play. chance, they got to go, right? They, gotta, they don't. You don't know what's going to happen. They let their brains go there, AQ. They, they, if you're this far, if you already have a playoff Bingo. win, as a player, as a fan, everyone's already player, taking their brain. They're like, oh, man, I could, I could get some tickets. You know, I could fly to Vegas. I could go to the Super Bowl. That's what you're starting to think now. Yep. So when you let yourself get yeah, ahead of it like that, nice. then no. that's what makes it that much sucks. more. So AJ, Packers' season is a failure if they lose. You're, that's the exact yeah, same standard. No, it's Always, no, no it's matter not. what. If you don't win the Super Bowl, yeah, you're joining us okay. now. <laughs> that's fair. Joining us now. Ben Johnson's the same gone. At all. Aaron Glenn's gone. <laughs> it's not the same at all. Aaron Glenn allegedly the AJ gone standard it is. Yeah. Ben Johnson. Well, I even play not individually, not no. individually as much, but as a team, yes. Listen, you I think you're thinking as a player, like player, yes. Mm -hmm. Better yeah. feel as if you can win a Super. I'm talking about the fans on Monday or on Saturday after they go through the punching of the TV the night of. The next day they wake up and they go. Man, that was a fun year. We did good. Punch right. my TV. You're right. Joining us now is a guy that might have a more level head. <laughs> this guy owns a soccer team. How are they doing, Gumps? Oh, boy. So They bad. got absolutely robbed in their last game. <laughs> so Actually bad. robbed. The EPL actually Come took on. down JJ's video of it. It was so bad. Jo joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, Houston Texans Ring of Honor member, future Hall of Famer, JJ Watt. Yeah, boy, JJ. JJ, sorry we made you wait. I did not expect all of this. Pablo Sanchez. Nice. What is that? I don't think I know that. Oh. Back, back air baseball. Class. He was one of the best players in the league from day one. Pablo was. He could see the Come on. Oh, yeah. The greatest video game player of all time. Whoa, whoa. Pablo. Pablo's got a little good. 
Well, yeah, I mean, he, yeah. Hit, oh, he hit absolute moonshot. He's yeah. like, he's like could throw, two five. Could throw gas too. Yeah, yeah. I, I Long play back. games. I play real. It life. was a computer game. He was the first Altuve. <laughs> he was Jose Altuve before Jose Altuve. I respect that, and I'm happy to hear you play video games and still became this. That's that's phenomenal. Is that real? <laughs> I mean, when I was a kid, yes, I absolutely did. I don't, I don't uh, participate anymore. But I did when I was a child. Well, Very I, much enjoyed. I'll play the PGA game nowadays. Yeah, it's the best. It's a great game. Yeah, I mean, not to mention the Auk. Yeah, I'm in the Oculus Arena. Come yeah. on. Anyways, thank you for joining us, JJ. Heard you guys got screwed. What's going on? Do we need? Who are we in a war with? Who do, who do you need me to be mad at? Since you're probably not allowed to say it, we'll take you off the screen. Just tell me what to say and who I need to say it because I saw the video that you posted before that league took it down mm. from an owner's. Twitter account. That's messed up. You got screwed. I don't know soccer rules that well. Only played for like 18, 19 years of my <laughs> life or something like that. But that seemed to be quite a bamboozling. How's this happen? And what are we going to do about it, JJ? Uh, I appreciate that. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, as I said in my tweet, I'm new into ownership. So I'm not well versed in what I'm allowed to say and what I'm not allowed to say. But I definitely had a problem with what happened in our previous match. Uh, I also have a problem with the follow-up to it, which they released the audio of the VAR decision. So unlike over here, like they, it's pretty cool. They've actually started to release the audio between the replay official and the on-field official. And uh, a lot of bullshit happening in that also. Whoa! So not happy Whoa, on many geez. fronts. So I'm, I'm just, I'm not happy. I'm not happy about it. I'm upset. Uh, it costs our team points, which are extremely valuable right now. Obviously, they're at a premium, and uh, we need them all. So it's very, very frustrating at the highest level in the best league in the world wow. to have the decisions NFL. like this being made. That's football. The NFL and the MLS and then that one, obviously. Yeah, but whenever you talk about these points being worth actual millions of dollars at this point, mm -hmm. and then you hear some VAR guy just basically give some half-assed bullshit reason, is that what it was, it was wrong? It's just factually incorrect? How, how, well, I mean, I mean the, the assistant, so like there's a VAR guy and there's assistant VAR, and they're both watching the tape and they're talking to the official. The assistant VAR guy literally says, I think the forward backed into him. And the main VAR guy just basically shut him down like a little child. He was like, no, we're not going to listen to that. Uh, I believe this is the way we're going to do it. Wow. And I mean, it's oh, just... This is like the if it's a different father. jersey. If it it's is. a different jersey... Mm -hmm. If it's a different, uh, if it's a different crest on the jersey, I think the call goes a little bit of a different way. Oh. That's all I'm saying. I don't respect the Clarets. Wow, they want Burnley out. Well, Premier League's got a big problem on their hands. You know who that is. And I'm not afraid to talk about it. Like sometimes these small clubs, sometimes these clubs that aren't, you know, in the top six don't have a voice, don't have the ability, don't feel like they can have somebody to speak on their behalf. That's not us anymore. We're going to talk about it. We're going to bring this shit up. We're going to have a conversation. We're going to talk to the Premier League, and we're going to make our voice heard. Will it matter? I don't know. But we're at least going to bring this shit up. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. 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 Thank you, JJ. Get Tyler in there. Yeah. It's not always easy. I didn't see Dude Perfect say anything about it, but I, I assume that they have deferred to you and been a part of the email chains where you said, hey, this is what I'm thinking, how we go about attacking this. I think putting a little public pressure on people is a good thing, especially if you're willing to do it. But it's going to come back at your shins. You're going to be in a meeting with just Premier League people, and they're going to show this interview, and they're going to show your tweet, and you're going to be made out to be the bad guy in that party of eight. you got to remember, outside that room, you're the hero, pal. Yeah. You're not the bad guy. You got it. You got it. Go get him, JJ. You got it, JJ. Because they will. You'll be the only one in there. Oh, yeah. And, and even your partners will yeah. be like, yeah, we told him he shouldn't. And you'll, you'll be feeling heat from everybody. But you got to remember, right outside those walls, in reality, everybody's like, go get him, JJ. Yeah. Go get him. Just fight him. <laughs> so remember. Sound like, you're, sound like somebody coming from a low experience. A lot of it, yeah. Whenever you're the one that's just like, yep, I'll say it. Here's my shins. You know, <laughs> you gotta. Sometimes there's some uncomfortable conversations that have to take place where people make you feel like you're the bad guy or you're wrong. Deep in your gut, in your JJ Watts, you already got this. Mm -hmm. It's got to be not zero percent. Mm -hmm. It's a hundred percent will in there saying, right. "I'm right to hell with everybody Amen. in here," and you're the right guy to do it. Right. Gonna change the Premier League forever. Let's, Let's go. go. Gonna change the Premier League forever. Oh, JJ. Let's go. Yeah, you're welcome, steady. America. Look at another thing we're doing. Again. Now, they're going to be mad about that one. I probably just affected mm -hmm. the what you, leverage that you had there, bringing up our country, maybe yeah. being the ones to save the entire sport. I mean, it's okay. It's okay. One that? step forward, two steps back, three steps forward. We'll figure it out. Yeah.
Okay, three steps forward after one step forward, two steps yeah. back. We're still ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was doing the math by, while you were doing it. I'm like, where are we at? Where are we? At? Okay, we are. Still step we're still okay. We are still up. That's great news. Uh, JJ, I appreciate that you've joined us all year. Um, over there in the Pittsburgh Steelers facility where you did not play for them. Nope. Son of a bitch. Could have used him. Sell out move. God, when JJ was, or when Josh Allen was doing that full thing, mm -hmm. you could see. Yeah. TJ, JJ, Watt. Yep, been there. Behind him. Tracking him. Yeah. Tracking him. Wrong. Yeah, boom, Sasquatch, you know, coming to get him. We all had visions of that as they were showing the replay, and I'm sure a lot of Yinzers thought to themselves, that would have been nice. But whenever you hear about everything that's kind of taking place after that, with allegedly Tomlin's going to step away, and then the Brooke Pryor question in the press conference being one of the greatest moments I've ever seen in my entire life, documented sports, entertainment, pop culture, what? whatever, when he just walks off. And then he comes out and says that he's staying to the boys or whatever. That's all a bunch of BS. What are your thoughts? on that and that's not the only building that's having that particular type of situation i mean dallas is wondering what the future mm -hmm. looks like right now seattle john schneider's taking over it's like a lot of question marks everywhere how do you think players handle that and what are your thoughts on all of it in this particular season yeah i mean it, you look in the locker room and you read the quotes of the guys and their exit interviews with the media and to a man every single guy has said that they only want to play for tomlin obviously TJ uh, said he it's a big part of his contract negotiation a couple of years ago. He, he wants to play for Mike T. The only guy he wants to play for is Mike T. Everybody in that locker room loves him, respects him, wants to play for him. Uh, I also don't think that that means that they're satisfied with the outcome. That means they're satisfied with the way things have gone, and that means they're satisfied with where they are currently. I think there's certainly things that they want to improve and get better on there. Um, but in today's day and age, I also see the people on the other side. I mean, I'm sure Tone has a ton of thoughts on this, but, you know, I do see the people's side where they're like, well, if Bill Belichick can be, you know, esc escorted out of his role as the head coach of Whoa. a team that he won six championships with, uh, why, aren't, why are we in this situation where we can't say that maybe at least have a conversation about our coach? Now, I am personally also fully – and well aware of how difficult it is in this league to find a good football coach. And I do think that people uh, think that there's these quick fixes and things. Somebody's going to come in and make this thing miraculously better and figure it all out. Um, I, I just, I really, really, really do not know if you're going to find many better football coaches in the world uh, than Mike Tomlin. That's what everybody, don't. that's what everybody has said. And then all the Pittsburgh people say, well, well, we can win more in nine games, ten games. Can we, uh, can we win a playoff? That's what they all say. That's literally the answer from all Pittsburgh people. They're like, we understand that we're maybe looking like a bunch of ingrates. Okay, we understand that we have had a success that other teams would dream of. More specifically, the Detroit Lions for like the last thirty years before MCDC got to town. Bingo. But with that being said. We'd like to reiterate the fact that when the playoffs come around, we know we have no shot. Like, we have absolutely no chance. So what are you dancing with? You know, what, what are you doing? And that's how I that's think, it feels. I, yeah, and I think that, you know, something that I would say is Some purely from an outsider standpoint. This is, this is from an outsider standpoint looking at it. I think that you can say that he, Mike Tomlin is an unbelievable leader of men. He's an unbelievable head coach. Uh, there are things that seems to be in that organization. Obviously, this year they had to change their offensive coordinator mid-year, and that offense was a bit of an issue. I do think that there are things that can certainly be improved. Um, but I, I, I also think you can also say that there's a lot of things that need to improve, and Mike Tomlin is still the best leader of men for this organization. So I think if you're willing to go into the offseason and have realistic conversations about what needs to happen and how things need right. to change to make that next jump, but you can also say we should still have Mike T at the helm. Yeah, that's kind of where I've landed, JJ. Or yeah, JJ. Um, oh, jeez. Uh -oh. Well, oh, come on. Well, we, we want well I was going to say. Tone. I was going to say. You know, I was, that's where I've landed, JJ, because TJ came out and did his press conference, and that's where I get my marching orders from. So then I was good with that. <laughs> TJ Watt. Yeah, that's <laughs> when as soon as TJ said that's the only coach I want to play for. I said, well, that's the only coach I want to root for. Billy Bones, if you do recall, when he met JJ, said. Hey, huge fan of your brother. Yeah. <laughs> then walked away. You know, that's how a lot of Pittsburgh feels about your brother. You Watts have done good. Go ahead, AJ. JJ, do you pay attention when, like, the media is asking some of these players if they want their coach back or they expect him back? I know you, we talk, we hear the Steelers players absolutely laying on the line for Tomlin, but when you hear some other kind of 
players respond. They say, oh, I didn't, I didn't know his job was up in the air. I didn't know he was going to be here. I guess I'm out of here as well. Like, do you think – can you read between the lines and kind of see if there's any kind of wavering support for other coaches? I do. Uh, I do. I think that you can tell a lot by players' answers in certain situations, and it's all very subtle. Um, I think that there, players – I mean – Players aren't idiots. Sometimes we are. I mean, there's no doubt sometimes we are. But uh, sometimes we're really, really big idiots. But I do think that when speaking to the media, especially at the end of the year, in an exit interview like that, you you go in knowing what types of questions are going to come your way, and you go in knowing what they're looking for in their answers. And there's a lot of times where you don't have to say everything out loud, but you can say some of the things that you're thinking. So um i do think that you can read into guys answers in the way that they maybe avoid talking about something uh yes so yes, how would I you respond jj can... let's say you didn't want the coach to come back and you were in one of those interviews what would you say if they said hey what are your thoughts on your head coach possibly being fired and say you despise this guy you may or may not have gotten in a fight with him during practice Who oh, knows? Yeah. Oh, yeah. what yeah. do you say to try to like sugarcoat it just make this situation up yeah <clears throat> yeah hey hey man this is this is all above my pay grade i just we got to be better as players we got to go out there and do everything none of us are happy Hates with the way this season went nobody's happy uh we gotta of course find a way to be better next year um but that's all above my pay grade. He's got a great personality. Every day he shows up. <laughs> nice guy. You know, every day he's in here. We hear that. That's, that's okay. <laughs> the pay grade? No, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, we got, got it. Yeah, we, got it. we know. All right. Yeah, and also, we should go back to some JJ clips from back in the day. Yeah. Just a really good. You know, <laughs> oh, another, there's the pay grade line. Yeah. Oh, pay grade. <laughs> there it is. There it is. That's way over my head, man. I have no idea. Obviously, you're a living legend in Houston and many cities for good reason. Houston's buzzing right now. Go ahead, D Bud. Yeah, I know you tapped into that fan base. We were having a spirited debate before you came. And what are the expectations, uh, you know, in this divisional round and beyond with CJ Stroud and his Texas teams? And do you kind of feel like, hey, Kind of playing with house money this year. We got D'Amico, CJ coming back. We'll be all right going forward. I was listening to the conversation you guys were having, and it really is a fascinating one because I, I agree with AJ in that you on one hand, while you think you're playing with house money and whatever happens from this point, yeah. But on the other hand, like the opportunities in this league are so hard and so difficult and sometimes so rare to come by that once you have that in front of you and once you realize how special it is, like this is a chance to go out there and get something done. And yes, you for Houston, you have a rookie quarterback, you have a head coach in his first year. You're looking at the future and you're, you're saying, this is incredibly bright. We can sign more free agents this off season. We can go out and really build ourselves something special for years to come. But there's also that part of you that's like, let's catch lightning in a bottle. Let's do something special, unbelievable right now, right here because maybe these young guys are naive enough to not even understand how special this situation is so they don't get affected by the pressure because they're just enjoying it they're living it they're being there's got like i do think there is something to be said for taking advantage of that opportunity when you get it because you don't know when it's going to come around again my first year in the nfl we went to the playoffs for the first time in program history we won the first round playoff game we went up to baltimore and we played a damn good football game we just unfortunately couldn't get it done. We had some turnovers and things, um, but we were damn close there. And obviously, I've, I've won in the first round four years of my career, but not I, I never made it to the championship, never made it to the Super Bowl. So uh, while everything may look like it's on the up and up forever, this league can humble you real quick. Do you have a pick in that Buffalo game? Uh, it was uh, the Bengals. I had a pick, uh, yes, and a sack. It's Rookie. becoming Houston Texans just kind of like – Write a passage to get a pick in a sack in the uh, in the playoff game. That's what we do: pick sixes in playoff games. There it is. Two of them. But how about uh, Joey Flacco? Back to back, man. That, Joey Flacco. That first Flacco pick six. Oh man, <laughs> classic Stop Joe. Steve that, was, that was classic. Yeah, that was uh, that was I love fault. Joe Flacco, dude. Not his fault. We knew this was going to come at some point, but I mean, just. In Joku not being able to make the tackle right there, that was all she wrote. Joe mm -hmm. Flacco said, somebody's got it. Nope, Miles cool. Teller gets. Yeah. 
flattened with a great block. <laughs> running. For, by the way, he ran like a 4.7, 4.8, yeah. which was phenomenal. But, yeah, a couple pick six is obviously a big deal. And you were talking about from a player standpoint, obviously, where we can capture some lightning in a bottle, maybe play a little bit more free. I'm talking about – we. and his question was even framed that way. The fan bases have to be – so like the Houston Texans fan bases right now have to be pumped, right? I mean, mm-hmm. we saw it. You saw it. Yeah. We showed it right here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. D'Amico, D'Amico said in his this week in his media, he said, my goal when I came here was to restore pride in the organization and for people to be able to walk around Houston wearing Texas gear with pride. And I think that mission has absolutely been accomplished. I mean, I think that what he's done and what that team has done and to watch that city just be fully revitalized, be fully proud of their team, be able to, you know, Talk about the Texans, wear Texans, post on social media about the Texans with full pride. Uh, and that stadium was going absolutely bonkers on Saturday. It was it was really cool to see. And I know literally exactly what that feeling feels like. And I'm just so damn happy that this, this city is getting to experience it again. Hey, this city, are you there right now? Are you in Houston? No. It's just my city. Oh, okay, got it. Oh, yeah. I didn't know if it was this to be like, yeah, maybe second round. You know, oh, yeah. Yeah, I still feel good. I got three games maybe in me there. The Stroud house was loud. They, they're all set, man. They're all set. Somebody, somebody, uh, if somebody fell out and there was necessary, you know, but they're all set. Whoa, whoa, right. whoa, whoa. All eyes on the Houston Texans injury report. Whoa. Going forward for a potential J.J. Watt return, but the Stroud house was loud. It was back to being what I remembered as it was whenever you guys were doing your thing. There's a clip from back in the day where you dap up to Miko. I think we actually have it. Oh, how are you, hey. Congrats, baby. Oh, thank Congrats you, baby. on a great career, man. You, man. All right? Thank you're the best, baby. Oh, you're the best. Go make Houston great again. We'll do it. Go make Houston great again. Yeah, we'll do it. Go make great again. yeah we'll I love do you, brother. Yeah, yeah, I will. He said, yeah, I will. Did you call him Cap, by the way? That's how you talked to him initially there? You knew yeah, he's he was, my captain. You knew he's my he, captain. You knew he was going to be the guy, huh, whenever he was head coach of Houston, Texas? You knew it was going to work or what? <clears throat> I mean, I knew – I knew – what I wanted to happen, I know. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I it's just. Uh, let's say it's what? What is it? It's manifestation. Uh, you just put it out there in the don't world. Start it. Don't, don't start, start, Ben. Please, yeah. we'll start, Ben. We'll start, Ben. Oh, yeah. Don't. Oh no! Eat. Oh no! What happened? I am I going into an ayahuasca retreat? Die. Okay. Uh, you know, know, uh, uh, what happened? I don't know. Pablo Sanchez. On my <laughs> I, thought, I thought we were having a good week. I thought we were having a good week. I don't know. Well, I started out actually. Yeah, we've know. had a good day. We were, we were, good right, day. we're a day and a half in. Yep. Stacking them to no wars. That's right. Boom. Boom. Every Today day was a good day. Just like Jim Harbaugh said, Bingo. we're waking right. up every we're day. We're gonna update the uh, trying to dominate today. That's it. Right. And then we're going to bed and trying to do the same thing. We're one day down. Mm-hmm. We're going into. We're halfway through. Yeah. Boom. Let's go. Pretty good. Let's go, boys. Keep How are we doing? Good. Good day. Well, you just tried. You just wrote meditation. Uh, man- uh, meditation. I didn't think about meditation. I said manifestation. Just putting words oh, out. No, no, no. I'm not talking can't about smoking anything. I'm not talking about sleeping on the ground. What the hell? I don't know. What are you talking about? I don't know. What? We you, were, oh. you were saying words or spell. Yep. Yeah. Because they cast spells. So you gotta, that's where you were headed. And we heard it. <laughs> I want you know I heard it. <laughs> I heard it. There. Sleeping on the ground. Okay, right here. Oh. We all, AJ was, you heard, you saw AJ's face go, Whoa. Oh, what's oh, what side do you want? What side oh, do you want? AJ oh, did get excited. It, it was, it was, uh, it was a good reaction. That won't be on the meme for next time. With AJ <laughs> reacting to world of events. It'll be great. <laughs> good video. <laughs> Too much of us right now, JJ. Too much of us. And I feel like with the Premier League, I feel like with the Premier League comments, uh-huh. yep. now we're going international uh-huh. into who hates what. Yep. And everybody's going to hate oh, us. Yeah. Just want to let you know. Especially because that little American thing I said at the end. Mm-hmm. I just walked right down range again. Yeah. No. Well. Everybody hates VAR. That's the problem. Like, VAR has a chance to be successful, Very has a true. chance to be good, has a chance to be legitimate. But everybody hates it because it's so subjective at the moment. We refuse to use the technology that the World Cup uses, which is a very clear cut for offside. Like, there's so much stuff that could be good about VAR. But right now, it's trash. It's a problem. It's costing people points. It's costing people enjoyment. It's taking away from the game. VAR at the moment is terrible, and it needs to be fixed. That's just a fact. The Premier League needs to fix it. VAR is a problem. Get it Hell yeah. And that speech was wonderful. It was in 720p, too. Yep. Uh-huh. So when everybody watches it, like... Shit. 
for it. Dude. It was great words, though. We heard What's you the whole time. What's wrong with my internet? What's wrong with my internet? I don't know. You tell yeah, us. Okay, uh, AQ's been running around the, around the neighborhood yeah. a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. uh, on that note, about yeah. it being a sham and being subjective Blood. and everything like that, Tone Diggs has a question for you. Yeah, let's talk about that. And let's, you know, let's talk about technology and let's talk about the Houston fans, you know, playing with house money because according to PFS, CJ Stroud stinks. He might as well be the worst oh. quarterback in the NFL. Mm. You tweeted him. You know it. What's your thoughts, Jage? Oh, boy. Uh, I got a lot of thoughts on this. I got a lot of, lot of thoughts on this. Listen, it's a business. PFF is a business. They have created a business. They somehow uh, have gotten their way onto NBC and are putting their rankings on national television every single week. Um, but from a player's standpoint, from somebody who has been in meetings, has been on the field, who has been uh, with coaches, who has literally, who, has, who knows who's talked to people who know exactly how the algorithms work, who know how the grading system works. Um, I mean, I was, so like, I have to, I'll take a step back. I was PFF's highest graded player, one of their highest play, graded players. Way to go, JJ. Let's go, so JJ. Was, so I, Hang a banner. So, so, so this isn't biased. This is not like, oh, they don't like me. So I'm not like, I, I, I literally had a 106 grade one year, and they had to change the entire ranking system because of that. Damn. Uh, so, like, it's not because, like, they, they graded me poorly, so I'm speaking badly. on This is literally speaking to players, coaches, and people you. all around the league. Um, they do hate the you. system is terrible. Like, do they watch a lot of film? Sure. Great. Do they know everybody's assignments? Do they know exactly what's supposed to happen? Do they know how they're waiting and how they're doing different things? No. Uh, it's just a terrible system. And the fact that they have the ability to affect not only what the public thinks about players, but literally affecting voting for awards, uh, how players' contracts are being handled moving forward. Like, it's, it's, really, it's really pretty crazy and scary that they've somehow gotten – that level of power and i mean I, like i said the fact that their graphics and rankings are put on nbc on sunday nights for the nation to see and are it's that is just downright absolutely ridiculous okay so jj hates var premier league yep. Yep. and pff he does believe some positions i think they get it right for instance you were their highest graded guy uh dude, <laughs> i was their punter of the decade so mm -hmm. I, I think it's easy for pff folks who watch film to see <laughs> to see Those you know if there's a successful punt yep sure. you know there's a successful yeah. punt operation well, and the thing is like think about it from their perspective if they it's just okay, ranked man. everybody like the best players as the best Throw. Then JJ? no, but there's no reason. There, there's no what? Is my is my video? Yeah, off? we'll call you back. Yeah, we'll call you back. You look terrible, JJ. Yeah, right? yeah. You actually look like uh, you look like Pablo Sanchez in the game. Yeah, yeah. how that yep. entire thing yeah. looks. Even worse, if I had to guess. AJ, what were your thoughts on PFF? Was it towards? Obviously, it was a part of whenever you were playing. Did you even have any thoughts about? It wasn't what it. It, it was not like it is now. It, I don't know if it was nearly as prevalent. I have no clue what it was going on when I was playing. How about JJ saying they put that on TV? That is, uh -huh. it is true Mad, when they yeah. pop up the starters and you're like, oh, yeah. that guy stinks. I'm like, how do I know like you 40, mean? The 40th tackle? <laughs> so here, yeah, I didn't even know there was. Front like, office. Yeah. Guys, 88th yeah. rank something. It's like, yeah. how is there? How many you are but in the league? Front office is using that in. to do your negotiations and your front office sucks ball. Well, we agents, know, agents are using that oh, yeah. for sure because. Well, yeah, if it's, if it. If it helps their client, they will use it. If it doesn't, they will not. Yeah, if it behooves them, they will certainly utilize it as evidence as they're trying to make the case for nice. why somebody should be paid. Uh, that was pretty good. I felt <laughs> yeah. pretty good about that. Uh -huh. As much as they're paid. But it's like um, the narrative built about players, when you're talking about Pro Bowl, All Pro, Legacy, and everything like that, does come from those little numbers oh, yeah. on the introduction. It comes from the commentators, too. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And a lot of commentators are using PFF, PFF. Yeah. to get their yeah. grades. So, like, for instance, punting and kicking. Like kicking, I guess people know. Punting, though, people have no idea what's good or what's not good. If the commentator says, this guy's really good, okay, fans are going to be like, this guy's right, good. This guy's, guy's awesome. This guy's really good. If they don't say that, though, there's not even a thought. So for me, I would always like try to at least have a conversation with commentators beforehand, just be like, 
Hey, have you done any research at all about what I'm trying to do or what I'm not trying to do? Just because I had bonuses in my contract that were very dependent upon if I would get voted into the Pro Bowl, like a lot of money on the line for that. And all you need is one commentator to have no idea what they're talking about on a national game. Like Tariko would always, Tariko was very good. Al Michaels mm -hmm. was always very good. Like they're trying their best, but not everybody does that. So in replace of that though, these PFF grades going up there, there's a lot of people who will remember those players forever by what they they see from that because I didn't do all the research, but they, they did. They had to. They did, and then they get question. legitimized, and it's like safety position, mm -hmm. corner position. We watch everything DB, good D, good uh, bad D. It's like the people you think to, that are unblamed for some plays, not at all. Nope. Mm -hmm. It's somebody else completely. Yeah. Even if the person's upset on the field, they might be upset because they just gave up a touchdown and their team just gave up six points. Well, that means it's their fault. It's like. No, that does not and mean it, And even with that, you know, I played all across the, the secondary. AQ played across the O-line, played for different coaches. But, and I'm I'm going to give it my best uh, opinion on you what's going on. You say that when you do it. Yeah, I mean, hey, this is what I think based on what I've been taught, based on what I've seen on field. But I have no idea what they're going on the surface and say, hey, if we get this formation, we're going to do this, you're going to do that. So it's so much that goes into it. And I like PFF as a tool, right? You know, because I can only Certainly. watch so many plays. I can only watch so much film. So if I watch three games and I go to PFF and it kind of matches up with what I'm seeing, definitely use it as a tool. But if you just use that as one thing, it's definitely tough. And Chris Collinsworth, you know, he started, former player. He's got a lot of, you know, Good business, too. Good yeah. business. Yeah. Congrats yeah. to him for that. Joining us now again, hopefully with some better service, J.J. Watt. <laughs> J.J., yeah. Better? Yes. Oh, yeah. So much Chris. better. Holy hell. Wow. Look at those teeth. Wow. Shit. Jack. <laughs> Holy. Anyways, so let's say PFF rates the best players as the best players. Well, then why would anybody subscribe to that? They literally have to be different than other people for people to be like, oh, yeah, they do know something that we don't know. <laughs> like, you, you, it's it's bullshit, man. They bullshit. gave me the punter of the decade, so I hope they survive forever. Yep. And uh, I will. hope that is the case just for personal reasons. But I do understand where some people, like friends of mine maybe uh, that have shorter arms <laughs> and maybe, uh, you know, rounder gut yep. mm -hmm. who are playing guard, center, <laughs> fullback, mm -hmm. and return person with their grades, and then those are being used against people in negotiations and stuff. It's wild. It's a wild time. It's. I mean, your, 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 your little speech about it, was 100% true. Like, it truly is leaking into affecting players' contracts, affecting players' Pro Bowls, All Pros, things like that. Like, it is it is actually real in what it's doing, and it is extremely unfortunate. Didn't CJ and Jordan, they literally had the same game, right? Same yeah. exact game. Same exact game. But there was a couple throws yep. where... There's a lot of... Yeah, of there's a lot of... Uh, what ifs that happen with PFF? They're like it's all like projected and probabilities and pass rush win percentage ratios. Well, if you win a lot of pass rushes, you're probably going to get a lot of sacks. That's generally how it goes. If you're winning a lot of pass rushes and not getting sacks, something's probably wrong. Like I was like, there's this is just, just like if you're throwing a ball that's an interception worthy ball, but it wasn't intercepted. Well, how worthy was it? I don't know. Like. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> this, this shit is dumb, man. Like, it's a results-oriented league. Like, it is, like, you go out there, like, oh, wow, why don't we just give the Super Bowl to the team that projected to win the most games? Like, no, there's a reason you play the games. There's a reason you go on the field. There's a reason you do it all. Take your little, uh... Hey, but it can get better. We want yeah, that's yeah, all we yeah. want. Better from here. We just want it to get better. You trying to get into soccer? You trying to get into soccer over there? Yeah, pro soccer focus. PFS. Ooh. Uh, they actually, they actually do a lot of that type of stuff in in football. Um, soccer, soccer, right? Yeah, you're an American. Don't do this. <laughs> it's called soccer. The co-founder is from. Yeah, but I mean, the I Ireland. do enjoy our fan base. I do like our supporters supporting me, so I prefer to call it the thing they'd like me to call it. Yeah, but they're the ones that created soccer. Soccer was actually a term created in England. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Thank you. So I did they, my research. They still, call it, they still call it football, but yes. They draw a research. They, you are correct in your research. Thank you. Yeah, I was getting I was getting pretty attacked by a lot of people. I'm certainly better than them at soccer, saying a lot of things. First time? Huh? <laughs> First time? First time. <laughs> getting attacked? Yeah. It's normal. It was coming in waves, though, yeah. during the World Cup, whenever I was telling how good we were. We're the yeah. team. Those, well, we those, were, those were fun, to think you Starting to think you enjoy it. Too. I don't enjoy it, but when it has to be said, it's got to be said. Sorry. Like, mm -hmm. for instance, soccer's our game now. Yeah. Bingo. Who won the balloon dort? Who's that? <laughs> Methy. That's right. In the MLF. Hmm. So allow us 
to potentially fit your sport. <laughs> So terrible. Absolutely so terrible. I apologize for that. Uh, you talk about being played and results-oriented business. There is certainly a factor in that whole thing. AQ has a question for you, JJ. JJ, I'm assuming you've played in all 32 stadiums. Um, not everybody has, which I guess is kind of crazy because the way the schedule works. But of the eight remaining teams. Well, not everybody played 15 years. How many yeah. years did you play in the NFL, JJ? Uh, 12. But there's guys that have played 18 that haven't played in every stadium. Because of the way it flips. I'm going to check PFF if that's true. Yeah, yeah. But doubt it. eight remaining teams. Who do you think has the best home field advantage uh, for Ooh. the remainder of the playoffs? Pull up the pull up the schedule. Yeah, can I see it? I we're in Santa Clara. We're in Detroit. We're in Baltimore. And we're in Buffalo. And it's hey, another storm came through Buffalo. Mm -hmm. Yep. Buffalo Ooh, Sabres right. game tonight actually postponed, I believe, mm -hmm. because of the storm. Okay. Um so home home games right now are Baltimore, San Fran, Buffalo, and the Lions. I mean, I just think that whatever is going to happen in Detroit this weekend is going to be pretty awesome because last weekend, obviously, something special. Uh, getting another home game is that place. They have to just blow the roof off the entire place. The what what's happening there? Dan Campbell, everything. I mean, I, they just give Eminem a microphone and put him at the fifty yard line and have him sing "Lose yeah. Yourself." Like just get everyone in the entire world on your side with that like who's not watching that video and getting amped up to play for that game uh i like baltimore i think baltimore is a great stadium a great fan base i enjoy playing there uh buffalo obviously is buffalo i mean the bills mafia is incredible caught a little bit of wrath from them this past weekend uh well, I mean, not. I don't think it was rightfully yeah. so. I I corrected myself immediately. Doesn't so, matter. oh no, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I knew. I actually retweeted it, and as I was reposting it, I knew you're getting into the blender. Mm -hmm. Like as soon as I saw the first response to both you and I, and I put my phone yep. down because I was in three other wars, yep. and I came back yep. and you had did your. I was asking a legit question. <laughs> Sorry, what are yeah. we even doing? No. I was just trying to learn. I'm trying to be a smarter person, but they don't care about that. They don't, they, they, I, I'm a big fan of Bills Mafia. I really am. Uh, but even back in my own free agency and long before that, even I've been a Bills Mafia is an unbelievable fan base. They're literally one of the best fan bases in the country. Uh, when they pounce, they pounce rapidly and in ferociously. Bunches. In yeah. bunch. Yes, and uh, I caught that. Uh, I tried to correct it. I tried to tell them that I, I was mm -mm. wrong, and I saw that, mm -mm. and they did not care. Yeah. Uh, so, But I think that place is going to be a phenomenal atmosphere again. Uh, obviously, Kansas City-Buffalo seems like one of those matchups that we see almost every single year in the playoffs. In San Fran, I actually like that stadium in San Fran. I think it's a cool stadium. I think it's a great place. Um, as far as like a true home field advantage, I don't think it's one of those places that you necessarily toss up there as like – the scariest place to play, but I really enjoy playing there. So if I was picking one right now, I would say with everything culminating into one Detroit right now. Okay. Hell yeah, JJ. Wow. Let's go. Yeah, because Baltimore with the weather and their fans and them knowing that this is an actual potential Super Bowl team, I think that place is going to be electrifying. I, I am yeah. very excited to see Baltimore show up in mm -hmm. a big way. The Buffalo Bills, like their fans are awesome. The amount of snowballs that were thrown on last week. I don't know if that's going to continue into this week with how many snowstorms are coming. Great. Santa Clara, I think everybody just views it as a nice stadium. Yeah, yeah. yeah. beautiful. <laughs> it's yeah. a nice Gorgeous. stadium. Gorgeous. But Detroit was a college atmosphere this past weekend. They were there an hour and a half before the game chanting. Saying, like, it is. And yeah. one person we missed whenever we were going through all the Detroit legends, you know, Jack White. Oh, yeah? Mm. Oh, yes. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. I mean, that's you. If he was to. Yeah, oh. let's do that on Sunday. And then that's that's obviously at the beginning. And then mm -hmm. halftime, you only get one shot. But do not miss your chance to blow. blow. I don't know how easy it is to get Eminem back on a microphone. Dude, though. just turn all the lights in the whole stadium off. Spotlight. One spotlight on the tunnel. Eminem just comes walking out with a microphone. Dun, 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 oh. dun. Like, yeah. losers. Like, gotta do it. I mean, flips the hoodie and down then and just parleasy. 
Ooh. I'm Tony. Yeah, Tony. Poppin' comes on. Oh, yeah. oh, man. He said, Jack Harlow, yeah, the Thanksgiving callback. <laughs> the fact you guys have been able to do this with how you guys set Jack Harlow up to fail at halftime of Thanksgiving is certainly <laughs> something that football gods are not going to forget. I'm no. starting to think it was Jack's fault. Oh, yeah. no. That's what I'm starting oh, to think. Don't, don't yeah. say. No way. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, the uh, igloo? Yeah. yeah. Well, if that's what you call that, I mean, that was uh, Jack Harlow had no shot, dude. Uh, no, he didn't. See what Dolly Parton had? She had a 400-yard star. Oh, yeah. yeah. 600 dancers. What? A light show, fireworks. I think there was a drone show happening above her head. Jack Harlow had what? Plastic on the field. What do, you, what do you want this guy to do? I was told that was his vision from an inside yep. source. That's Boom. what I was that's told. That's his generation. Boom. Dolly Parton is part of the greatest generation ever lived. So. All right. Well, Easy. maybe that's the case. I didn't know that we had the matter of fact on that. He had a boutique vision. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bingo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's halftime of Thanksgiving. A lot of people. Jack, next time you get that opportunity, which we hope is next Thanksgiving. That ain't happening ever again. What? <laughs> he had his his chance. He had his one shot. And he blew it. He missed his chance. Yeah, exactly. So see you, Jack. And that's why we lost on Thanksgiving. Uh, baby. But yeah, also, yeah. Packers are a damn good football yeah, team. Yeah, they are. Damn good football team. Connor has a question for you, JJ. Yeah, JJ, great job on CBS this weekend. It was much easier to watch with only one game. So just absolutely fantastic. Uh, you also said earlier here. Hey, way to go, JJ. Way to go, way to go, JJ. JJ. Good suit. Thanks, guys. Great, yeah, great suit. I was suit. on my couch here in, in Arizona, but yep. Ah, oh, man. wasn't on. I, I, uh, I could have sworn he was on there. missed it. Really? <laughs> Shit. Thanks okay. for leaving me Saturday, in Saturday, Saturday, oh. Saturday, you weren't on great, there? Great nice suit. suit. <laughs> guys, <that> great <laughs> suit. Oh, man. Swing a miss. That's on me, Good brother. stuff, guys. Good stuff. <laughs> Sorry Good stuff. about that, Justin. Was, was that I serious? really thought Good we saw uh, That was a great me. suit, though. That last time. I could have sworn I watched you this weekend. The CBS. CBS game was on Monday, wasn't it? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. No, they lit Matt Matt Ryan was in my seat, so I don't know if you think we look alike or if well, uh, all whites look the same. Huh? Bit. That's the one yeah. today. Pretty, well, messed up. They, Pretty messed up. Same teeth. That's on me. <laughs> all these people with these great teeth, I just think JJ Watt right away. That's yeah, I don't think anybody's got the teeth that JJ's got. No. no. We actually talked about your teeth earlier today. Great. Oh, again? It's just a, yep. a running Off topic air. here? Off air. It might be the, be might be the best ones. Yeah. Great set of For teeth. For sure. That might be the best kit we've ever seen. Yeah. Standard. Great chick. It the, is the standard. The Oregon Ducks of it. Oh, boy. Well, with that being said, uh, you also earlier said that Bill Belichick was escorted out of New England. It was an amicable split. Okay? <laughs> you sure. asshole. You don't have to say he was escorted out. It was amicable. Um, but with that being Pete said. Pete Carroll. Pete Carroll was kicked out. Okay, that is who you should point your gun at when you're using terms like. Well, I mean, same like yeah. I'm talking all these great coaches. That's that was the discussion. Uh, carry on, carry on. Amicable, make split. your point. Um, with that being <laughs> said, how do you feel about just an immediate succession plan in New England? Belichick obviously signed off on it. It was moved up a year because of a four and thirteen season. But what do you think about that? Hiring someone in house who has been there through the good years and also saw you know 2019 to the most recent year, the fall of the whole entire thing. Do you think that is the right move? And then also, do you see the no GM, just Mayo kind of being the guy? Is your vision kind of seeing Gerard just splooge just Mayo all over the building? For so the there's the end, JJ. He Excuse was trying me. to force. I was so, I was so close. I was so close. I was trying to get there. <laughs> I was trying. He, he had the destination. I mean, what, what? He just what? didn't have the road. I didn't. I didn't. He forged the path. That was like the most Steve Perel, like in the office thing I've ever seen. Yeah. Michael Scott, what a terrible. Hey, he had a good ending though. Yeah, I had <laughs> it right there. I just, I stopped. There's a couple speed bumps along the way. That's on me. Uh, there's yeah. no road, bud. You got lost. But anyways, what are your thoughts on the, yeah, on the succession? So, so, so what do you yeah. want to talk about here? I mean, geez. mayo, mayo, it is mayo. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm excited for him. I mean, if you listen to all of his former teammates, you listen to all the players that have played under him as a coach, if you listen to everybody in that organization, the way they speak <laughs> about him uh, as a man, as a coach, as a person, I mean, it sounds like a phenomenal hire. And obviously somebody that's been there through all the years and knows what it took to be successful and how to be successful at the highest level, I mean, it certainly appears like they've got somebody great there. I don't know personally. I mean, I I can't tell if it was part of the joke or not part of the joke, the GM thing. But a, uh, I'm, I'm I'm not I'm very very much not a fan of the GM and the head coach being the same person. Whoa 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 whoa! How about the lead counsel? Um, Contract? No, con well, that's lead counsel. Oh, okay. uh, GM, mm -hmm. head coach, head athletic trainer. I think. Yep. 
That was Bill O'Brien. Chapel. Right? When he was down Chapel, the FCA right? guy. Yep. Uh, the priest. Yeah, right. Scout. Yep. Yep. Lead scout. scout. Uh, and then you're, you're mixing. You're mixing Nutrition. a couple different humans there now, but uh, you're. But oh, he's not that far off. One of them. Yeah. Well, that was the thing, right? Because the more the situation seemed to get uglier in Houston the more jobs Bill O'Brien took on. Correct. It felt like from the outside looking in. I don't even know if he were there towards the end of it, but like it hasn't worked for a lot of people that have tried this particular thing. Bill Belichick's seemingly the only guy that this has ever really worked for. So I think the expectation that Gerard Mayo will be able to do it, I think is one that is very lofty and not necessarily one I think Gerard Mayo certainly, uh, maybe he does, I have no idea. And maybe he's able to do it when nobody else has been able to have the success doing it as such. And they're still considering hiring a GM post-draft. They're just saying that right now, because they've already done all their you know scouting and prep work, they're just going macro and Elliott Wolf for now. He did say he will have an OC and a DC as well. And they're looking out, out of house. That's huge. And Belichick kids. Yeah, Steve and Brian Who both been Brian? offered jobs. He is the uh, safeties coach. Okay. Yeah, they've been offered jobs by Mayo, but their dad allegedly on a boat with the Atlanta Falcons. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but Bill said, boys, you got to become your own men, okay? You can't follow me to this next gig. You got to go out and find your own way. Maybe that's what he told him in that apartment that he walked out of on that ring. Bingo. Camp. Yeah, this that's why it. they were there. Th that was the celebration. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Last this year. It's probably the last I don't year. Think, All right, boys, tarts yeah. off. Let's I don't go. think that people understand how difficult some of these jobs are, how time consuming, how energy consuming, and how truly hard that they are. So, whether it's oh boy we're leaving we got music PFF. playing in the background let's send you let's send you out on the right note uh pff sucks have a great day everybody. <laughs> wow Why? That's... okay <laughs> nailed it right on the, right on the screen, on the screen. I, like nailed it. I, did, I do feel like you nailed it that, gonna be that, was, that was a pablo sanchez nuke to right field <laughs> boy good that's shit. jj's war good shit, JJ. yeah that's jj watt we did not script that okay before this even gets into this. Son of a bitch. Jeez Louise. Chris Collinsworth is going to invite you out to Cincinnati. Yep. <laughs> Kick your mm -hmm. fucking ass. That's fine. That's fine. I shoot it like, I shoot it straight, man. I'm shooting it like it is. Like if they want to act like they got some like, like they, they come from a very high and mighty place. Like they come oh, yeah. and they speak like they know everything that there is to know about football. And they tell all these players and these coaches yeah. that they're so much smarter and that they're so much better and that they have these ways of figuring things out that are so much superior um it's just as somebody who's done it and who's been in those trenches and who knows what it's like and who knows what it's like to have somebody telling you how good you're doing i mean i've literally sat in a meeting room with coaches and put the grades side by side from a coach's grade and from the pff grade i've done it <laughs> and it's not even remotely close so like don't sit here and tell me like you don't know what you're talking about you don't know uh how all this works like yeah I do. I've literally done it. I've sat in that room and done it with coaches in the National Football League. So take your shit and shovel it somewhere else because I'm not dealing with it. Yes! Hell yeah. Dude. Hell yeah. Jack and Chris are just... That was good passion right there. They, they can't wait to see Jay. I do hope you guys get a chance to shake some Hans. You know what I mean? I hope you get a chance to shake some Hans and hear what Chris has to say about how they're entire... Because I assume they've heard what you've said numerous times now i will say there was a couple times a few years back where they would put a quote about somebody who stinks or somebody should have a new job and then they would put pff sam underneath yep. it uh -huh. and this is before we obviously learned a pff sam oh mm -hmm. and yep. his, sam, yeah. his smartness and we actually said well if pff sam says it you know it, it's got it's kind of been that way though since the beginning like we are the ones who have the answers we are the ones who know everything about every player because we watch the film and we've all, I think, as a football society, just been like, yep, they do. Okay. It's, it's kind of just become a common part of the process now. So I think a lot of players are going to be very thankful for what you just said, especially the guys who are maybe low rated in the PFF system. Uh, this is like what happened with Madden. You know, Madden, yeah. Yeah. Madden was the first one that was putting numbers on people, you know, like, hey, here's how good this player is. Here's how good this player is. So outside of the contracts, which is, putting a number on somebody and how much you're worth versus other people. Madden, this outside company now becomes the company that is telling you that, oh, you're the 10th ranked whatever you are. And it's like, how the fuck do you know? What, what is that even? That That's a whole thing. So now PFF yeah. is another one. It's interesting whenever you start putting numbers. And I people. would like to say this, like it is nothing against any players. Like I want every player to be rated as highly as you can. I don't care. It is nothing against any players, against any of that. It is literally with the system and the way that they do things. So it's it's zero to do with players or how players are great. I don't care. I want everybody to be graded as fairly and properly as I just I just don't think that's 
the way it is right now. And uh, like at least Madden adjusted. Like now they send people to every single training. Yeah, and camp Ocho's to, a part of it. Act, yeah, next Ocho, players are a part of they it. They get they make guys better as they play better throughout the season. They should like, just they use try. PFF. Why doesn't Madden just use PFF's grades? Okay. Why yeah. are we all hey, wild glass, right? you don't have to wild glass payroll? The biggest problem is the decision makers that are using it. And it's legit, like it's a and you kinda heard Pete Carroll kind of allude to it a little bit, but a lot of people past, you know, the coaching and the scouting department that have a voice in the decision that have been made as far as the rosters, who's getting paid what, who's getting this and that, they don't know football. Like legit don't know football. Like I've had conversations with him like, hey, if I learn football, like that'll actually be like kind of a bonus for me. You know, you have the Ozzy Newsoms of the world. You have obviously John Lynch and either guys who didn't play DaCosta who was under, uh, you know, you got guys who didn't, Nick Casario who didn't play on a pro level who can do it. But I think it's a weapon when you have people that actually know the game and can watch football from that standpoint. And you're saying those people that don't know football admittedly don't know football. Mm -hmm. So they potentially rely upon PFF, and then other people's opinions, too, outside the building. You hear Michael Lombardi say it all the time. He's like, David Tepper's going to stop calling people. Yeah, That's what sure. Lombardi said. Tepper's calling too many people. I assume PFF is one of the things mm -hmm. oh, yeah. that Tepper Literally. is certainly looking at whenever he's breaking it all down. It's like, PFF, I think, has been accurate about stuff, obviously. Yes. Mm -hmm. Especially in the punting department. Always. <laughs> and in the kicking department <laughs> mm -hmm. and everything else. But I, I think what JJ's saying, to kind of put a, a wrap on this entire thing, is we can't just be blindly expecting them to be 100% right. Nope. Just, hey, these people are right. And the C.J. Stroud, Jordan Love is the most recent one. There's been a lot of others in the past on a very regular basis. And, uh, yeah, thank you. Hey, JJ, if not you, then who? Mm -hmm. You know? Bingo. Yeah. I guess. I mean, it's the nice part about being retired is you can say stuff and it doesn't matter. I mean, well, but it's uh, just the truth. Like, I, I can say stuff a lot of guys in the locker room are thinking. I mean, we've all had uh -huh. these conversations. Of, I mean, literally in the last 24 hours, a lot of players have reached out to me and been like, finally, somebody said something. Like, oh, so and it's, you felt again, empowered like, coming in today. Okay. So you got like, love that. you got the green light from a lot of people like, fucking tell them, Jake. Because I'll tell you, I've been a part of a couple situations in the past where I've yeah. said something and I got a lot of messages like, yup. Mm -hmm. Hey, Yup. And then it's like, all right, so you get a microphone. Here we go. That's how you came yeah. in today, it feels like, a little bit. Yeah, I mean, because obviously players aren't going to want to speak out of it because they don't want their grades to be different than they already are. Like, it's I, – I just – I the part that I do not like about it is that it is – we are putting literal rankings on people and then putting it on national television or putting it out on social media and that people are looking at that. And like, like you said, people that don't know football are like, oh, wow. So that guy's the number 74 out of 100 offensive linemen in the league. He sucks. You're like, well, that's because some guy in a room that didn't play in the NFL was judging the tape, said it was that, so then they plugged it into the algorithm, and then their algorithm said because that guy, way that guy thought he played on that play, now he's ranked number 75, and you sitting on your couch at home watching just – just hanging out watching Sunday Night Football, now think that guy's the 75th out of 100 player in the NFL, and that's your 100% decision of that man. Or we got voters for awards and we got people for all pro, which ultimately decides contracts, looking at PFF like, hey, I didn't watch every game of this year. Let me go and see who the best players in the league are. Oh, okay, these are the top three guys rated by these guys who Hall of Fame, the film Hall of Fame shit is real. Hall of Fame stuff, because obviously contracts uh, is a part of it, and mm -hmm. we know that has been a part of it. But like whenever they look back on Hall of Fame, if a guy misses, uh, let's say, two, three Pro Bowls, okay, ah, I only missed it two, three times, and you go from a two-time Pro Bowler to a five-time Pro Bowler or a three-time Pro Bowler to a seven-time Pro Bowler, like that is a vastly, yeah. that is a vastly, different, vastly. vastly different conversation all of a sudden whenever it's how was your career remembered. AJ, I don't think I even ever made a Pro Bowl. None. No. All-time leading tackler for the Green Bay. No Bay. way. Technically, technically one as an alternate when we went to the Super Bowl. I got paid for it, so yeah. There you go. I'm collecting the check. No, big no way, man. Got a jersey. Think about that, JJ. That is crazy. I mean, the Pro Bowl has its own, and we all know, I mean, as players and everything with the voting process and with the fan process, like, that's, that's certainly flawed. Um, what? And it hurts players, man. Like, that one really hurts players, too. Like, that, that process could be better. Winfield. He's going now, though. As yeah, I mean, you guys know, like, filling out that paperwork, like, where they hand out the papers in your meeting room and they're like, <laughs> all right, guys, vote for the Pro Bowl. Left. And literally, I mean, that, I like that is you. as big of a joke process as you've ever been a part of. I'm not going to say we did this because we would never do this to a group of men that we had in a room that we sure. had. Mm -hmm. 
But boy, if somebody could potentially get a spot over your guy too, it's like, well, yep. definitely. I yep. voted for third stringers. I voted for third string receivers and stuff because I wanted our receivers to go. Bing, bingo. Yep. And we're part of the problem. We know. Yeah, we, we like, are. We like, yeah, man. We are all. That's why, like, like, they came out with that, like, uh, players voted all pro list. And I was like, man, if you guys knew how that was voted on in meeting rooms, you would not take this worth a grain of salt, man. Like, it's, it's. And I wish it was different. Like, I wish the players. That's all we're stuff looking. You that's all do. we're trying to do yeah, here. Isn't sure. it? We're just trying to make it better. Hey, mm-hmm. man. We play a pretty. Like you said, AJ, there are legitimately people that vote for third stringers just because they don't want their guy to lose or because you're not allowed to vote for people from your team. That's how it works. Just trying to make sport better. We're just trying to make sport better. JJ, you're doing a little bit too much up, I think. Yeah, close your fist, AQ. Especially the week that we've had here. Oh, AQ. <laughs> Jesus, AQ. All right, just, you know. I can't Jesus. find the camera. I can't. There it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. Look at that Look fist. Hey, we're all just trying to make sport better that we love. We're all trying to make the league that is the greatest in the world By far. a little bit better. Going. We're trying to make fans a little bit more educated because once you fall in love with the sport and once you learn about the sport, you're going to be infatuated with it forever. Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. Football on three, one, two, three. Football. 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 Let's get back to talking right. football. Ty has a question for you, JJ. Yeah, yeah, JJ, seeing how you are an owner of a professional sure. sports team, uh, if you were Jerry Jones, what would you do with the Cowboys? Mike McCarthy's won 12 games three years in a row, and everyone was kind of praising Dan Quinn throughout the last two years until like the last couple weeks now, and then the playoffs happen, and all of a sudden it's this guy fucking sucks at his job. They need to clean house. Obviously, Belichick and Vrabel – and all these guys are out there. If you were Jerry, though, what what are you doing with the Cowboys this offseason? It's a great question. It's a great question. I truly don't know the answer. I mean, honestly, like you got a guy that wins 12 games three years in a row in the National Football League. That's extremely At least PFF hard to do. gives us answers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? They would tell you. Oh, yeah. I forgot. Do. You're supposed to just be definitive, even if you're wrong. Uh, just go with there something. Be it. all in on it. Boom, on camera. Um, now you're, sports. Yeah, now yeah you're welcome work. to sports entertainment. Go work on CBS this weekend. <laughs> you know? But I mean, like, I, like, it's so hard because you look at that team and there's weeks throughout the year where you're like, wow, that this team absolutely could win the Super Bowl. And then they go out in the first round of the playoffs and they do what they did. And Dallas fans are notoriously some of the toughest fans on their team in the entire world uh they have such high expectations rightfully so they've been great for so long oh, and you looked at it you're like okay so why why can they do this in the national fo- in the regular season and then they do this in the playoffs is the change of coach going to do that like is it is a new coach going to win 12 games next year with that team is he going to win 15 like i don't know man it's a risk it's a definite risk i think if i'm jerry jones and I know how Jerry Jones, we all, we've all seen, obviously, how he thinks and how he acts. I think he's moving on. He's trying to find somebody. And he's saying to himself, this is a 15-win team, not a 12-win team. We shouldn't be winning only 12 games. We should be winning more. And if you look at that roster and some of the guys they have, I can't say I fully disagree with that. Um, but, man, to lose in the way that they did in the first round to a seven seed, that never, ever in life is going to sit well with a guy like Jerry Jones. Yeah. What's going on over there, Jerry? He's huh? thinking to himself yeah. as he's been thinking his entire life. Mm-hmm. He's 82 years old. Damn. He's an old. He's old. Yeah. yeah. Looks good. Spry, obviously. Great. I assume he still has a competitive edge and competitive juices. I assume his suit collection at this standpoint is so cool. flawless. Mm-hmm. His boots. Whoa. That boat. Unbelievable. We know his boat is. His yacht is fantastic. Ooh. He's made a couple draft picks from there. He's got a whiskey that's 103 proof. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. So he's trying to get fucked up. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, he has to. He's Doesn't trying his game. best with his whiskey. We were in his stadium and they said, You want to try Jerry's whiskey? Sure. And I drink it. They're like, you know, Bacardi 151? I'm like, God damn, what are we doing here, Jerry? <laughs> trying to get people trying to get people ready to go, you know? But does he, and I guess this is a good question that we were posed earlier, does he want to rebuild an entire at 82? You know? And I know he's got a lot of juice and energy. Do you want to rebuild an entire everything? Everything daily schedule, a new logistics, who's answering to who? Like, whenever you do a full turnover... There's a lot of bullshit that'll come alongside of that about how, especially if it was a Bill Belichick was coming in there. Okay, so now Stephen Jones, him, me, players, 
who do we got to get, how do we got to get, what's the building look like, what's the daily schedule look like. Like, there's a lot of change that goes into that. And I don't want to say, like, he's man, a, he's Bill a, check and Jerry Jones would be a wild matchup. That's man. a brand like, new relationship every day. That's a huge thing at 82 to sign up for. You know, that's a whole, that's an added <laughs> dilemma that I've kind of started, really started pondering here as you question about full change. It's like, He's 80. He wants to win. I get it before he passes, but how much bullshit does he want to deal with, too, as an 82 year old? Would it also have you been stuff? to that practice facility, the star down there in Dallas? You only, been down there? only seen pictures. Only seen pictures. I mean, it is an unbelievable setup. I mean, it truly is incredible, but there's also like a. I mean, they have like a hotel and offices attached on one side. Like, there's massive. I mean, there is. Mm -hmm. It is a full blown compound. Just me picturing. Bill Belichick driving into that facility and then like going out into those practice fields. I, I literally Who's cannot that? picture him like on those practice fields in that like state of the art. Every, like it's like with just people overlooking the whole practice field. Like it, uh, it's, it's a fascinating place. Okay. Incredible place. Okay. So you've been there. You've seen it. We've only seen photos. This was actually a massive piece of the conversation about a year and a half or two years ago. They're like, why can't the Cowboys win? Well, I don't know. Maybe there's a fucking Eagles scout that paid for the VIP tickets that's able to sit on the perch that overlooks the practice field. You know, like, isn't th isn't that really how it goes? Down? That was the pictures that we were shown. I mean, obviously, I would assume and hope that there's something preventing something like that from happening. But yes, there is a huge glass building that literally overlooks a practice field. Yeah, we I don't know what happens. Someone. Like, it, it certainly. I would think there has to be somebody thought about the privacy and security of that. I don't think so. And if you did, there's Connor Stallion just yeah, exactly. of the world out there. They're, there. they're not afraid to put on sunglasses and a hat, you know, and just mm -hmm. being like, mm -hmm. let's go Cowboys. And then got the little POV yeah. cam. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Zoom. Uh, uh, we practiced there for a week during Hurricane Harvey. Uh, we That's where we got redirected. We were, we were there for a week. I mean, everything about that facility is – there's sometimes that we talk about things where it's uh, – I talk about this with Brian Cushing a lot with USC because he talks about Heritage Hall. He talks about, um, you know, that place being kind of a dungeon. They had the weight room down on the bottom of it, and he was like, that was like nitty-gritty, hardcore, like really. And then when they switched to a brand-new, incredible, beautiful facility, um, how that can just change the mentality a little bit. That's – I think there's something to be said for facilities being almost – too nice and too incredible and too beautiful. Like that place is truly stunning and it's a special place. And if you got the right players and you got the right staff and everybody, like you don't have to worry about those types of things, but there are things about having a super nice place where everything feels cushy. Uh, that, that is, that is an actual thing. Bill Belichick coming in here. Uh, we need a much worse cold tub. Mm -hmm. it's too nice. This this breakfast buffet is too, too nice. Good. These guys deserve. Is this is this what we're eating every day? This is a this is a fucking seven star. <laughs> we don't need. We need a couple protein shakes over here. Mm -hmm. Can we get some? I don't know, pancakes or whatever, and then eggs. What are we? That's it. What are we even doing? Do we get. To, they're going to be out here the whole time. This is what guys are going to want to hang out here. Look how nice these chairs. These chairs need to be. Much less comfortable. Much less comfortable. They're just going to be sitting out here the whole time. There's like a there's levels to this whole thing. And you talk about Cushing, he was the he was the he was the juice of the team this week. Gave a speech, I think. They had a video of him. He pulled the. I think there's a little tiny cannon you guys are shooting off now. Yeah, yeah. A little tiny one. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh, tiny. It does. tiny. It's cute. This, 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 just little. This was the size of it. It is. And it packs a punch, though. It packs a punch. It's like the yeah. cricket. I get it. Yeah. But Cushing went through. He pulled the plug on the cannon. It was like this little <laughs> baby. It was. Yeah, sure. It was. Uh, it was wild. He was the guy. That's a. That's funny. I'll give you that. That was funny. Well, thanks. I, I was it actually is a, the first. It is a small oh, cannon. Hey, you it did it. Small yeah, thank you. That's the first time. You uh, did it. Good the, job. The first time I swung and hit the anvil at the Lucas Oil Stadium, the hammer was uh, the size of this pen, and the anvil was the size of this football, let's say. And they're like, all right, everybody, to the Jumbotron. And I'm standing there next to this thing. He's going to hit the anvil, oh, boom, boom, or whatever. And he's like, ting, ting. And then my first, as soon as I'm walking out of there, it's like, you guys maybe look like a little bigger. Yeah, what are we doing? <laughs> we, need, we need a bigger hammer. Yeah. We need a bigger anvil. What? This thing needs to be a lot. Lo and then Vinatieri. to the Colts point. Should have done it shirtless, Kirk Cousins style. Dude, how about how? Yeah, and dude, when they blow into that thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The. Mm -hmm. What are they doing there? That's a gut. Blow. I have the same question. 
I have the same question. Is that computer generated? Are they actually thing? doing they anything, or is it purely just like somebody pushing a button? Yeah, I don't know. It's a button. Definitely someone pushing. I want it. to know so badly because it would be it would be pretty badass if they were actually doing. It. Well, just something like if their their breath turned something on in yes. there to make the sound. That would be cool. Because if not, they're all thespians up there. Yeah, they're yeah. all just acting. Yep. And do they know going in like, hey, Kirk, you're gonna be shirtless. You're gonna do a skull thing. You're gonna do a drum thing, mm. and you're gonna blow in this thing. It's not gonna. Literally does not matter. Don't, Don't, worry. Don't feel obligated to blow anything. Just put your lips on the side of this thing. Mm -hmm. Like, does Kirk know no, that? I would assume so. That stadium actually had one of the coolest things I've seen in a football stadium in a long time last year when I played there. When Jared Allen got inducted into the Hall of Fame and he came riding out on a horse, he, they should have Jared Allen ride out on yep. a horse every week because that shit was awesome. Those horses aren't going to survive, Miss. No, no, they aren't. No, no, no. Way too cold. Going to have to give them a jacket, a mm -hmm. couple jackets. For you know, fire. As we're rolling through. All right, JJ. Great well, week. Start a indoor work. stadium. I don't know. If, I don't know if you're aware. It's like the. Uh, Buccaneers reporter. Oh, they're gonna, stadium, they're gonna so. make a stable, okay? He, yeah, heated stable inside yeah. the stadium. Don't be an asshole. It, it, the horse oh. is gonna live yeah. in the fucking I, stadium, JJ. Is that what's gonna happen? Why not? I mean, I guess you're right. It's a big stadium. <laughs> it's not yeah. very good I actually just this is this is a wild turn of events, and this is a perfect conversation for this show because mm. this show is the best show on the damn planet. That is. I was driving by. Show. I drove by Medieval Times the mm. other day. Yes. And I was I was literally looking at medieval times and I saw like a stable out back and I have never thought about the fact that they got a they're literally a live working horse stable ranch and a restaurant. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, and a show. Oh yeah. yeah. Whenever they put the little whenever you're in like I was in a yellow one time. Mm-hmm. And this fucking guy, I don't know how many times he's been on a horse, but it was evident he was on a horse much like Getting onto the thing, he was uncomfortable. Oh, I'm like, no. we're fucked for the whole time. They're going to have us dark. All everybody else is going to have yep. the greatest night. And lo and behold, first fucking little challenge, put the stick in the ring thing. Guy missed four straight. Yeah. We're out. We're in the dark. Got nobody to cheer for. I'm high as shit. I came to cheer for a fucking night. Yep. My guy can't ride a goddamn horse. What a brilliant concept. Yeah, wait, oh, what is so this? Good. Oh, oh dude, you need to go. Yeah, I've, you, you, I've never come heard on, of this. Just go on vacation somewhere. I've never heard of this once. You need to go. I've seen Cable Guy, but I've never been to the. Have never you ever been? been? No. Oh, 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 dude, it's what fucking it? epic. It's a restaurant, but it also has like a medieval show that's going yeah. on. They put you in sections, and there's like the white knight, the blue knight, mm -hmm. the yellow, yellow knight. And Have you ever seen A Knight's Tale with Heath Ledger? Yeah, of course. It's just take take that. And put it inside of a restaurant, what? and that's what it is. And they feed you cable just guy. like meat. Yeah. You guys seen Cable yeah. Guy? Beef. Yes, obviously. I've yeah, big part of Cable Guy. Big scene in Cable Guy. Okay. It's re it's it's. Do they have one in Indiana? I don't think so. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I feel like they have a few. I've only seen it when I go on vacation. <laughs> I forget where I, I feel was. like it's a big date night like spot. Like Myrtle Beach. Indiana. So it would be if we had it here. I, I would I would go. Sam and I would be at that right. place. A turkey leg called? and a proper joust. Uh, yeah, that's Medieval a good date. Time. Yeah, for anybody. <laughs> um, I think I was at a place, plane delayed overnight because uh, of storm, I think, back in Indiana. So, like, had a night in a place. Sure. No real hotel room, so I'm staying in a hotel room. This place was right next to my hotel. And I just, like, looked over, and I saw how absurd it looked. It was a castle. And I, I asked, Damn. I actually asked them what they do, and they say we, are you guys a bar? What are you? And they said uh, we're a show and a dinner. And I'm like, deal. I, am, <laughs> yeah. I am. I went in there alone. I went in there alone, probably on like 70 milligrams, just living, ready for yellow to fucking show up. Five minutes in, the guy's out of the race. Yeah, <laughs> it was unbelievable. So you pick your night, or based no, on where you're sitting? Where he's, I, I got like one of the last seats. I think it's like uh, it fills up. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's like a pretty quick. Oh yeah. Like, Damn. It's a yeah. stadium. Yeah, it's cool. Cl Medieval closest time. one is in Schaumburg, Illinois. Just a quick three-hour, forty-five-minute yeah, jump. It's it's It'll be worth it. Get a horse. Actually, okay. make that thing fit. I have days. son. There is not one in Indiana. They're but, missing out. Yeah. To be honest, this might be uh this might be a business idea. <laughs> they might have to open one. Now that we just kinda let's dump all that so nobody else in Indiana does that. Yeah. Dump it. You could just name it something else. No, we ha has they, to, they has gotta to, figure it yeah, out. Yeah, it has to be medieval times. Yeah. Bro, it's it they're, they're fucking really out there. Oh, yeah. Jousten. I legitimately have never heard of this until right now. They're wearing a the full costume, the full kit. Do people die? You literally look like you could be a character in medieval times. I could and work. you've never heard of this? Never. No. Was that a shot? No, oh, it's, a, no. it's a compliment. <laughs> Have you ever seen A Knight's Tale? A Knight's Tale is one of the most underrated movies of 
all time. Yeah, I like A Night's Tale, by the way. So many times. It's a beautiful movie. Mm -hmm. Anyways, let's that's get the hell out of here. That's a phenomenal movie. All right, so who all – we put over Medieval Times. That's good. Boom. Mm -hmm. That was good. We put them over. Yeah. Ford Field. I was put them we over. Went out on a high note. Yeah. Complimented Ford Field. These are just whenever everything's kind of talked about after the program. Mm -hmm. Let's remember that these things happened as well. Yeah. Yes. Well said. Yeah. Kind of knocked the PFF Bottom. down a few rings. Yeah, see, no, I said it were a good tool, though. Good tool. Good tool. Yeah, yeah, we did. We T did save yep. it. JJ didn't yeah. say that. Yeah. You did, yeah. Yeah, but no, we're a team. Remember, we did the full. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're right. Well, Nate, yeah. they, they're just going to yeah. say that you have a grudge because they hate TJ, but. Yeah, but the grudge is unfounded because this guy was the highest rated of all time. Mm -hmm. True. They had to change I mean, the ranking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They literally did. I mean, that's a fact. Chris Collinsworth told me that. Well, he's we'll gonna, see what he tells you next. Yeah, he's gonna cut. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't think. It, I don't think it's going to be good. Uh, no, it's good. Two fine gentlemen. Two fine gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Him. Uh, no, I, I, he doesn't care. Him is Jack. Care. Chris doesn't. He doesn't care. give a shit. Baseball yeah. bats to the knees when they see Watt next. Dude, Jack Collinsworth pulling one out of that jacket. Let him try. Oh. Let him try. Let him try. Oh, you don't want that, brother. Dude, two two like, Collinsworth yeah, was like, bats. That's, that's why I don't like. Like, let's try it. Like, let's let's do it. I don't care. That's funny that you think that way. I think that way, too, as uh, the wars are starting. It's like, if push came to shove and we had to fist fight, who's winning? <laughs> All right, cool. Let's yeah. do it. That is. Now, if they bring friends. <laughs> oh, I got, Mike Tarico. I got a lot of friends. Oh, my I got a lot of friends. God. Why say, yeah, but they're in the playoffs right now. So, uh, uh, you know, the Mike Tar Oh, no, Michael Phelps is coming. Yeah. Yeah. I love Mike John Rom. Mike Rico. John Rom's coming with a golf club. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you, guys are, you guys are missing one balls. huge name. JJ didn't always, he wasn't always this confident. And then AQ now walks around the neighborhood in a, in a flag jacket. Oh, God, with, AR, with so. his flag jacket. Yep. Did uh, you see him? Did you see the shoes he's been wearing? He did a half marathon this weekend. Big Christ. topic of conversation uh, throughout Phoenix, Arizona. Big What's topic. He wearing? People, everybody's seen it. Everybody's seen it. <laughs> Hell yeah. Walking around. Did you win, AQ? Everybody's proud of you being oh, from there. I'm just happy I didn't. I, I literally ran the whole time. Two hours and 14 minutes of running. Let's Ooh. go. 10 minute mile average, right? 10 minutes something? Like 10, 14, I think it was. Shut up. Yeah. JJ, it's a machine. That's guy. incredible. Shit. He was wearing the biggest asshole shoes I have ever seen in my entire life. They he wore them in here today, just bopped in on these yeah, things. They, they weren't they, bad. They have no laces. You got to slide them in there. They're blue, pink, and red. They are. Something that not most people would want to be seen like in. Like form to your foot? They're sick. Those Cam Haynes? They're awesome. Yeah, they are. That's exactly Aiken? what they are. I put them oh, on. They're geez. very okay. comfortable. Boy, are they yeah. the ugliest things. <laughs> the <laughs> ugliest <laughs> shoes I've ever seen. I don't even know if you describe those as shoes. They're like socks with pads. I felt like you a hear, class. That's exactly what they feel like, too. You Unbelievable. Hear AJ? You hear AJ when he said when he got the name of the shoe right? Oh, geez. Okay. What do you hear the name of them? You've seen I them. I know what they are. That was great. I've seen them because I know Cam Haynes. I see him on the internet and what he's doing. But yeah, they do look very uh, colorful. No question. Well, it's not just the, the the design. The whole thing is just tough to look at. Like, AQ? do you wear socks with them, AQ? Yeah, I wore socks. Did you tape the nipples? Oh, I did. I, band aids. Smart, smart. Band aids. Yeah. Cam, so you did. On? You did ten minute mile for for thirteen point uh, one. Thirteen point two. Or 13.1. Mm -hmm. Dude, that's impressive. Good job. Yeah, that's yeah let's have a parade for the that's guy cool. in the yeah. neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. That's great. Thank you, you bring the AR out. Have him shoot into the air a couple times. <laughs> Again. <laughs> yeah, we feel safer over here. I can tell you, there is a calm, safe feeling over the entire neighborhood. Hell we yeah. feel protected. We're putting up signs. You know those signs that say, like, this house is ADT <laughs> security or whatever? Yeah. We put up signs that say, this house is AQ certified. Yeah. Hell yeah. I appreciate that. Beware of dog signs. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the dog yeah. is just AQ's face. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> with the helmet, with the helmet, with the yep. skin strap, like, riding up mm -hmm. on his face. Like, Beware of yeah. dog in neighborhoods, spelled D A W G. There they are. He walked in wearing oh, these. Oh, man. Yeah. Sick. And Michelin. I yeah, they're cool, man. They're really sweet. I, if I get into running, I will wear those. But I don't know if any human that is AQ size has ever worn those shoes. These are these are for runners, right? I assume. Yeah. No, and those laces don't seem like they're holding those those chompers in there. They don't tread. The little boa, little twist, unbelievable. You can't be having wheels on shoes. That's my biggest thing. You can't be having twisty things. They, on those shoes. look like Heelys. Remember Heelys? Oh, those kind of look like remember Heelys. sweet. Still got them. He, these were so cool. They need to make a comeback. Same with fidget spinners. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. Need to get the fidget spinner back as well. The wheelie's cool. How about the grinders? The kids yeah, that had yeah, the grinder those shoes. Are sick. Those are sick. Those kids were headed straight to in-school suspension. <laughs> Always. <laughs> Always saw the grinders walking in-school yeah. suspension. Yep. Yeah. Doing great. It's like the little finger skateboards that yep. you would do. like oh, Tech yeah. tech. I could never get that thing to Holly. 
It seems like yeah. everybody was easily able oh, to operate oh, that yeah. thing. Crying I couldn't get the flipping. fucker off the ground. I don't know how anybody did it. Me you guys too. were cheating? No. You guys were using a third finger? No, I, I sucked at them. I wasn't Me good. too, Tom. Yeah. I was third fingering that thing the whole time. I hated those things because I was really Whoa. bad at them. Easy. What's that, dude? Uh, AJ heard you say slip a third finger. Whole time. Every time. Never <laughs> failed. Because I'd, I'd step up to a, a desk. I never had one myself, but I'd see people have it. Yeah. And they'd be fucking doing all these tricks. And I'm like, oh, let me see. It looks like you guys are having fun. That's and that sweet. fucker just never jumped. So I'd have to sneak it in there, jump it. Mm -hmm. And I'd do a little roundabout. And I'd say, this loser can't fucking jump this thing. <laughs> Dork. And that was. So thanks for bringing it up, JJ. Hope you're happy. I got bullied because of it. Let's get out of here. JJ, you bullied enough people today. Okay. Are you going to be the guy that Cushing was for this Texans team now this week? Are you in the motivational speech Ooh. in the video? Are you pulling the cannon at the practice field? Are you doing all that stuff? It's an it's an it's an away game. So okay. no. oh, you said practice field. Practice field. <laughs> Pull the cannon on the practice field. I mean, are we trying to prepare for a game or not? Pew! You should fight, fight Ray Lewis. Uh, the line. Could be even smaller. All right, JJ. No. I will be at the AFC Championship game for CBS, though, so I am uh, looking forward to that wherever it may be. You did great on there, man. You, you've done so well every time we see you. Yeah, Warner. thanks. And Super yeah, Bowl. thanks, guys. Super I appreciate Bowl. you tuning in. Yeah. We do. We try. <laughs> every week. We yeah. even watch when you're not on. We I'm, think you're there. We, we visualize. I yeah. seriously, I told you this, but I seriously appreciate you guys watching Burnley. It does mean a lot. I really do appreciate it, even though sometimes we have a little fun with it. But Tough. it is really cool to see you guys watching and texting and following along. So if, thank you very if, much for that. If I'm on the guide, and obviously there's nothing else on that I watch. <laughs> obviously. And I don't watch a lot of stuff. Nope. So I watch football and wrestling. Mm -hmm. Football and wrestling is all I watch. So if there's nothing else on... I'll be like, and I see Burnley on the premiere. Th I'm immediate, yeah. yep. immediate. How we doing? And then I'll watch about two, three minutes. And then normally there's a text or a tweet going out mm -hmm. about watching Burnley soccer. And then I'll text Gumpy, who's normally watching every soccer game somehow that's happening all the time. Yeah. And I'm like, how are we doing? And Gump's like, the lads were hot early, kind of cooled off. What happened in the 94th minute the other day? It was the 93rd. We were driving to Ohio, and that's when they got screwed on that. The guy ran into the goalie, and then Buddy just tapped it in. I mean, we had the lead. Yeah, I, I thought. Yeah, I would say play the video, but apparently that's frowned upon. Don't do it. Straight. Get a cease and desist quick. Yeah. They took that sucker down quick. I saw Very it. quick. We all saw it, though. Yep. A lot of people saw it. Mm -hmm. You haven't gotten like an email or anything from the Premier League? Um, I mean. No, I have not heard. I have not been chastised or fined or anything soccer, from the Premier Soccer League. and golf are the only people to strike us on Instagram or Twitter, though, as well. Yeah, Patrick Reed, that yeah. was the first mm -hmm. time I got those are the Those are the only two that have ever gotten strikes from soccer and golf. Yeah. Like, generally, you would think you want to grow the game, let people share your highlights. Like, no. that's generally the whole mm -hmm. point. But not the bad ones. And, I mean, I also feel like when you are part owner, you should – kind of be involved in those like you should kind of have the rights but uh, whatever step up then uh, why don't you walk in yeah. premier league offices over here in london yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. do something about it is that where they're at london i don't are, I they, don't. In london? are they in london i thought it was cutter i don't know where the office is easy who has that's, offices anymore cool. everything's just communicated via email and phone calls you know no there's some people saying you're getting back in the office Get or you're your getting fired yeah and those people are being chastised pretty heavily. Yeah, I've never saying something else before. <clears throat> All right, let's get out of here. We've gone too far. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. legend, Burnley owner, Hall of Famer yeah. in the future for the NFL, Hall of Famer for the Houston Texans already, J.J. Wall. Yay! Well, let's get to a break. <laughs> I thought VAR used the – I thought it was like tennis where they use lasers and it's computers, not humans. So he was talking about the World Cup setup. Yeah. Which. Breaking news in the NBA world. The Pacers have completed the trade of Pascal Siakam. Obviously from Toronto. the Toronto Raptors. Wow. This guy's, this guy's got one year left on his contract. Uh -huh. So everybody was thinking that if they were going to trade for him, he's a hell of a ball player. Mm -hmm. You're probably going to have to pay him a massive deal as yeah. well. Then there was other people saying, no, that's not the case. It could just be a kind of finish the season type thing at the current. We don't know what the Pacers are thinking, but we do know with Pascal and Tyrese Halliburton and Miles Turner, what? look oh, out for the boy. Pacers. Look out for the Pacers. 
Oh, no, we lose Bruce Brown. Yeah, it is an RIP Bruce Brown. Bruce Brown's a great uh, player for no. us. He's been a great player. Both of them? A- NBA champion. We got to send ours to or? Yeah. No, Tony. I'm not going to fucking Toronto. Okay, Bruce made the decision. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the Raptors are a pretty fun squad now, as are the Pacers. Pacers are a much more yeah, fun squad. Much more. Yeah, the Raptors suck now. I don't know what we're talking about. Fun. <laughs> Bruce Brown's a good player. Great player. I think I heard the Toronto Raptors coach talk the other day. I had no idea that was the case. Oh, yeah. Radko. He's pissed. Show you how much they find him. But also, like, right? He wasn't He wasn't American? No, 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 no. no. I had no idea that was the case. I don't follow the NBA close enough. Serbian, I believe. Yeah, this year I think they're... Serbia is, like, becoming... Yeah. Is he related to David Blatt? No. David Blatt, also uh, not European, just coached over there. Okay. We're trying to figure it out as we go. I think there are other coaches, though, LeBron, right now, LeBron. currently. LeBron. There are. Yeah, who There's are a couple. European. All right, look at the game of basketball growing there you go. Doing a real good job, too. NBA doing it. All right, let's get to a break. We have Jake Johnson on the other side. Yeah. He, he's got a uh, – let me make sure I get this right. A Hulu original film now streaming called Self-Reliance okay. that he wrote, directed, and starred in. Okay. We're talking about Pretty Big cool. Brain. Triple threat. This guy was in uh, Spider-Verse. Yep. And yep. Uh, also New Girl. Yep. Yeah. Handsome and funny. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Incredibly intelligent. Mm-hmm. Has been on the show before. I think good. Yes. yes. Big Bears fan. I just look back to Zito. Yep. Uh, there, there it is. Yep. <laughs> All right. He'll be uh, joining us. And then we'll wrap up this glorious Walt Wednesday with some in the trenches and good D, bad D. Oh, You're yeah. the greatest people on earth. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. It might change your life. We're all in this together. Take five. 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 I feel really good. Like, my body feels fresh. My mind clear. Like, I'm going to go do it tonight, I think. You know? Like, I'm going to go do it. 77,899 people. Going bananas. I thought I wouldn't be able to sleep last night. I thought that I'd wake up with high anxiety. That is not the case at all. I am so ready to get out there and do what I was put on this earth to do. I'll be walking out of that thing. Well, this is a big night because uh, 11 years ago tonight, I had my match with Jerry Lawler. Come on! Broadcast colleagues, same night, 11 years apart, could become the first undefeated broadcast team in the history of WWE wrestling. Not could. We will be. Only two superstars have actually commentated on the same WrestleMania that they had a match on. Pat McAfee joins that club tonight. Pontius is in and Party Boy is here. Pontius is here. Party Boy is in WrestleMania. Pontius' cheeks are out in WrestleMania. Now he's putting that thing up on Sami Zayn. I would like to say that that's the first time I've seen Pontius' ass, but that is not the case. Hey, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at. Weaver! It bunches from Wee Man! Wee Man so angry! Oh, look at look at look at look at look at look at this! Body slam! Wee Man! Body slam! He said he said! Wee Man used to kick himself in the face! Are you kidding me? Now he's body slamming Sammy Zay! You know, I've walked out that ramp into this setting probably 10 million That's times fine. in my That's mind. Fine. There was a time where every time I walked out of a door, I was acting as if I was walking into a WWE arena. So tonight, whenever I feel that energy, just hoping that I don't have a heart attack immediately. I'm hoping that I don't get too gassed, and I'm hoping I put on a damn good show because I've been thinking about this for 23 years. Let's walk to and do this thing, huh? I'm prepared, I'm ready, I'm excited. Hey, who do you want to see tonight? I want to, I want to see Pat McAfee tonight.
empty basket. <laughs> Lands on his not sure what to do. Holy moly! I'm a sick for the play! So is this! Superplex! The finishing maneuver. The A Town down for Austin Theory. He hits this, it's over. McAfee rolls him up, shoulders are down. Does he have him? He does! The fact that I never got to see him as a kid, and then I get to watch his last match live, it was just, it was awesome. My ears, like it feels like I got water in my ears. I got beer in both of my ears. But I just had the incredible opportunity and honor <coughs> to drink beers with Stone Cold Steve Austin. Have a WrestleMania match that Vince McMahon was a part of. I'm living on cloud 50 right now, dude. This is sweet. What a day, what a dream, what a life. Now I'm gonna have a couple more Steve Wisers. Wide. Maybe a little whiskey. Wide. Maybe some carbs, because I've been ketoing for four weeks. Wide. Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. <laughs> the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pink! Damn it! <laughs> Be a friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sport! 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 Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Watt Wednesday, January 17th, 2024. Hour three of the program starts now. Football! This is what we normally talk about, okay? Football is pretty much the engine and the driver of everything I'm a part of, and most certainly 
this particular program. That's A.J. Hawk. He's college football national champion, a Super Bowl champion. The Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. Boys wearing your green, you look fantastic. Hell yeah. Thank you, brother. You look fantastic as well. You guys look like you're matching, like you're going homecoming. Well, yesterday uh, I was wearing lines and everyone was saying, hey, are you supporting the Lions? If anything, I'm, I'm supporting the Green Bay Packers. That, that, that is the team I want to win for Ty and also for the league because a quarterback like Jordan Love winning it all would be electric. Uh, and the storyline would be phenomenal. That yeah. would mean they would have to beat the San Francisco 49ers who are the clear number one seed of the NFC in a buzzsaw like they were last year going into the playoffs. It would be huge if the Packers were able to get a dub. Who knows? One half of the hammer. Dad. Cowboys tone digs. Looking extra ranchy today. Thank you. I appreciate that. Every once in a while you got to do it because you got to remind some people that this ain't just an act, okay? It's who I am. <laughs> All right. Amen. That's Amen. Right. Well said, when you go back to the ranch. Now, to be clear, me uh, and Tone right. oh, actually people. grew up on the same exact street. Mm -hmm. uh, same ranch. Impossible same. to have a ranch where we were, but Tone used to drive good two hours to get uh -huh. out to the ranch every single day. Me and you lived on State Road 130. No, nope. about <laughs> <laughs> an hour and 45 minutes to get to each other's houses. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah, yeah. It was, certainly was the case. A 12-year uh, NFL vet, Super Bowl champion, player coach, Jackie Moon of the NFL, AQ Shipley Series. Boy, AQ. AQ. Way to win some money for somebody over there. Uh, those yeah. 20 people from making a shot. Tw uh, nine year NFL vet. A man who looks incredible today. And he all read. Yeah. Dash Jay Butler. Right? Maybe D-Botch. Bot. D-Botch, I don't know if you know, but there's a uh, superstar about to join us. Ooh. Like an actual talent. Mm -hmm. You know, we're a bunch of doofuses, stooges, speaking about sports on a daily basis to find ourselves in wars that are way over our head every once in a while. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, yeah, I think that's accurate. Nailed it. The person that's about to join us has actual talent, AJ. This guy's brain, okay? Not only is he able to act and do things that make people's minds escape reality for a little bit, he writes, he directs, what? he creates. What? And his newest Hulu original film is called Self-Reliance. Alongside Anna Kendrick, mm -hmm. Ooh, Andy wow. Samberg, what? and numerous others, he's in a absolute fantastic piece of cinema. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, Jake Johnson. Yay! Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. What's up, dude? What's going on, guys? I'm honored to be here and to talk football with you guys. I'm the friggin' doofus, but I'm a diehard Bear fan, and I'm pulling for the Niners. Okay. Uh, to hell with the Packers. I appreciate that. I like that the rivalry is very much alive still on both sides. Hopefully, the Niners are able to get that done uh, if you're a Bears fan. But let's talk football real quick then. Justin Fields, we love him, huh? You love Justin Fields? Y you know, I... I'm a big Fields fan. I think he had a great year. I like what Flus is doing, but I feel like if we got the number one overall pick and Jimmy H is available, I can't believe we're not kicking the tires. Jimmy H? Jimmy Harbaugh. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, why not bring I mean, Harbaugh in? I mean, we're, I mean, he's meeting with Atlanta. He's meeting with San Diego. We're not even kicking the tires. I love that. So close. Los Angeles now. You know, you're uh, so dived in uh, on writing and cre uh, creating magic. The Harbaugh thought of him going to Chicago. And Belichick also available, Jake. And I know, but, but we're about to get the number one overall. We could get a QB. I want an offensive guy. We've never had that. If we take Caleb Williams and we pair him with an offensive coordinator – who might be on a two, three year deal? What are we doing? So it sounds like you're ready to move Am I on. Am out of line here, Pat? No, <laughs> no. Out of line here. No, Jake, you're actually speaking what a lot of Bears fans are thinking. It's it's a pretty mixed reaction, I do believe, from Bears fans. There's a lot of people that are thankful for the Eberflus culture seemingly hitting at the end of the year. Justin yeah. Fields getting back playing his best football. Here's everything we've been building for. Do we want to start over again? But with the number one overall pick, I mean, you got a lot to potentially build upon. Yeah, I think what would be really scary is if Caleb Williams comes in the league and he's not on our team and he's incredible. And then we got to deal with Jordan Love uh, in Green Bay, who seems to be another hit, which I've lost so much money on that kid because I was sure he was a bust. <laughs> and if he's good and then Caleb Williams is good and then if we middle... I mean, at a certain point, we just got to take our losses. Yeah, well, you guys have been taking a lot of those. A lot of those. But we're, bu but we're building, Pat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, you are, Jake. We're going to take the North, Pat. We're not going to give it back. Oh, Jordan Love looks so good. He does. And he looks so good. I hate it. Yeah, he's so <laughs> I good. I hate it. Um, okay, <laughs> let's talk about this uh, self-reliance movie first before we dive into the rest of the football conversation and life talk. Congrats. I assume this is a massive ordeal. So a lot of people know you from Thanks, New buddy. Girl. Uh, you're the voice of... Pete, yeah, Peter Parker. yeah, PB in, in Spider Verse, uh, mm -hmm. Peter B. Parker, yeah. Which mm -hmm. we looked up, 
the amount of money and success that this is. I have not Whoa. seen it. I'm watching it tonight. I didn't even know this existed, by the way. That's on me. I'm a sports doofus. I'm watching it tonight. <laughs> this is you in that particular film. You voiced this particular character. And now with this self-reliance go, you're killing it, Jake. Absolutely killing it. Thanks, buddy. How did we get to this point? And for self-reliance, I know that you wrote it, directed, starred in it. Is this just what it's going to be going forward for you now? Congrats, if that's the case. Thanks, I know buddy. people work their dicks yeah. off to get to that. Thanks, man. Well, I got to give it to you, too, man. You're killing it. I was watching that WWE promo, and that looks fun, man. Come on. Good on you, man. Thank good you. on you. Man. Hey, you can't trust hey, the for you guys this show. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, but, you know, the movie was a lot of fun. It was something I'd wanted to do for a long time. Uh, I got the opportunity to make it. Uh, it's, it's on Hulu right now. It was number one all weekend, which was a really great honor. And it's been fun, but I got to tell you, I, I feel like I'm an actor first. You know, I'm doing a podcast these days called We're Here to Help, and it's fun. So I don't really know what's next. I kind of take each gig, uh, you know, job by job. But I will say I know it's a really fun era. You guys have talked a lot on your show about how the old guard is going away and there's a new guard and that guard is going directly to the people. And this movie I made on Hulu, we made it for five million. So it is an indie, but the reach is as big as the big ones. So I'm in a I'm feeling like we're in a really exciting time across the board. Great leverage for you going forward. Go ahead, AJ. I know you said you feel like an actor first, but have you always written? I, I know it, it makes you much more valuable. I would imagine if you can write your own stuff and try to present that. Is that something you've done from a young age as an actor? And why doesn't every actor write and try to produce? And yeah. yeah. Thanks, AJ. Yeah, definitely. I, I started off as an actor because, I mean, as a writer, because to just wait and audition is really tricky, especially if you got a profile like mine. <laughs> no, you're handsome. You're handsome. Stay straight. Stay straight. What's wrong with that? But Patty, I mean, you got to look at guys like Ryan Gosling and you look at these hunks. So if you're coming up as an actor and you're a character actor like myself, and when I left Chicago, I was walking around at 215 with a pack of cigarettes and, you know, <laughs> a six pack of beer in my stomach at all times. Hell yeah. So I thought I might not get that role, but if I write it myself and I write it apart for me, I got a way better chance of getting it. So I've always kind of thought you got to do everything in the business in order to get a seat at the table and stay there. A lot of the things are comedy. You write. Do you do stand-up? Did you do stand-up? Have you ever? You know, I, I did a little bit. I did more improv. I came out of Chicago where the second city was, and I looked up to the Bill Murrays and the Chris Farleys oh, yeah. and this idea of being in an ensemble and being on a team and making the team better. That's where I always thought was the road through, and I always loved that more than uh, the idea of just standing up there with a the mic. I think Tina Fey is from Second City Chicago as well. Tina Fey, yeah, she's a killer. Rachel Dratch, a lot of a lot of great people. Tim Robinson. Ooh. Oh, ooh. yeah, <laughs> he's a killer. <laughs> yeah. we had he a, is a killer. We had a couple weeks on this particular program where literally the show was a sports topic and then rammed in, I think you should leave, Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, <laughs> reference in there. So obviously Second City has had a lot of success. What's the writing process? We, we smoke dope. We are in a quiet room. We play music. What type of music? How do you, uh, what is your creative yeah. process? You know, it always starts with an, a seed, and then I believe in the grind. So I believe I want to do kind of three or four drafts to everybody else's one draft. So I believe in the first draft is a kind of a vomit draft. You just get it out, and then you send it around, and you get notes, and you just keep pushing. So if I'm going to smoke weed, it's going to be at the early stages, at the idea stage, and then I'm going to start fading as I get into drafts. Do you do it in a notes section? How do you do it? Type? Write? What do we type? type? Yeah, old school. I, you know, I went to NYU for dramatic writing, so I... I started off as a screenwriter, so I copy the three act structure. I'm back from like the late '90s, early 2000s of the way like a big movie should look, and I like doing indies with a big structure. So I like a three act structure. I like a protagonist going through the whole journey. I like the change stuff that it feels like a movie movie that you could see in like a Pixar movie. I like trying to do it in like a little weirdo movie like Self Reliance. Okay, I love that. In the business sense of it, you wrote, starred, directed in it. I assume you own it as well? How does that whole thing work? Yeah, so you get a percentage of points, but it's different. So this was a like an independent contractor. I got hired to do something. So I own a piece of it because each part that I have in it, that gets equity. But the other things I've done in the past where we've self-financed indies, and that's kind of more new world where you own the whole thing. Um, so this one, I do have a piece, but this was more, I wanted to see if I could make a bigger one. I want to see if I could make one with an Anna Kendrick, you know, Chris Lloyd plays my dad in it. Gata's in it. Eduardo Franco's in it. You know, I did stunts in it. It's a really fun movie. 
So it's like a really wild ride. It was kind of described to me by somebody I did press with as a, a stoner comedic thriller. Ooh. And I'm like, oh, I like that. I recommend a joint before you start watching it. <laughs> Kick back. It is meant for fun. Okay. So, I mean, you said you made a movie for me. <laughs> yeah. That's what I, that's yeah, what yeah, I, yeah. Uh, that's what I just I'm not heard. looking for you to have a cup of coffee and put a scarf on and study it. I'm looking for it to be smoke a joint, have a couple of beers and enjoy the ride. Okay. Let's talk about the business of that. You talked about making your own self-funding and everything like that. This was hired yeah. for a job. This is seemingly the way these uh, platforms go, right? Adam Sandler gets hired. Yeah. Hey, you're getting this amount of money to make this amount yeah, of yeah, movies yeah. pretty much. Is that happening with Hulu or is this a one-off? And when I watch it and I give you a view, are we currently in the middle of negotiations for more with Hulu <laughs> or will those numbers ever get released for say uh, publicly, how many people watched it? So I don't know. Uh, well, I do know I'm not in negotiations with them because I like being a free agent. So, you Smart. know, the next project, I'm meeting with people now, different talent. I want to pair up more with actors and go in as a team. Uh, and I don't know if I want to be at Hulu. Uh, I don't know if they'll release. I do know that on their website, they see the top 15. And so we've been number one all weekend. So I wrote in, I said, like, is this real? And they said, it's, it's real on our app. So they, you know, they refresh that. So as long as that's there, I know we're good. But I don't know if they'll ever release how many we really did. Well, as you're coming up, trying to get more opportunities like that, all that is a massive ordeal. Let's screenshot the shit out of those at number one. <laughs> yeah. Ty has a question for you, Jake. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, let's, <laughs> for sure, man. Yeah, yeah. As soon as it is, screenshot, say it's over. Yeah. Uh, the the victory has happened. It's done. It's no, done. the staying power all weekend. You put the timestamp yeah, on yeah, when yeah. the one photo is to the next one. It's like, here we go. This guy's got it. And Jake, yeah. we all appreciate your brain. So we would like you to get more opportunities to make more shit. So yeah. this is for all of Thanks, us. Buddy. This yeah. is for Thanks, all of us. Go ahead, Todd. Yeah, but some. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. But something you're doing that I really respect is starting off as a podcast and building. So you're doing your own thing, and then you're on ESPN. Yeah. So I also think you, you know, this podcast I'm doing, the We're Here to Help, is based on that same thing. Rather than leveraging and going to Hulu and saying, "Giving me a three picture deal," I like that we're just doing our own thing in our own galaxy appreciating the promotion, appreciating being out there, but also having our own base. Yeah. Yeah, and we, uh, obviously the deal has been talked about a lot, us and ESPN, but it's like a licensing deal too, you know? So like 100% of shows still, you know, uh, it's it's good Along for- you. Yeah, so it's good for new, everything's still good for new, yes. We we'll all have the same mindset good of what the future, you, yeah, Jake, <laughs> let's go. Let's go, Jake. Go, hey, man. Ty has a question for you. Jake, what about the sure. director piece? Because I know this was your directorial debut, but like, did you enjoy bossing people around on set? Were you doing like any scene you were in? Like you give one take and be like, man, I fucking crushed that. And then if there's- One a, take, Jake killed it. Exactly. One take, Jake killed it. And if there's a yeah. scene Anna's in, you're like, ah, maybe like doing like Finch or like, hey, I'm going to need you to maybe give me yeah, 99 yeah, yeah. to 100 takes on this. But uh, guys like John Krasinski and some of these other actors now who have kind of moved from in front of the camera to behind the camera, like, did you enjoy the experience? Was it super stressful? And I know you kind of just mentioned that, you know, acting is still kind of your main focus. Is this something you could see yourself doing a lot more of in the future, though? You know, possibly. There's going to be a break for a while. But what I really uh, loved about it is in terms of sports, it felt like the director, you get to be the GM and you pick the team. And so I hired everybody on the crew. I hired the cast. So there were no bad apples. Sometimes you get on a set and there's a vibe or someone's behavior that is making it hard for you to do your job and you just have to push through. The beauty of this is everybody kind of had the same mission statement. And that was, I think, the most fun I had in directing where, and I kind of wanted every head of department, my camera operators, my DPs, set design, I wanted them to win. And so I wasn't micromanaging them. I kind of believe you hire good people and let them do their thing. And that was a, uh, a nice relief for me. It's what made it not too overwhelming. Go ahead, AJ. So I know you, uh, this, this show is a very big pro Tom Cruise show. We love Tom Cruise. I know you were able oh, yeah. to act with Tom and jump off buildings, do stunts with him, do everything yeah, yeah. in The Mummy. Uh, yeah. I read somewhere, I think you said, like, oh, it was kind of maybe a little bit intimidating to start that project. What was it like from start to finish to work with Tom Cruise? Because we just think that guy is, he I, is I would love to best. know what he's like day to day. A weapon. He is the best number one in the business. You know, they talk about in sports, at least for a fan, they say like a quarterback or a Michael Jordan sets the tone, first one in, last one out. Yep. And how hard they work, you all work. Well, that's the same on a movie set with number one on call sheet. Whoever's movie it is, 
really sets the tone. Uh, and Tom Cruise is the best number one I've ever worked with. He oh. works hard. All this, all the um, um, stunts he does are genuine. He and I did uh, three weeks of stunts in Africa together where it was all in two shots. And we did one where we're running across these buildings as they're exploding. And then we jump off at the end. And there was no netting or wires. And so I said, uh, hey, man, if we fall off, we die. <laughs> and he laughed. And I go... All jokes aside, man, I got two young kids. <laughs> so uh, what are we doing here, my man? And he said, don't fall off. And I thought, you're the best, man. And while doing that, he also makes you train with him and he cares, but he expects you to go for it. We did a stunt where we were on a three-story building and it, it was it rigged to collapse and then you hit the ground. And we hit the ground from about seven feet and it hurt. And afterwards, he ran up and he goes like, are you okay? Are you okay? And I thought something went wrong. And I went like, yeah, my man, but uh, I, I think I talked wrong. And he goes, are you injured? And I go, no. And he goes, what happened? I go, I can't breathe. You know, all the wind was taken out of me. And he goes, well, you fell off a roof. <laughs> and Tom. I went like, oh, you get hurt every time you just push through. And he's like, yeah, you get hurt. You just train so you don't get injured. And I was like, oh, this man is an animal. <laughs> Stunt people are faking it. I was like, this man is a real animal. And then you watch his movies and you see it. You go, this isn't pretend. This is the real deal. This is a bad man. Yeah, this guy's been through some shit during his movie. Because at the end, he'll have a yeah. broken left ankle. Yeah. He's running a but little he bit differently. But he also, he's a dude who cares. So I came in a little bit chubby. And he put me on his diet. So his chef was cooking food for me. I had to cut back on the beers. I'm working out five days a week. And in the middle of it, I'd started trimming up. And Scripty said, Jake's a little bit thinner than he was at the beginning, which in terms of continuity, I thought, let's eat some fries and drink some beers and slow down on the workout. Let's get back. And Let's get back. And old Tom Cruise said, uh, I don't care about the continuity. I love that Jake is pushing. And I thought like... What else? So if you're a Tom Cruise fan, all I have to say is he's everything you want him to be. Yes! Yes! <laughs> That's true. It is. He's we have one of the biggest He's the best. He's one of the biggest T C fans. Yeah, oh man. Yeah. And it just music to my he, ears. He, he is just the best and he's also so intense on a Tuesday morning at eight AM. It's shocking. <laughs> you know, you start off and you're like in a rehearsal and he's a ten out of ten. And you're like, my man, let me finish the coffee. And you go like, oh, well, this is what like a winning team does. He's into it. Like he got really into coffee. So there was like this espresso thing. And uh, all of a sudden I was talking to the espresso guy and I'm like, this is delicious. And he's like, yeah, I'm from Colombia. I won some contest. So Tom flies me out on his own dime. And I'm like, give me a break. What world are we in? <laughs> Self-reliance have shitty coffee or pretty good coffee? Always? Yes, Folgers. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want something better, go to Starbucks. What do I care? We're making a movie. Hey, get a TC movie if you want a little bit better. <laughs> yeah. Con Man has a question right. for you. Yeah, Jake, obviously one of your <laughs> massive roles throughout your career was in New Girl as Nick Miller. Yeah. Uh, and we were talking about how a lot of times these shows, and it kind of started with The Office, is after there is a very successful show like New Girl, yeah. they try and just remake that show in a different way over and over again, like they tried to do with The Office. Um, yeah. From your experience, was that tried after New Girl and just failed miserably? And did you guys, you Zoe and the whole crew, look on like, "That's right, motherfucker, only we can do that"? Or <laughs> did, did they not even try? And they were like, "Hey, that is no." So New Girl's different because when we were on, we had a big season one. Uh, and uh, Max and Zoe were Emmy nominated. I think the writers were. Season two, we were hot. And then season two, we fell off a cliff. So while we were on, we nobody was really copying us. And we were the kind of show that like whenever I'd get in like a cab, the cabbie always had to let me know he knew who I was, but he didn't like the show. <laughs> and it nice. was one of those things that like, you know, we are like, Every dude had to let me know, like, oh, I know you, man. And I'd go, great. And he'd go, I don't like that show with the girls. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then, Thank you. Yeah, thanks. I, I appreciate it. Uh, 14th and 8th, please. <laughs> and then, <laughs> then it came on New Girl and a whole new group found it. So if there's copycats, I think it's happening more now. I, uh, so I will say. I know you from Tag. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's where <laughs> I didn't watch New Girl. I would have loved it, though. If you were Great in it, show. I'm assuming Thanks, I would have loved it. But it Thanks, feels like man. you've done some... How old are you now? 
You don't have to tell me. How many years uh, you've been in the business? I'm 45, man. I'm not. Uh, I'm, I'm 45. I've been in the business. I started getting paid when I was 28, but I've been on stages since I was about 17, 18. Congrats, man. Dog. So many different roles. Dude. Yeah. And now the Spider Verse thing. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, that is voiceover shit the best or the worst? Uh, I love it. Uh, but I especially love this because Phil Lord and Chris Miller are the guys at the top are shockingly talented. I guarantee you're going to like Spider Verse, Pat. That's what everybody's saying. I, I the amount of money it's made is absurd. And Shock. then Shock it. I started looking Shock. at it. I started looking at some of the what people were saying, and it's like movie yeah. great, not just like right, for, yeah. for everybody. Seems like yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's a uh, those guys are the Chris and Phil are the Tom Brady's of our game. They're just the greatest of all time. They are just killers. Whatever they touch turns to gold. If you follow them, you'll see their track record. And when they we did Spider Verse the first time I saw it, I was a fan too, and I just thought like, God damn, like this movie is that thing. You did that in the basement? Where'd you record? Go to a studio? How long does that all take? Uh, most records for movies you can do in two or three sessions. Uh, I think I recorded for Spider-Verse for two years. <laughs> they don't quit. They don't quit. Two and years. they don't care if you're over budget. They don't care if the <laughs> studio's mad. They want it right, and they don't care. They keep pushing. We improvised all the time. We would be in there saying the lines, improvising. They would bring other actors. We would do, me and Shamik, who plays Miles, uh, we would just do the scene. And we're acting until we're sweating, you know, we're, and I'm like, we're in a booth, <laughs> but those dudes just, they want, they want it to be great. And when you're around that, it is truly inspiring, especially if you've been around other stuff where they don't care, like where it's a moneymaker, you start feeling really quickly, like, oh, this has a different engine to it. Mm. And when you're around a group that really wants it to be great, everybody steps up, man. That's awesome to hear. Thank you for a little inside baseball we got mm -hmm. popping off right here. Go ahead, Tone. Yeah, Jake, I'm a big fan, but uh, my favorite thing that you ever did was when you were on a, a local news station. I believe it was Nashville, and you kept thinking it was Memphis, <laughs> and you yeah, kept yeah, yeah, saying yeah. that you're going to Beale Street <laughs> yeah, yeah, and everything yeah. like that. That was my favorite yeah, clip yeah, probably yeah, yeah. of all time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is that the uh, first and only time that that's happened? No, you know, I got shit for brains, man, and especially... <laughs> You know, we did a bit and I still do it. But when you're doing a lot of press and you're doing the same thing over and over, rather than just repeating Max and I on that show, I play Schmidt, we created a thing called good sales. And good sales is when you really sell the damn product <laughs> and you do a hell of a job doing it. And we had just gotten too tired. We had started about 6 a.m. We had been running through it. And that Nashville one just got on top of both of us. But the real winner of that was that woman who hosted the show. Because if she would have been kind of an ass about it or tight and nervous, it's not funny. Oh, yeah. But So basically, I start screwing up. And I don't even remember what city it was, but I was saying the wrong one. And I was trying to make it local because we started doing a thing in terms of good sales. Make it local to where you're pitching. Oh, yeah. And, and so I was like, let's just get in details. And then everything I got wrong. I got the time of the movie or the show wrong. I got everything. And rather than cut away and get tight and pretend that the local affiliate manager, she just played along. She's like, don't worry, I got your back. It's seven o'clock, not eight o'clock. That's not here, you've screwed up again. And then my buddy Max started laughing and we were live so we couldn't get out and it just turned into like a really fun one. Hey, good promo. Yeah, Sounds yeah, like well, we're still yeah. talking about it. I don't know when that was, yeah, still talking about exactly it. Exactly right. Good sale. Absolutely yeah. great, yeah, great. Good, good sales, great sales. Good sales, sales. Yeah, good sales just, man. Good sale, great sale. <laughs> Darius has a question for you. Hey Jay, it's been a lot of screenwriter script talk when it comes to NFL for the last couple years. <laughs> Obviously, we got the Packers yeah. in the playoffs, we got the Lions, so I'm going to assume if you were writing the script, how this whole um, you know playoff, the rest of these playoffs play out, how would it play out for you in the NFL in the playoffs? And who is that over your left shoulder? Oh, this old timer? Yeah. <laughs> so that is a, uh, a lamp I got when I was 17. My mom and I, our apartment was near a Salvation Army, so that was the first piece of furniture I bought that made me feel like an adult. That a baby. And so, it looks like it's out of Legends yeah. of the Hidden Temple. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. So every woman I've ever lived with or been to my house have always hated it. <laughs> and it just keeps following. And now my wife allows me to keep it in my back office. Uh, in terms of the uh, script, I know what the NFL wants. They want Kelsey and Taylor Swift kissing under confetti. Mm -hmm. uh, I think for me personally, I'm, I'm really hoping San Fran beats Green Bay because if they got another monster in Jordan Love, 
I, enough's enough. <laughs> uh, I love Campbell and uh, what he's doing with the Lions. I loved his opening press conference of biting people's kneecaps off. Yes. I loved him on Hard Knock. Everything about him is fun. Uh, I love that when he talks, I, I was watching the game after halftime, he had a red nose and dip teeth and was, I was like, who, this is not a head coach, man. This is a dude from outside a bar yeah. Yeah. that I'm bumming a cigarette to. And I go, you think the Lions are going to win? And he's going, we got to slow him down on defense. Man. We got to get him. And I'm like, so my script says, let's see the Lions take the whole thing. I want to see Ravens, Lions. I want to see. You know, I want to see that personally. Okay, that would be a great, great Super Bowl. It would be a really fun Super Bowl. But I'm really afraid of the Packers, uh, and I'm really nervous about what they're building. I hate keep hearing about how they're the youngest team. They are. Yeah. All first to second year guys yeah. at skill positions. Pretty much every, it, 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 every important position is very – still getting better. Still getting better. It's a nightmare. It is a nightmare. Hey, good for you guys, though. Yeah, good for you up there in Chicago. First pick. Good for you up there in Chicago. <laughs> Number one overall pick. There Never you go. Get it. All right. So self reliance is on Hulu right now. We I could watch this shit tonight. It's it's we dropped on Friday. We're still there. We're currently still number one. I hope everybody enjoys it. Kick back and enjoy it. Oh, I've been screenshotting it. Oh, there we go. There we go. There. It, so I hope it. everybody enjoys it, man. It's a load of fun. Did you lose your teeth there? Is that what I'm seeing? Yeah, I get a, I get it. It turns into the premise of the movie is I get invited to play a dark web game where people are hunting me and trying to kill me, and I have thirty days to survive. Okay, uh, and, and, and then nobody in my life believes that I'm playing. Mm -hmm. So it's a I'm going through the this wild game, and everybody thinks I'm just making stuff up for attention. So it is comedic from the family's point of view and a thriller from my point of view. A million bucks on the line, right? A million bucks on the line. 30 days. Can you stay alive? Let's go. Well, all your family and friends <laughs> think you're a psychopath. Now we're talking. Let's go. We're talking. All right. Self-reliance. I'll watch tonight because it'll benefit you immediately. Oh, yeah. In the Appreciate future. you. Then we'll do Appreciate spider verse you. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Boom. I'm having yes. a couple of days with Jake Johnson. My wife and I are about to really hey. digest some Jake Johnson. And then when you're working out, throw the podcast on. We're here to help. All right. We'll run that's going to be nothing but laughs. That's going to be nothing but laughs. It's lighthearted. It's an advice show where my buddy Gareth Reynolds, who's a stand-up comedian, has a Packer tattoo on his arm. We take call in live and we give advice to people. But the note is nothing serious, but serious to you. Okay. I can't wait. So no divorces, nothing heavy. <laughs> but if there's like something stupid in your life or you did something really embarrassing, our pitch is... Oh, uh, the premise this. of the show is if you go to a bar with your friends and you go, I'm in a shit situation, they will pitch rather than just yeah. say, I'm sorry, you're in it. They're going to try to get you out of it. It might not be the right advice, Got it. but we're going to try to get you out. And then we follow up with the people. So you're a modern Judge Judy. Judge yeah. Joe Mendes. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I, I, I started this career for that, Pat. Now I'm finished. <laughs> it's a nice podcast version of Judge Greg Mathis. That's right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yes, that's Harvey. exactly right. Uh, Judge, Judge Harvey. Steve Harvey. Yeah. yeah. We saw Mathis yesterday, remember? Oh, yeah. There was uh, this boyfriend, ex-boyfriend was suing his ex-girlfriend for 3100 bucks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, I don't think either of them won. No. no. But she looked guilty, <laughs> and he looked slimy. Yep. And uh, Matt and they and they each and they each got a day rate. <laughs> You're saying it's fake. Don't you, do that to me. Don't on. you do that Pat, to me. Don't. Pat, you get paid. You get paid to show up. Don't you do that to me, oh, Jake. No. <laughs> I don't need to hear that right now. All right, we appreciate you. Good luck with everything, man. Keep crushing it. We appreciate you. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for the time, ladies and gentlemen, Jake Johnson. Yay. Yay. I remember we liked him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a man. Yeah. He was pitched for a show. I forget. When? Maybe it was Tag. I think it was Tag. It was Tag. It might have been Tag. And I had no idea who he was, AJ. And uh, I think everybody was like, we like Jake. What? Mm -hmm. We like, and then I watched Tag and I'm like, yup, love Jake. And then now he's writing, starring, directing, getting deals with streaming networks. Good for him. Yeah, it's a good movie. The Self Reliance looks good, honestly. It sounds good. You know, I don't know how many Hulu original films are. Uh, White Man Can't Jump. Two. Two. Two was on there. What? Mm -hmm. Yeah, not the first one. Hmm. Well, maybe it was on there before that, but Jack Harleasy yeah. was... Uh, yeah. Sounds like a little bit... It's a new version of... Was it Surviving the Game? Uh -huh. Where they go hunt... Ice-T. Uh, Ice-T. That's a great movie. You're talking about The Pest? Very similar, uh, yes. Like Wazamo? Yeah. Are we talking about the one with Stone Cold when he's in the jungle? That's the Condemned, but yeah, kind of same idea as well. But I don't think they're in the jungle. I think they're. it's in the... Suburb. Let me read the thing. I don't know how much I'm allowed to give away. 
No spoilers. They sent this to me, by the way. It's already out. Yeah, but that doesn't mean it's only been out a weekend. Yeah, so? Yeah. <laughs> when a middle-aged man, Jake Johnson, from New Girl, is invited into a limo by famous actor Andy Samberg. Okay. Oh. His doll life... I'm, that's not me, Jake. This no, is what no. your people word say. Word for word. His boring-ass, shitty-ass life mm -hmm. takes a thrilling turn. Ooh. Johnson is offered a chance to win a million dollars in a dark web reality TV show where assassins from all over the world will attempt to kill him for 30 days. The catch? He can't be killed if he's not entirely alone. Ooh. Leading him to recruit an unlikely team to help him survive. Mm. Boom. Good luck finding one friend. Yeah. Yeah. Anna Kendrick. She's in it. That's probably the friend. Natalie Morales. She's mm -hmm. Ooh. What? Gata. I, I hope Anna sings. Yeah, Gata from Dave. Yeah, that's who that is, right? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of butt cheeks from Dave in that one. Yeah, none from Gata. Gata never shows butt cheeks. Okay. <laughs> Mary Holland, Bobon, Marginal, Mar. Bobon's yeah, Bobon, in it? Yeah, Marin Bo Bobon is in it. Are you kidding me? That's a basketball player? Yeah, oh, that's yeah. the mm -hmm. giant basketball his player. His acting career is taken off. He was in John Wick 3, I believe. Never yeah. seen his last name, only Bobon. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why you never seen his last name. Mar Mar Marjanovic. Boban Marjanovic, Christopher Lloyd, Wayne Brady. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Wayne Brady's Wayne in? the Brain, probably mm -hmm. one of the killers. Maybe. Boban definitely is. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, They're kind of pigeonholed him in that, in that, <laughs> yeah. that role so far. The heel? No, as a assassin. As a assassin, yeah. All right. Well, as we wrap, that was a great conversation. I'm going to watch Self Reliance, AJ. I think we should. Yeah. What do you say? Yeah, Stoner, like thriller, comedy? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Smoke a joint yeah. before it. Was Tag a show or a movie? Movie. movie. With John Hamm. I thought you meant Tag. There was a Tag TV show where guys chase each other around. That was JJ Watch show. That. It was. Yeah. That's what he confused me. I haven't. I didn't see that movie. Tag the movie really good, actually. Jeremy Four Renner. shoot really good. Mm -hmm. Oh Renner. Okay. Ed Helm. It's a true story about this group of friends who have a game of Tag yeah. that is still happening, where they set up elaborate travels and pranks to tag people. It's a. Oh okay. I have seen some of that. It sounded good. incredibly corny. So whenever. I was pitched for him to come on the show, and they laid out the thing. I'm like, oh, yeah, that sounds terrible. I'm not going to do that. I don't want our show associated with that. And the boys were like, Jake Johnson's awesome. Jake Johnson's awesome. He comes on the show, wins me over. I'm like, all right, I'll watch the fucking movie. Not corny at all. No. 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 Incredible. The, it was a the phenomenal cast, movie. The cast is unbelievable. What is it? Renner, Ed Helms, Jake Johnson. Ham. And then John Ham and John Ham's penis. It was unbelievable. Right. <laughs> yep. I thought that go that goes kind of hand in hand, right? Yeah, that's a well, hamaconda. Well, it actually goes, goes yeah, hamaconda yeah. in hand. Oh, boy. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, yeah, definitely plural. <laughs> definitely two. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, you really cracked yourself up over no, the no, no, cowboy. The continual conversation after. I mean, have to go to bed. All I did was throw the ball up in the air. Someone else came in and fucking slammed it home. Well, got go, it. Go ahead. I mean, gotta go Hamaconda to good D, right? We can't, we can't go anywhere mm -hmm. else. Yeah, we're not going in the trenches. No way, not with Hamaconda. <laughs> <laughs> no way. No, no thanks. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to get smarter at bull. Doesn't have all the answers, but certainly gives us most of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, everything DB presents Good D, Bad D. Hey, Let's go. All right, we will start with the bad D. Um, we are very thankful and appreciative that this has been happening all season. Darius, I think we got some good shit today, don't we? We do. We got some great shit. It's playoff time, baby. Starting. Ooh. Uh, yeah, we'll start here for sure. Okay. Let's go, Lions. So this is the play. Fourth and one touchdown to Sam Laporta. Good, great coaching, actually. Great execution from Ben Johnson's offense, something we saw with the hardball offense and college football playoffs. A lot of formations, a lot of shifts, a lot of motions. So right here, personnel-wise, they're going with a heavy personnel. So we got zero wide receivers on the field. You got running back, full uh, fullback, tight end body, tight end body, running back, Skipper reported Skill. 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 jumbo Skill. tight end. Skill. So it's either 13, 21, one of those big personnel. Uh, and for, uh, like I said, no, not a lot of cover guys at all. John Johnson's safety is really the only cover guy out here. Outside linebacker was putting a blender a few times. So now you shift, right? So now you go from under center, eye back, and now you go to a three by one bunch set with oh. Sam Laporta out here split out at number three now. He's scored. He's a touchdown machine. He's been all year. We've seen him score against safeties, corners, linebackers. Anytime he gets an outside linebacker out here, it's obviously a mismatch. You got three guys out here who 
probably collectively have maybe a rep in the game together covering a bunch out here in space. This is tough for DBs. You see it all the time. You get out here in space, third and four, and you got wide receivers out here. It's tough to sort it out. They do their best job that they can. Fourth and one, money down, go to your big money player. Obviously a good route, one-on-one, -on -one, Sam Laporte in the back of the end zone, oh, Jerry Goff finds him. Filthy. That's a tough, tough spot to be in for all those defenders. Never great. Well, 97, 97 in was coverage, yeah. in coverage a lot. Yeah, yeah he was. He was in coverage a lot. And that's what you're going to get. Anytime you extend three and you have that outside linebacker who, who's, you know, he's going to be <laughs> responsible for the coverage. Now, AJ has probably dealt with this a lot more than me once we get – this is probably like a goal line. And you saw um, the Super Bowl that the Patriots won with Malcolm Butler, the pick – they had that special personnel. Hey, goal line goal corners, line. but mm -hmm. we're going to send the corner in to cover the guys. But when you have goal line and then you spread these guys out, it's tough to cover. I mean, Goff could. I mean, yeah, well, yeah. Well, oh, it's yeah. in there. If you really wanted to, it feels like they got it. And I yeah. see that you had old Skip highlighted yeah. here. So that's, that's, the, that's can't rush. Eligible. Yeah. So we got to treat him. So that guy on the edge most likely is covering him. And it, but once again, you coming out with the mindset fourth and one. All right, they're going for it, and you get the, all you have is the D coordinator or the players on the field. Hey, they got uh, we got a back here. We got you know twenty, what's this, twenty three personnel, or fourteen jumbo, whatever it is. You you thinking in mindset, hey, they're just going to try to run it down our throats for a yard. Come out of I formation, and you split out, and now you're dealing with a bunch out here in space. You got to completely change your mindset as a whole defense. John Johnson got to find out. I would I would think if he had this down back. The safety would say, hey, let me get Laporte. You guys cover the other guys. But when it's happening so fast, you just want to be lined up, have a body. Ben body. Johnson, what a genius. It is Big back. Play. Big play. You got to snap that thing quick, right, so they don't see it. it you, honestly, you, you just want to be – you want everybody set. It doesn't matter because, once again, you got a mismatch somewhere because you got guys out in space who aren't used to covering that. But the quicker you shift and get set, the quicker we all got to see they pointing. So I think they did a pretty decent job, honestly, uh, defensively, just getting a body on the body, a man on a man. And then, you know, you see 89 man, trying to set a little pick. How about the route this way, then? Yeah. I mean, it's tough route. Chance, but – Probably to get if you got the guy on the point to kind of get up and jam him at the line. If you're, you know, who's the guy right there, 89, yep. get up and jam him possibly to try to create like a weird bubble to where he doesn't have enough time, maybe. Yeah, you see 89, he's trying to set a little body pick uh, for, you know, the guy that, on uh, Huter, I believe his name is, uh, 97. Ooh. I believe, I'm not sure. Yeah, 97. Yeah. Yep. Michael Hoyt. Michael Hoyt. There it is. Not Hooter. Hoyt. Hooter. Where were you last night? <laughs> Uh, I'm not a big who. I'm more of a Twin Peaks guy. So. Okay, okay. Fair okay. enough. Fair enough. Good play. Though. Good play. Good execution. Do they serve the same type of food? I though? think, yeah. 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 Twin Good Peaks. Food. Great ribs. I think Hooters is more wings, but like similar. Great ribs. Hooters, AJ. Twin Peaks. I don't think I've. What's the other one? I don't, I've done this I don't know Twin I don't know Peaks. Twin Peaks either. What's the Irish We've been one? to a Twin Peaks There's one out here, actually. It was the only restaurant yeah. within uh, 30 miles of the hotel we were staying at on a Thursday night football game, if I remember correctly. North Carolina. Yes, that is correct. We walked to it. They had the big buffalo outside, and we yeah. all were hopping on and <laughs> take, take pictures. Yep. I yep. do remember that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I guess I did not remember it at the time, though, <laughs> yeah. so it made a big impression. <laughs> but, uh, Connor, sounds like you would go to you could go to – you go to war for Hooters, it sounded like. I mean, I, I have never uh, been lucky enough to go to a t Twin Peaks establishment, but yeah, the cake at Hooters. I mean, some of the best dessert in the land. Twin Peaks. I don't know. Apple yeah, turnovers. Yeah, that. Ooh, oh, better, like better Peaks. than the chocolate yes. cake? For, yes. Yeah, okay. I'll be Ice cream, that. What's yeah. the Irish one? Hmm? There's one Tilted down in North Shore. Tilted, Tilted, Tilted Kilt. Kilt. Thank you, Oh, Adrian. yeah. Oh, I've never been there. That sounds awesome. Tilted Kilt. Mm -hmm. These all have similar food? Yep. Similar atmospheres. I pledge my allegiance to Tilted Kilt if I ever went, for sure. It went out of business, but fuck. <laughs> you knew that. Is that why you said no, that? No, I didn't, just because that's a great name. It is pretty good. Though. Better than Hooters. Anyways, thanks for bringing up Hooters. <laughs> oh, sorry about it. Hey, it's okay, man. Yeah, I think they're is that a reference. Some... Is that a reference to a hard on Tilted Kilt? No, it's a reference to a kilt being Could worn. Be. I think it, it, what if you have a kilt, but someone's hard? Boom, it's tilted there. <laughs> I don't think that's, I'm, that's, that's the first kilts. time. I'm just spitballing. First time be, I thought of that. I think it'd be TP kilt. Or <laughs> yeah, exactly. Tent kilt. Pitching a kilt. Not out of the equation. It's possible, though. All right. You can, what's up, DB? What we got possible. going here? Huh? First time I thought of that. Empty. Empty. Yes, they <laughs> are.
Empty. Third and seven. We've seen the touchdown. Uh, Jordan Love, once again, just having total command of the offense. Third and seven, you got on the empty. The empty check here, it looks like, for the Cowboys was to send zero pressure. So both these off-ball linebackers are going to blitz. You'll see Jordan Love. You're running back to the beginning. You'll see Jordan Love give a fake cadence. Boom. So then get the defense to show their hand. Now, usually sometimes when you get caught like this in the blender, you check to something different as a defense. It's tough to do, though, once you have these man-to-man -man alignments back here. Everyone's blitzing. What I would say is once he brings the tight end there to protect as this blitzer, you should get a little closer so that if your guy blocks, you can add on. And if he was to add on, he would be that free hitter, which would not give him enough time to get this ball out in that double post up top. If you run it back to the beginning to see the routes up top. So double post, you get a motion down uh, from Wicks. He's going to motion down. You'll see the communication between the corners. And once again, whenever you're comboing or working it in and out, anytime you get double in breaking routes or double out breaking routes, those are the toughest because somebody's going to have bad leverage. Great route, great throw. Great job pre-snap picking up that blitz, understanding what's happening. And I think the fix for this defensively is that adjustment where, hey, he checks, he saw the blitz. Now, once he brings this tight end to block, if he blocks, we add on. Mike is coming from really far away. Too. Yeah, he's yeah. kind of loafing a bit, too. <laughs> so he's what getting this, so he knows, boom, Old he miss. sees it. They give a fake alert, the defense, like they're changing something. Yeah, Mike is getting, you know, a um, little chip from the running back. Boom. He's saying Mike is loafing. He wasn't loafing. Well, you know, he said before the game that, you know, he was going to be fucking legendary, and then he got stonewalled by Zach Tom. So, you know, he's loafing a little bit after they got down 27 nothing. You're saying he's bummed out. He's a little bummed out. <laughs> what happened with uh, Gilmore? Was it all scheme? Because Cowboys fans were ready to put his head on the spot. He had a – yeah, tough, tough go at it. You know, he got banged up uh, the week prior, but it was just tough. I mean, you had the sell route, so you yeah. take, you go inside like you're running over, which as a corner, you got to haul ass. That's the toughest route to cover. And then the receiver puts the foot in the ground and go the other way. You can definitely, you know, look look like an idiot at times out there covering. But this is just, this is a great route. How about the ball, too? And then, oh, yeah, yeah, it's a great ball. And then the fact that he's motioning down, and then at the top of the route, you'll see that little extra sauce he puts on it to kind of sit him down because it's veteran corner. You know this is the main route. We talk about it all the time, double post. You want to stay inside leverage. He's done a, doing a good job right here, but once he gives him that little uh-uh, sits him down, crosses his face, and then that's a great ball, great ball. where he Keep put it. He's so and good. this is what Pat P picked off a year yep. or two ago that we talked about on the show? Yep, Pat P picked one off. We talked about one that uh, Slay picked off against uh, Kirk Cousins and yep. Justin Jefferson. Was Pat P the one year. against Josh Allen? Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. We have to go yep. on. Same thing. He, he knew it pre-snap, and, and he jumped it. Yeah, so that, that's why that, that extra little that extra sauce at the top of the route, I think, made it. And then, obviously, you know, love knowing what's coming, getting back, O-line picking Ooh, up. Yeah, you're right. And that, Jeez, at the top of the route. Yeah, at the top oh, of the route, he, <laughs> he just set him down, made his feet stop. Dang. That's I mean that's tough. And love a little double clutch on it too. Yeah, filthy. Love is a he's, ah. he's, he's a monster. Jeez. absolute monster. That's just a great route. You're right. <laughs> yeah, that's Jeez. tough. Great ball. The ball. Yeah, yeah. Ball great great route. I'm obviously. saying for, for Gilmore though. Where I say, hey, what's up with Gilmore? Uh, sometimes these guys are getting paid too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. pretty good. Sometimes they just got your number. Now the Gilmore thing is one thing. This you know it was it was it's a shit show back here for Philly. And it has been that for the last couple months. Third and seven. You're going to see motion coming down. Now, you want to be on different levels. I think he's a little too deep to be covering this running back in the backfield. And this is tough. When you're running crossing routes as a DB, you got to avoid traffic. You're covering the back in the backfield, but he's going to run right into him as they're crossing two trains and a boom. Oh, no. Passing it tonight. Now you give it up third and seven. Now that happens, right? Boom. You pause it here. That happens. We got... Right now, a uh, corner and a safety running. So now we just got to get this guy to rally. rally and tackle at this point. Cup him. Pursue angles. We talk about it all the time. So right now, if you just pause this right here in the defensive meeting, Played. we're going to say, hey, look, we can't let this guy score. Like, we got to line up and play again, get a red zone stop, maybe hold him to a field goal. But they don't. If that was a punt return, poor lane integrity. Yeah. Yeah. Boom, makes a move teammate. Team. Like, that's, you know. This tackle, too. I this, mean, this is, he just this pushed him into the end zone. It's bad ball right here. This is, this is as bad as it get as a unit. Wrap up. Wrap up. Take good angles. Once again, they're running into each other. You don't want it to happen, but the shit happens. Just got to get them on the ground again. Live to see another day. Live to see another down. Third and seven. That's right. 
Just make a tackle, dude. Mm-hmm. That's a, by the way, kicker, punter. Mm-hmm. Just get, get them down. Just yep. let, at least yep. try to hold this to three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, if it's getting to you. What really made this play work, too, was uh, the shipyard alum, Bob Hainsey, in the middle. I don't know if you guys saw <laughs> yeah. him. But Great job on the on the, Anchor in the old line. Just stonewall on Fletcher Cox. Snap on Fletcher, come back on the back. It was really well done, Bob Hainsey. Where's right. he, Shane? Or where's he trained? Oh, the shipyard out there. Where's that? That's a place that that's doesn't it. flush their toilets. That's oh, in my yeah. backyard. Full Never. of piss. Piss bucket. That. Just, oh, stole hey, down stole ball, ball Jackson oh, pass a, off. Really nice. Hassan Reddick, see ya. Great pass. Huge third down. Nice job, Q. Look like a huge. Mike play. Evans blocking down the field, getting the body wow. on two guys. Mike Evans will do it. Godwin will do it. He'll do mm-hmm. it. Put a hand up. Get a better shot of Hainsey here. Who won't do it? This man right here, number 70. Mm. Somebody right over top of him, mm-hmm. AQ. Stud yeah. right over top of him. AQ, is that the worst when somebody just head up right over top of you? So they're. This particular stunt's the worst when they go bang, bang, and then they loop the guy around. You got a like, three-man pass off on the left side here. Handles it like a pro. Bang, bang. bang. Nice job, boys. Pass Wait, off. he's already eyeballing it. He's already Ooh, eyeballing yeah. it. Snap oh, it no. off. Ah. Come back. Hainsey. Bobby. 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 Seventy stay, stay square. Gets his depth. Really? I mean, it's just like I taught sink, him. Sink, sink, sink. Mm. Oh. Strain. 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 <laughs> God, what? See Mike Evans again here. Body on the back. Guys that. are straining. Guys are straining. Bucks wanted it more. They did. Maybe. They wanted more. Here we go. Once again, second and four, third quarter, end of the third quarter. Going to be a simple out route. Yeah, it may be a first down, but once again, tackle. Tackle, oh, staple to the ground. Yeah. You miss it. So now, once again, you pause. It's like, it looks it. like the Minneapolis miracle. Mm. It does. One. <laughs> simple. Boom. Now, this, these are tough tackles. Now. This isn't an easy tackle. That wide receiver can catch it, put that foot in the ground, turn it back in. <laughs> That's what. Miss. Boom. You missed one. Pause it right here once again. I mean. Once again, we got to get this guy on the ground. And we're talking about, you know, first and 10 from the 40, first and 10 from the 35. We don't. Splits the safety. Bad angle. What are we doing? And I mean, it, I mean what's the again, hey, so, to do? That's Craig Palmer. So we say it all the time with offensive line when they go out in space. Like, mm-hmm. you can't break down. No. Like, so is that is that same thing with Bayard there? Like, does he have to go attack there? So the first one, uh, I would say you can break down a little bit. Sometimes in space, you know, corner safeties, there are going to time you want to – you're not going to fully break down. You want to continue to close space. So right now, he, he, and, he missed the that, proper leverage. Yeah, though, G, but he gave these guys a chance because he missed outside. See, he AJ. Four, I mean, yeah. For me, been in this position, I want to use this sideline. Like I'm trusting my guys running. Mm-hmm. Trey Palmer's a fast motherfucker. This 12th man, I want to use this 12th man. So almost like when a, um, as returners, like as a returner, I was taught to, hey, you want to. Ben here is kind of skinny that guy up to give yourself kind of almost a two-way go. Oh, yeah. And as a safety, you almost want to tackle, hey, I want to tackle Inside this back out. hip, yeah, and make him just kind of run bad because now I can just push him out of bounds. I don't have to make a real physical tackle. Once mm-hmm. he cuts back, I just got to trust that these guys. It's a linebacker. You know, this Trey Palmer, like, this, he can roll. So at this point, free safety, we're free safety. We just got to get you down anyway, anyhow. So it is a tough, once again, it's a lot easier with this fucking stick in my hand than it is <laughs> being out there with Trey Palmer in open space. But, um, you know, you got a uh, 3-3 three, three hauling ass. It's tough. You got you to get him on the ground. You got to find a way to get him on the ground. It's a playoff game. We're fighting for our lives. Like, we, we, we got to get him on the ground. That here. guy, uh, Byard, he could just act like he's not athletic enough to catch Palmer either. Mm-hmm. So then Palmer thinks, oh, I got to f- Fucking right here. Yeah. Like if Bayer just acts like he's unathletic a little bit, mm-hmm. sure. You know, then you got that guy, and then you just squeeze him yeah. right exactly. to the sideline. Squeeze, squeeze him to the sideline. I made twenty tackles that way. Mm-hmm. Boom. Twenty. Just acting like, oh, my hamstring. You're gonna, you can blow right by. Oh, wham. Let me close the door real quick. That is the play. Mm-hmm. It is that sideline was a weapon, bro. Oh yeah, weapon. Oh man. And I didn't like that you said you were taught to run this way because that's the last thing I want as a returner. No, if I'm if I got this ball in my hand, that's a, a punter or a kicker or whatever. Like I want to run almost like right at him. Yeah. So instead of just because if I'm if I stay here, I'm giving you that angle. Oh yeah. So once I come here at you, it's like oh shit. Yeah. Oh now, shit. You know, yeah. and now it makes you sit down. And if I'm faster, I could just. Yeah. We hit. we don't we don't want anybody running right at the kicker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you want to get around him? Always more athletic. Yeah. I told Josh Cribbs that before the game. Mm-hmm. Said, Josh, just don't run me over. Just run around me, man. Just don't run me over. You know, you can just get around me. <laughs> Kick off return. Try to get around me. Fucking tackled him.
in the moment as I tackled him, we get up. He said, I should have ran your ass over. I said, yes, you should. Hopefully this doesn't happen again. Josh Cripps, good guy. Oh, yeah. Great, great guy. human. Great guy. Mm-hmm. Great teammate. Fucking incredible returner. Yeah. Great yeah. player. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and not only a returner, great Wide teamer. Oh, yeah. Overall, teamer. Like, whole a core quarterback. teamer. He was. Quarterback. Quarterback. I don't know if enough yeah. people appreciate and respect how good Josh Cripps was. No. Football. I think when he was doing it, they did. Yeah, but now it's yeah. like kind of. It was a game record for sure. Well, and that's not his fault. But, it's, yeah, we got a special that, teams that today. Happen. That cannot happen. Yeah, you're right. Ooh. Let's go. Nice. Let's get to the good D. Time for some good D. What? Look at this. What? Get JJ in there, huh? JJ, what? Yeah, this hey. guy, hell of a player. We got to hey. get, get a stealer up there. Oh, yeah. One. Yeah, definitely not a Patriot. Not as if they had the greatest defense for 20 years. Bill Reeves is up there. They got to get a Patriot. Right, Reeves is up there. In a judge. Maybe we get him in the split there. Here is a good one. This is a good one. Oh, Here's no. fourth and two. Stick route, one of the most basic routes. You see it all the time in the NFL, fourth to two. You see he doesn't, doesn't even move. <laughs> What's, boom, Joe pick it, is. take it to the crib. Joe. I beat Joe. And this is Joe. good. great. This guy, pause it here. If you look, I ask you, Connor, what coverage does this look like? Uh, three. One. Three, boom. AQ, what you got? Any guess? Any stab at it? Just pre-snap, you taking this picture as a quarterback? I mean, I'm just, it's one or three. Yep, one or three. Boom. Yep. So on post snap, he's going to rotate out and be that flat corner. Uh, corner. This corner is going to go and be that deep half safety. He's going to be a deep half safety oh, here, two. and he's going to be a cover two corner here. So it looks like split safety. I mean, it looks like single high, which is one or three, some type of fire zone. On the snap, it goes to cover two. So you're going to have a hard corner out here. So Joe Flacco can't really lead him out here to Petrie. So you try to put it in his hole. And then you get stick route a lot against cover two as well. But great pre-snap disguise and they rotate to it. He just kind of, you know, cuts the deep half short because no threat. Joseph. Great job being on the same page with this uh, D'Amico Ryan's defense. There's a lot more to it, I guess, than just old buddy standing there and picking him off. Yeah. yeah. But he, 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 he knew. He knew and it was good. sweet how he just didn't move. <laughs> He's so comfortable. Ball, yeah. Look how chill he is. Worse than two, man. He's smart. Plays the sticks. Play the sticks. Play the odds. Yeah, awesome. Flacco knew that. <laughs> Thank you. Flacco. How about, Flacco. how about how pumped he is right here? Oh, oh my God. This idiot. Yeah, he knows it's so Nah. He probably knew that was picked right there. So I guess there was the same exact play against the Titans a few weeks back where he broke up the pass, but he didn't pick Mm -hmm. it off. Mm -hmm. So he's like a little bit late almost on it. So then just a few weeks later to happen and then him being there, had to feel good inside as well. Him breaking that huddle, seeing that motion, he was probably looking at like, please just let this be the one. And that's literally, those are the ones. It's probably three or four plays you go into a game and it's like, if I get this look, this formation, this situation, this is the route I'm jumping and I'm picking. If it's not that, hey, you got me. If you go stick not there, you know, you got me on that one. Fourth and two, I got to take my chances there. How about this team? Really cold, huh? Oh, yeah. Really fucking cold. Kansas City Chiefs, great job. You'll see Snead down here. We all saw the clip of him in that jam with Tyreek Hill. Look at his safety. He's moving around, rotating, still going to a split safety. You're going to have a deep safety over Tyreek Hill. Snead's going to do a great job not only getting a reroute pre-snap and taking away to his first look, Boom, pause it. So he's playing like a two-man. So to his first look is going to be down here. He wants that in cut from uh, to Tyreek. He goes to a second look. Jalen Waddle doesn't step into the throw. Hat. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily – it was a guy in his face jumping, but I think that's a pocket you can step up into, uh, you know, in the NFL. Uh, he doesn't step into it, floats it, sells it, tips and overthrows. You talk about it all the time. You take away – the game plan coming into this game is reroute the receivers, Take away those underneath that first window, throw for two, and make them pat the ball, go to a second or third read, and then make a play on the ball when you get a chance. Oh, so you God. see how he kind of stepped back, like yeah. almost like a fadeaway. Uh, fadeaway yeah. jumper. Look like Jalen yeah. there. Yeah, you got you to gotta keep that one <laughs> down. Offensive version of Jalen? You got to um, keep that one down, especially with like man-to-man when it's not like a zone and you're not trying to layer and get it over that first layer of coverage. You got to put that one down. But tips and overthrows, we talk about all the time. Great job by Sneed at that left corner taking away the ah, first one. Now we're talking. Let's yeah. get this guy Jair, a microphone. <laughs> Captain Jair. They did a great job. Joe Barry's defense all afternoon. That baby Joe. Communicate. You Hell see Keyshawn yeah. communicate right now. You'll see Jair communicating. Uh, DN out here communicating. Preston Smith. You see him right here. Hey, I'm pointing, point. He's coming down. He's coming down. We're getting a bunch. So just like we saw in that first Lions offensive play with LaPorta touchdown. The quicker you can get that communication out, that's 
now now we're not thinking. We're just playing ball. So everybody's on the same page before it ever happens. If you run it back real quick, you'll see Keyshawn, like once he gets, you know, close enough to make it a bunch, he'll kind of point to the sky. But all this communication is being had right now. Hey, alert this, boom. Now we got this. So now I can understand once again those three or four okay. plays. I know the route concepts. Now I can play those more aggressively. Third and six, once again, on the money down. He's sitting on the sticks. He's sitting right on Brandon Cooks. He knows exactly what route's coming, and he's physical at that catch point. Pivot oh, route, boom. Man, how about that little slight communication there? Just yeah. that little finger up, that's yeah. mine? That's everything. So I always talk about verbal and nonverbal communication, DBs, because, you know, sometimes we can't hear each other, sometimes we can, but the quicker I get it as this corner, coming out of the huddle as a nickel, that's got to be the most talkative motherfucker out there. That's – like the center. Centers are always talking. Nichols should be always talking. We should have our disguises on the same page. You're going to be the guy moving around with motions. So you got to be, you got to have everybody on point. Why are they, are they doubling Gallup or are they just trying to rob that motion? Because the, uh, the opposite safety comes down onto that crosser. Yeah, I would call it, it's probably like a one hole or one robber or something because crossers are, those are those mm -hmm. are man beaters, number one, and they're just tough to cover. So, yeah, you're going to take away Gallup. And what they did, were about to do before he threw this ball, Keyshawn's giving that crosser up, and then you you become the rat. A lot of yep. people, two people run with him, but if we anticipate it, we communicate it. Tone, tone, turn, alert this crosser. Boom, once that crosser's in, I'm pointing it to you, and now I become the new rat player mm -hmm. or whole player. So great job, once again, from this Joe Barry defense this week, just all being on the same page. Uh, this, so this route he picked off. This, they ran a similar route the Cowboys did on the – we all saw the clip with Jair pushing CD yep. in the back, mm -hmm. took it away. The tight end, Ferguson, was open. For some reason, Dak didn't throw it, scrambled out to the left. And I believe it was Keyshawn Nixon who got a uh, sack, sack, or, yeah, yeah. sack on the other side. Mm -hmm. So defense just been on the same page. And that kind of – it all accumulates on that quarterback. Cause sometimes they start seeing things. They start feeling pressure that's not there. They start seeing coverages that aren't necessarily there. We all remember Sam Darnold say, hey, I'm seeing ghosts. Um, you know, that was just <laughs> – Boom. Everybody on the same page. Once again, if you pause this, second and two, this is out of a timeout. Two? Uh, yeah, second and two. So out of Joe a timeout. Barry. Keyshawn Nixon. Boom. Now you're, we set him to the field. So as a defense, defensive coordinator, when they call the play as that nickel, most times you're going to line up to the passing strength, right? So the passing strength here would be if that's a receiver and a receiver, receiver tight end. The passing strength would be down here because this is where we have the two wide receivers. So as a nickel, more, more times than not, hey, I'm going to be nickel left. Offense, hey, we're going to motion CeeDee Lamb to the field. So instead of calling a passing strength-based coverage, Joe Barry calls it where I'm going to put the nickel to the field. So it's going to be a field concept. I don't know who was supposed to blitz originally, but uh, Campbell becomes the blitzer. Once again, you see the communication, it's subtle. So maybe Keyshawn was supposed to blitz, he gave it to Campbell. And now you see Savage, so it ends up in the fire zone. Uh, Walker drops out of coverage, three underneath, three deep, five blitzers. So if you pause it, five rushers, one, two, three underneath, one, two, three deep. So now you just pass these zones off. So now Savage is gonna pass that first slant off and pick off that CD Lamb slant. So this triple slants, once again, another West Coast staple out of a timeout, boom, all over. He went to Cooks first, and then yep, <clears throat> drop down on three Slow first. Down. Showcase, he's not open. So he's there. Filthy. Read the eyes, go back there. As a, as a fire zone, even though it's a zone, it's very matchy because we don't have that fourth dropper in coverage. We've sent him as a blitzer. So now as a fire zone, we got to be more matchy so it can look like man. And now it's twenty-seven nothing. That's right. And now Extend it's Joe Barry. <laughs> now, well, two, weeks, two weeks ago, was get rid of them. Yep. Well, Ty is still, still thinking still that, is. but we're all enjoying it. Hey, every, uh, ladies and gentlemen, everything DB, good, D bad, D bot. Hey, D bot, D bot, D bot, D bot. D great work, pal. We really appreciate that. Um, and now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to go in the trenches. Hell yeah! yeah. yeah. Wait, this ain't it. This ain't it. This now it's time to go in the trenches. Yeah. There we go. Here we go. Okay, so we start off. We got a power play coming to the right here, right? So check this out. We talk about this all the time. First of all, this guy's the key, right? CJ Stroud. You're going to get six coming up on the line right here. And his job basically is backside contained. But he comes up the field a little bit too much because of the threat of so much play action that they run. The power is meant to hit over here. But this backside cut because you get a little bit of overplay from the backside and him just a little too quick up the field. 
And now you get this backside C cut right oh, there. And he's out the gate he, for a touchdown. Yeah. Single Terry. Awesome. Beautiful. Awesome. That's what you get. You're gonna anytime you get the blitz off the backside, they're gonna they're, they have to slant the front, right? And you get a little bit of play. Tunsil does a great job collecting this Miles Garrett and just kind of sealing him inside, which gives you the big backside cut. Tunzel's the guy, huh? He's awesome. Twenty five million a year. Yeah, what's he doing playing field goal? Yeah, yeah when he got you got rolled. Hey, wasn't up that on, weird? Right? Got rolled. No, and they, you have to. Tackles? Yeah, you Left you, tackles? All of them. You have to. You only dress. I don't think we did. Costanzo, I don't think, was on there. If they did, that's crazy. Because, I mean, most. I mean, you turn it off. You only got seven or eight guys. Yeah, but no one no, no, no at the end out there. Yeah. The Highest paid guy. Tackles. You got to put them out there. Respect to Tunsil for doing it. Yeah. I'd be like, Shit, no, half, I'm Half not the doing time this. they got those guys playing the wings, too. <sighs> And they're just Costanzo eat, wing? You played a wing. I don't it, think so. I think Costanzo, he might have been on it, and then something happened. And I, if my recollection serves me right, I don't think Costanzo was out there. And I think it was probably the smart decision. I think a lot of us said that. Because you're really exposed. I mean, every, just, team, every I, team I've been on. I mean, Werfs is out there down Tampa. Like, he better not be on it this weekend. That's I guess I we, we don't really see guys get hurt. So, Gronk, right? Yep. Is that how he broke his forearm? Yeah, yep. that's how the forearm happened. Mm, what else? Laramie Tunzel Tunzel? almost? Tunzel. That's it, I guess. Because I, I, he'd probably go away from the field side. Field goal protection is an absolute nightmare. The worst. <laughs> well, uh, I have no idea how you guys do the, it. The whole wing thing when they used to just send three and you just eat die it and have to slowly. fall. Mm -hmm. That's literally what they say. Hey, just die slowly. Wait, what? Yeah, you're going to die. You're going to get killed here. Yeah, you're getting pancaked here. Just do it slow enough so we can get a ball off. Whenever I got dropped into the football world, and I learned that that was happening yeah. for me to do my job. I've never felt more fucking terrible. I'm like, I am so sorry that every time you see me come on the field, it's basically like, well, here we go again. I'm about to get fucking killed. <laughs> That's yeah. not fun. That's just how it is, though. It's just how it is. Hey, thank you, big guy. Part of the job. Thank you, thank you, big, guy. Thank you big dude. Mooses. Thank you, Mooses. Thank you, Part Mooses. How about the Packers? Yeah, hey, go, boys. Hey, go. awesome. So, first of all, they got Mike off the ball, right? He, he plays everywhere, but they're going to run a cross dog. Cross dog's the old Steelers LeBeau, mm -hmm. right? You're going to get him here and then him over the top, and this is the perfect play into it because as they run the zone here, these two will zone it off. That's where the hole becomes. You get a kick out here, and then your boy oh, he's so is good. doing a great job going back with the cutoff. They arc the backside because it's setting up the play action. They do so much good shit at marrying it up. LaFleur is crushing it right now. So is Love. He just apple appled into this. There it is. Send him across. And then right here. Yup. That's can, can, can. So they were originally going to run to the side of the safety. Now they check away from the safety, which is smart. And then you get into the cross dog. And look, Aaron Jones, everybody repeating good the call. Good communication. Yep. Oh, Tom and, Le and Ellen Jake is just pointing. They'll push, the push. There it is. Now they pick up the cross dog right here, seal it. There it is. And look at him. Mm. Right. So that's just, they flip everybody thing, everything, right? That's it. Yep. So this was all supposed and, to go the opposite direction. And you watch, when you watch San Fran, when you watch a lot of these teams do it, this is the number one formation to do it out of, too. So when you see it, it's two tight ends off the ball. They call that deuce off. So then you can motion them, you can shift them, you can run basically the same play either way. And everything, yeah, everything's basically set. You can just look at the picture like, okay. It looks the same. Yeah. Yep. That green box, red box on Madden. Yep. Stays in bounds here too. Aaron Jones, the stud. cowboy killer. Yeah. Stud. Absolute stud. How about this team? Whoa! Hell yeah. yeah. Foxy, another one. We talked about this before the show, right? Mm -hmm. oh, He's cool. doing such a good job, and he always has like a little bit of disguise. So they're making it look like zone. If you look here, basically over, it looks like everybody's going this way, including the running back. But then you pull the big fella, and you get the flat trap down the line. Well, look at him facing that way. So it holds everybody, right? There it is. Zone, zone, zone to everybody, whoever they're reading the keys. Mm. Kick out. See ya. Touchdown. Touchdown, boys. 43 and a blender. God, the lines are so good. Really yep. good. This is what the really box. sells it. Watch him come across. Yeah, look at his shoulders. When he turns his shoulders and starts going to the sideline, that's what makes the linebackers kind of. Right there. Look at that. He's facing this way to run a downhill run right there. Boom. Put the brakes on and get behind. Two rookie touchdowns in this game. Awesome. Not a not a good draft. Though. Better beat the box. Yeah, they've scored mm -hmm. a lot of yeah. touchdowns. Hey Q, how will the run game be against uh, the box? Tough sled. Tough sled. And who's Vea, baby? Come who's on. this going to be on? Is it on Ben Johnson this week? Is it on Jared Goff uh, it's gonna during be... the game? Who is it? Yeah, I mean it's going to listen. Like you, you set up your game plan. I talk about this all the time, right? 
the game plan's great. It is great until you show up week one and you think <laughs> that you just practiced against all the 6-2 fronts that he ran against Philly. Mm -hmm. And they don't show it one time, and they line up in something they haven't shown since week four, and then it's like adjustment. This is the this is the game of adjustments, so and that's what Bill Belichick did so great for so long. Philadelphia didn't do a lot of that, is what I think you were trying to imply earlier. Whenever they were bringing too many people, and they didn't bring a tight end in a block, they weren't trying to like basically add it all up. There was a clip Darius showed on the last one. I forget yeah, what was uh, it the Jordan Packers? Love, yep. Yeah, Packers. so he brought the tight end mm -hmm. in, right? There were so many instances that if Philly would have just done that. It could have given them the just top. enough time. Like that, that, when you see any type of cover zero, whenever they bring one more than you can handle, bring the tight end. Just give you enough time to backpedal and get rid of the ball. Got on that touchdown over Winfield, which they did about on the long one to Devonte Smith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tight end came backside, play action, kept the tight end in the block, and they get the big deep mm -hmm. ball. In reference to tough sledding in this game, uh, Tampa Bay is sixth in yards per rush on defense and fourth in uh, rushing yards per game on the other side. Uh, Detroit is third in rush defense and second in rush yards. Only eight game. teams left, baby. Let's go. Hey, everybody's going to be right. Both pass defenses mm -hmm. are susceptible. Hey, Q, for the offensive line, though, since the Lions do more under center mm -hmm. runs and early down play action, would that help them, you think, against that Bowles defense? It, it can. It can. But, listen, they're going to load the box. Bowles is going to make Jared Goff win the game. Which this year Jared Goff yeah. has proven to be yeah. able to do. 100%. What you can. Hey, we always say, when we're judging a quarterback, we have to judge him upon the fact that we know that at some point during the season, if they want to win a Super Bowl, there's going to be a fourth and eight, and there's going to be a tiny window yep. that is going to have to be hit. Will the quarterback make the throw or not? Like, that is literally the conversation. Yep. Well, I might win him a game, and during the regular season, it's good. But at some point, the quarterback's going to have to fucking deliver. Yep. That's just what's going to happen. And those who do win and those who don't get put in a constant cycle of, is this guy a guy <laughs> or is he not a guy? That's real deal. And I think Goff has proven numerous times. Yeah, I was just going to say. He's a fucking guy. All season yeah. long, he's been doing it. I mean, in that two after the two-minute warning in the Rams oh, yeah. game, he hits that second and nine game over. That was huge. Yeah, not every quarterback's going to hit that right. in that moment. And he's been through it the most as far as getting killed for not being able to do it and yep. then being able to do it. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Hey, what have you done for me lately? Yep. Yeah, yeah. got to happen. It we'll see. sucks that that is the case. You could have the greatest season of all time mm -hmm. and then just one bad fourth quarter, and it's like, are we sure? This guy sucks. Jimmy G missed in the Super Bowl a couple years ago. Oh. Boom, yeah. over. Dak, Dak Prescott. Yeah. Is this guy? Every year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it sucks. Right. Absolutely sucks. I'm happy I'm not a quarterback. Yeah. And to answer your question, Foxy, this is probably the bigger question. Will Money. this offense show up next week, right? Because they ran it well. They threw it well. They were clicking on all cylinders. You get a great single here on the front side. Gadecki, they're kind of pushing out here. This is the key, right? You get a great little seal block right here, but watch Werfs just kind of clear the backside three tech out here as you get the huge backside cut. That's the biggest cut in the zone game right there. Mm, Godwin. And there it is. You get Godwin's all. He's awesome. He's, He's awesome in. in the run game. He's great in the screen game. Boom. And then you get a huge 10 to 15 yard. White's game. been really good. White's been great. Mm -hmm. He's been great. Look at how happy Godwin is about the block. Dude, you got to win this. Like he that. does all the dirty work for that team. Three three got to get this. inside that block. Look at this dude though. Like, look at it afterwards. Back a little bit, Pat. Hold on one second. Yeah. Look, look at God. Fuck yeah. Fucking pumped he is. Penn State for life. Yeah, he was. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Hell yeah. Who are you talking about here? Three three. The guy he blocks like you. When you're the down lunch. there, like you got a run gap. Can't get like, dug that's out, your right? gap. There's no way you let Chris Godwin get inside you and dig you out. He just ran. Pause. Is he waiting on play? Good work. Can't nah. You see, you got, you got a corner out there. What it is, baby. You see MJD's pause this weekend. Yeah. That was that was pretty, pretty great. Was all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Goes to respond. How about the zoom in on his face? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just like a fool. And then he goes defense. What are we doing? Yeah. Hey, MJD, you're great on TV, baby. Keep it going. Absolutely love that. Hey, let's get some uh, big bombs. Ooh, we got some big bomb bombs. We got some big bombs. Oh, JJ's bombs. gonna be pumped about this one. Hey, we got like a brand new right side of the line for these guys. First time in a playoff game, really. I mean, watching this guy. This guy played at Yale. What's his name? Great question. Uh, it's Dieter. Uh, Dieter. Dieter is a Yale name. Yes. D-I-E-T-R is his first name. We're just going to call him Dieter, but watch Big Dieter get out in space Dieter. and absolutely. Dieter. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Dieter. Oh, boy. 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 Oh,
Dieter. Oh, Dieter. Dieter. Why is Dougie Mills in the game? Michael Dieter is his name. Oh, so was, I thought Mike his first Dieter. name was Dieter. I, I, th I thought they pulled. I think it's like Dieter Echelon. Isn't oh, wait, the Browns like lost that, that bad? Yeah. Yeah. dog shit out of him. That's his what. first name's Dieter? I think it's... It's Dieter Dieter. Yeah, first name and last name, same name. That baby Dieter. 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 Dieter's either in the SEC or he's at Yale. Yep. Mm -hmm. That Good is, mm -hmm. it's one or the other. I'm happy to hear it's Yale. Big brain. D'Amico's got it figured out up there, huh? Yeah, I mean, this is, this is, this is, oh man, this is a big time hit right here. <laughs> the more get, and more I watch it, <laughs> you can like, feel it. That feel hurts. It. Feel it in your loins. That hurts. Deep down in there. Uh -huh. Dieter Eselin. That's his name, Dieter Eason. His last name is E I S E L E N. It's tough. It's yeah. tough. These people love the E I's in this family. I mean, Dieter's a tough <laughs> yeah. name. Just name him Tom. We were playing or Wheel of Fortune and you bought I R E. Oh, yeah. You're yeah, solved. You're set. Yeah. yeah. You got Dieter. Yeah, you're, somebody, you're the other night, Dieter? somebody on the other night on Wheel of Fortune was. There's been some tough. Horrendous. No. Oh, hot bad. Oh. Fucking phenomenal. I saw a one letter turn, ding, Knew in it. like a bonus round. Like, we know when they do those oh, three. Wow. Yep. It was. I'm talking, there was some, and then every once in a while, you'll get an episode where there's three doofuses up there. Oh, yep. yeah. And it's like, this is hard to watch. Mm -hmm. I'm getting so upset right now. Yep. Why the fuck are you spending money on a vow right now? We all know exactly what the fuck Bingo. that is. Right. Well, I just want to be sure. Well, you're wasting money. Exactly. You're yeah. screwing the game. This is a prize puzzle. Okay, let's solve this. Best is when we get it wrong after the, all the letters are there. Oh, yeah. The Achilles one. Well, that's not the best, obviously. You want to see these people win a lot of money. Well, yeah. some people watch for different reasons. Mm -hmm. True. Mm -hmm. You're right. I, Achilles, I believe. Achilles? Yeah, Achilles. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Next. What was the university one? There was a college kid. Oh, that, my God. That was that the college was kid. That was it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, Indiana. Yeah. 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 Indiana kid. I was cheering for him. But, boy, he delivered. Indiana's got a football team now. People forget that. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. Who do they hate? Purdue. Purdue and Ohio State and Michigan too. <laughs> Go Hoosiers! Coach Signetti, yeah, yeah. love you, Sig. friend of the program. Yeah, he's gonna bring some energy down. Oh, yeah, yeah look he better. Him up. They, he is. They need, up. they need it. What does he? What does he do in Indiana? You know, what has he done his whole career? What are you talking about? Win. Yeah, bingo. bingo. That's that all was, he does. That was the best. That was the best press conference answer possibly. I tell him to Google me whenever they're wondering how I'm going to recruit these players. All I do is win, bro. Mm -hmm. Do you want to do that or not? Indiana's got a little juice. Now they did get their asses beat in a historic fashion last night by Purdue <laughs> in basketball. Yeah. Largest spread, I believe, largest margin of victory in that particular rivalry uh, yeah. in like forever. Long time. I think like forever. Mm -hmm. Local news, everybody was reporting from Bloomington. Tonight's a big one. The number two ranked Purdue Boilermakers are taking on a very tough Indiana team that always plays Purdue hard. And this is a monumental type game for Coach Woodson and the IU Hoosiers that obviously wasn't able to find where the fuck the game was on at. Sure. And all I saw afterwards was big picture of Edie. Oh, and yeah. I'm just saying, fucking smack the shit out of Indiana. Mm -hmm. Purdue might be a team this year. Oh, they're very oh, they're, good. Yes. Let's go, Edie. They'll I met be, him a couple they'll, times. They'll he, be got on, one uh, seat again. he was getting on the floor, too. He's dying for loose balls. He'll be the yeah. national player of the year again, Purdue probably. Purdue two? Exactly. Yeah. Damn. yeah. I think Purdue is like very easy. He's a dog. Good. Who's number one? Ah, who cares? Uh, I think it's some team in a state that nobody yeah, really talks about. I think it's Griffin enough. the Champs. I think it's UConn Huskies. All right. First time since it 2009? <clears throat> yep. We're talking it's men's really basketball AP. here, dude. Zach Eady plays for the men's uh, Purdue. Yeah. Me too. Really? Men's. What? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah didn't didn't UConn men win tonight. national oh, title yeah. a couple years ago? Last, last, last year. year. Last year? Yeah, they're good. They're good again. Really? Uh, yeah. yeah. All the way back. The men's team? All the way back. Yeah. It's the women's team. That was kind of... <laughs> what happened? Is old buddy not coaching? Uh, Gino's still there. No, he's coaching the men. No. Paige Bucket's <laughs> also still there. They just kind of... She's torn her ACL like 12 times. Yeah. Yeah. We hope she gets healthy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of course, she's healthy now. She just, <laughs> yeah, okay. We've been hurt Getting a little long in the Love tooth. You, Lost a step or two. You guys have, uh, just like with JJ <laughs> with the suit earlier. Yep. Yeah. Hey, you look great on there. Oh, your suit was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I, was I swear, home. I am not kidding. I was sitting here before that question thinking, like, yes, I was in my apartment listening to JJ Watt yeah. talk about the Houston Texans versus the Browns. I was sure of it. I just I hope you do realize though that I'll go with you. you know? I appreciate that. Yes. I will go. I thought we've gone there for a long time. That today that's not a new thing. I no, knew I that. I agree. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure we reiterate that fact that you hold a lot of power over there whenever you say I, it. Yeah, that that that's the other thing I need to think about. I gotta if I need to, I need to just pull up my phone and check real quick. Yeah, but you thought. Because I saw him in a pink suit 
Didn't we face all pink? We FaceTimed. I think I FaceTimed. Must be, it must have been two weeks. That ago. was that was national championship weekend because we FaceTimed him while we were in the room that he. Oh yeah. Was okay. Set up. So that was a few weeks back. Yeah, on Monday I turned the pregame show on CBS and I actually said out loud, "JJ's not on there." So I knew right when Connor said that it was going to be a bad. <laughs> I didn't think. It was bad <laughs> I didn't think it was Monday, though. I thought it was Saturday because the game got moved, but they still had their show, I thought. All right. Anyways, Whatever. Excited you're back, JJ. <laughs> that game was on Peacock, by the way, Crazy. last night. How's the, reaction, yeah. how's, the, how's the reaction to uh, the pro football focus stuff? Oh, uh, it's going. Yeah, it was going in the bathroom. A lot of people I got, agree I got with quite JJ. a few texts. A lot of people agree with JJ? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. JJ's baby facing this entire thing. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay, so we're not getting killed in this? No. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know. I did see... <laughs> no, I won't even. <laughs> it's all good. Smart. No, no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what, what did I do? What did I, what yeah, did I do? We just. I stopped. Kansas City Chiefs Center is about to fuck somebody up. Oh, yeah. That he is. <laughs> no sleeve, bitch. That he is. That great? Great. Hey, hold on. Great. Hey, no, no sleeves. Legit. So we heard like 50 people got hypothermia that were in the crowd. I think some Damn. people got some, uh, some frostbite, too. Who? Well, we heard some guys got some. Anybody was wasn't wearing sleeves. We might have heard some. What? Maybe in there. Mahomes really? Is this true? Yeah. Is this breaking? Is this breaking? I feel like there was some frostbite on the Kansas City Chiefs squad. From I think, which you- I think I think on both sides, right? I mean, anything that was exposed. I mean, dude, it's minus thirty. That was wild. Yeah, it's so cold. That's so cold. It's so cold. Yeah. But you're saying you heard from source. source. Says. And there was maybe some frostbite on the boys after a weekend. That's what I heard. Thanks for sacrificing and scanning yeah. your health. Wow. Thank you, boys. But you know what else we heard? Hmm. We teach. Whenever you get a little jumper, <laughs> you punish him. Oh. Yeah. Jumper's punish a good him. song. So he's going to jump. I wish you would oh. step back from that ledge, my friend. Both feet are in the air. Yep. Oh, no. That's not good. Put him down. Oh, oh he tackles him. That's a hold. Yeah, that feels that, is that feels not illegal. a hold. That feels pretty illegal. On the defense, put the head in. More like a personal put, foul. On the defense, put the head in and put him on the back. AJ, what's the deal? This guy, what's he supposed to do? This guy's hugging him and tackling him. Well, oh, oh, this is another oh, they, one. They, they, what's your problem they, with they Wilkins? Finish. They, they got after finish Wilkins. Too, yeah, no, just watch because the tackle puts him down on the on the. So he's the post guy. He gets him down. Now watch oh. Trey Smith finish. Jeez. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. They're, oh, he's still going. Still going. It's negative 27 outside. Doesn't, af- doesn't affect Trey Smith. Yeah. Christian Real Wilkins. Quick, he's, yeah. he's an absolute dog, by the way. It's tough to hold. That's the biggest steal maybe in the oh, history of drafts. Oh, he's still going. Still going. Oh, my goodness. Jesus. Oh, yeah. He should have been a first-round pick. He had like a little, uh, I think it was like a blood clot or something in college. And the Chiefs got him in the sixth round. Brett Veach Damn. talked about him when he came on last year after the Super Bowl that they actually gave him the folder. Like, hey, very risky here with Trey Smith because the blood clot was something in his knee or something. Something, it was, yeah. Like, it, it was very bad. A lot of people took him off the board. Yeah. Chiefs were like, we'll take him in the sixth. Yeah. Instant starter. Him and Creed, same draft. You love him, too. I've seen him a lot. On love him. him. I mean, I, as you guys – figured out I, I like people that play like pricks yep yeah a lot of that on this show those are the best ones yep so the quinn miners the trey smiths right like those guys that just like cole strange lindstrom cole strange the guys that like to finish people cole strange has never been on he this. just he just said it he just I, yeah but he's he's I said, in his I said thing just to give right you a little hype yeah he's cole. in his thing damn right. it quentin nelson we get Tyler it yeah Smith. that yep. Thanks, John yeah. 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 all right i think we're done here it was a good Wednesday. Good Great day. Fucking Wednesday. right. Sure Great work this week, uh, D Butt. AQs, thank you again for coming in and crushing it, pal. Appreciate little breakdown of Todd Bowles' defense was good. Pretty good. Love mm-hmm. it. We'll take that for the rest of the week for sure. Tone Diggs, Tomlin's back. Good for you. You're thank ranching. You. Yeah, it's awesome. Ty Schmidt, we got hope. Maybe the Packers do it. Here we go, baby. Saturday night. Jake Johnson said, fuck them. We need the Niners to win. Whoa. Yeah, I respect he's that. An, he's a University of Iowa guy, though, so I'll just kind of let that slide. I saw that at the bottom of the name tag there. I obviously knew that oh, before yeah. the interview started mm-hmm. that he was an Iowa guy. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You knew that, too, Darius. Mm-hmm. Right? I read it. It's like a lot of people in Big the Chicago Midwest, suburbs. Yeah. Second city up there in Chicago. They created a lot of talent. A lot of talent up there. Yes, oh, they yeah. did. Tina Fey and the blonde lady. Who was that? that Amy, Amy Bowler? Bowler? Amy Poehler. They both came from there. Tina Fey goes first Ooh. over to Saturday Night Live. But Tina and Amy, I guess, tight at Second City as mm-hmm. well. So then Tina goes to Saturday Night Live. Amy's still back at Second City. And then Amy comes over there. And then all of a sudden, psh, Bam. rocket ship. I watched uh, either an interview or a documentary. Parking Tina Fey back. has really crushed it. Yeah, oh, she's yeah. a beast. Absolute beast. Yeah. And speaking of beasts. <laughs> you son of a bitch. How about you? <laughs> Love Wednesdays.
You had a great day today, Connor. I disagree, but it was a fun day. All right, sweet. Happy to hear that. Uh, I think that's all that matters. Vibes are good. Vibes are high. I think this is two straight days where... I think so. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at us. There was moments where we didn't know if we'd see these days ever again. No. You know, where... Maybe you've put yourself into a situation where you're getting attacked. Yeah. From all angles. Mm -hmm. Now, people you've never met before saying things as if they do know you and very terrible and rude things. All warranted. But in those moments, you start to wonder, is this what I retired from kicking balls to do? Is this what I want my life to be? Some people love this. How? Mm. How, how is this what people enjoy? And then days like today happen. And days like yesterday happen. In the first four months we were on ESPN happen, you remind yourself, we're the luckiest motherfuckers on earth. Hell yeah! And just like they do at a Knight's Tale, Bingo. Medieval times. Yep. Bingo. You hop right back on that saddle. Uh -huh. Even if you're the yellow knight, you fucking suck. Uh -huh. And you let down an entire part of the crowd mm. that is only able to cheer for you because they've been forced to sit in your section. Uh -huh. mm. You get back on that saddle the next night, and maybe you knight a little better. Yeah. And that's what we'll continue to do. Amen. Division round is just a few days away. Oh, Hell yeah. yeah. Okay. Division Can't wait. Eight teams are left. Stories are still to be wrote. As if the Jack Johnson had the goddamn pen. Mm -hmm. Bingo. Let's enjoy tomorrow. Let's enjoy today. Mm -hmm. We'll see you then. AJ, great work today, pal. You did fantastic. Good job, good job AJ. Good job. Hey, good job, Pat. Good job, today was an okay good work. Great today job. was an okay good day. Good work. First hour, we did a lot of good talking. Mm -hmm. Our first hour, we did retirement talk. Yeah. Yep. yeah. It's awesome. We did hockey talk today. Yep. Yeah. I did. Hockey's awesome, by the way, for these evenings. If you're not watching Self Reliance, mm -hmm. can't wait. Go. On Hulu. Yep. Mm -hmm. Watch some hockey. Yeah. It's worth it. Oh, yeah. And if the Pittsburgh Penguins are playing, oh. there's number 87 on the ice. Mm -hmm. You're watching history in the making. Must see. So appreciate that. All right. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. It might change their life. We're all in this thing together. Okay? We're all in this thing together. Goodbye. <laughs>